catch the horse after it's bolted the stable because more than like if he snakes it to that same general second tail slip area, you're going to get runs. And I think what we have seen is that most of the edges so far, they've gone through the third slip gully kind of region. Because of the pace of the pitch. It's beating the batsman outside the off stump again. It's like an action replay, really. Three deliveries, three plays and misses. Just pushing the ball across the right-handed batter. So that in itself really would warrant maybe some more feelers in that slip garden. Reinforcement in that area and move that um, straightish cover. Should have gone into at least third slip with maybe so two gullies and just the first slip because the pitch is slow and the ball tend to go in that general direction. So here comes Edward once again looking to wrap things up for the Leeward Islands. He's beating the batter again outside the off stump. Bit of frustration there being shown by the batter. You're bowling with a genuine number 11. It's folk. Is it folks or Springer? Is it Springer? It's actually Jaden Lord. Lord? Lord, yes, number 22. So it's Springer and Lord trying to do some repair work, yes, yeah, some massive repair work. As Edward again is beating the batter outside the half stump again. So five deliveries here. And the keeper has been very busy so far. In fact, he has been busy all game. It's busy. It basically is a replay. Every single delivery is a replay. Goal line, goal line. Uh, trying to play a shot, missing five times. Action replay, as they tend to call it. It's be interesting to see if maybe Edward can bring one back, having pushed those five deliveries across the right hander. Be trying to bring one back through the gate. Ball is 44 overs old. Have to show. If you cannot extract that type of movement. This one is slashing at this one. Pass the man at backward point. He'll get some runs here. Lord should be able to come back for second. A bit of mix up here. A better throw really. I think there's a chance for third as well. Sloppy. Yes. It's a bit sloppy cricket here from the Leeward Islands. A better throw there. I think the, the batter there would have been in some problems. But all as well. That ends well for Barbados. Three runs and that brings up century as well so they move on to 101 for the loss of nine yes and uh, the field placing has left a lot to be desired to be very honest we need to say it as you see it because you're basically down to the last wicket so it's a question of trying to uh, have him dismiss either either of them and be able to sit and relax at the opening batsman cock up their feet come in and relax and uh, start their innings but uh, they're seeing it different to us and uh, it's a question of how long would Barbados continue uh, towards whatever total they eventually end up with because they'll be happy the longer they stay there because the longer they stay is more runs despite the total being small. So rather than being out for 98 or 100, if they can continue to fiddle out there and get 120, they'll feel comfortable. Agreed. They will have to be careful. As we see Amory, he will continue proceedings here from the back end. Picked up one wicket last night, well, yesterday afternoon, sorry. But this one is a good line, good length. You can see the intent is to stay as long as possible. While well, Zilliwood Islands, they need to be more uh, proactive and try and dismiss this and have your players out of the sun, especially the opening batsmen. As we see uh, a lovely ray of sunshine coming across the ground at this point in time. But the good signs for the Leeward Islands. I'd like for this pitch to just be baked with that sunshine. So there's a man at long on, a man at deep mid wicket for the off spinner. There's Avery again, splitting this one, playing it out to the man there at backward point. There's no run. So we were we're trying to ascertain who would be the bowler from the, the back way end. And apparently the Leeward Islands they opted for Emery. A short delivery down the leg side really. Very close to a wide. So, you know we had a own little discussion earlier about the generation. But certainly if I were in management, my fast bowl would be bowling. The two more uh, the wicket takers, Springer and Langofer, they definitely win bowling this morning. There's no two ways about it. Definitely because when you look at the, the results really. 
they have been the most successful bowlers on this wicket. Eight wickets between them, and we have not seen any of them at the start of this day's play. So that's really is a bit puzzling, it to is, say the least. It's puzzling, to be honest. It's really puzzling. They're not tired. It's a night rest. And they started at quarter to ten. Um, give them a go. And they're not batting to come out and open bat. They have the batsman, you know, the open batsman ready to go. This one is hitting straight to the man there. To a brilliant catch there from Nathan Edward. He was there at backward point. Had to dive to his right, his weaker side. And took a splendid catch there to dismiss Driss Springer. So the innings is wrapped up here for um, Leeward Islands. Barbados. Right, Lord. My apologies, actually, Lord. So, innings here closing at 101. All out. So, Leeward Islands doing what they had to do early this morning, Gunny, in terms of dismissing this last batter and going to get their, their batting innings going mm -hmm. um, pretty soon. So having resumed today at 97 for 9, the Barbadian team, they have been dismissed for 101. So just adding four runs to their overnight total. Amory picking up his second wicket, adding to his, his, his one that he picked up late yesterday afternoon, really. So he finished with two wickets. And a brilliant catch, as we mentioned there, from Nathan Edwards. Very athletic in that backward point region and the Leeward Islands after inserting Barbados yesterday to bat they dismissed the Barbadian team for 101 yes 101 and they will start their batting innings very soon so we're going to get some final thoughts from Gunny yeah well um, the innings has finally been wrapped up um, via Amory, the off spinner from the southern end, uh, a brilliant catch taken at uh, short cover point, and uh, 102. It's not any huge total. I think the main interest is how the 101, 102, 101, 101. They all out for 101. So I think it was 102, 101. The main interest here, basically, between now and lunch, we see this to see how the wicket is going to play. I think that's the main interest and the response from the Barbadian opening bowlers, based on what we saw yesterday, because the pitch definitely has moisture still remaining from yesterday, because it was covered down overnight, early rolling, etc. This morning, no real hot sunshine per se. So the pitch definitely will have some kind of moisture. It's a question of how well are the Barbadian fastballs going to respond? Uh, will they resort to the same short pitch type of bowling to see what they can extract? We're not too sure. So it's a match of conjecture. But they just have 102, 101, 101 runs. It's runs on the board. They would have to have to get them. But they themselves are coming out from their previous game with a huge total from the Cumberland, 300 and somebody. I can't remember the exact total. So it's really a question where their confidence level is up, it's high. The Barbadian themselves are there, arrested, I believe, rested carefully. Let me guard it with my word, rested there. They are real fast, seen bowlers. So it's a question that's a wait and see situation to see what will happen between now and lunchtime, by which time the sun is out. Not in all its glory, but it's out enough to try and uh, dry out some of the moisture from yesterday. So a very interesting period coming in the entire game between now and lunch, which will basically be the two hours. You know, so it's all a question to say what happened. But kudos to the Bali with Islands fast bowlers, Langerford and um, Langerford and Nesbeth, five for twenty one and three for thirty eight respectively. Emory two for eleven that map mapped up the whole thing. Uh, so it's a question now with their confidence level up, having dismissed the opponents for hundred and one. How are they going to respond? Do, are they, do they go on an all-out attack or not? I'm not too sure. But until we are ready for you when the Leeward Islands innings re resume, we go back for a short while.
Yes, welcome back to the Honest Air Playing Field. Welcome you with um, some lovely sunshine. Welcome sunshine. Uh, ensuring that everything is okay. The little Barbados team, they are moving out into the middle. So too, the Leeward Islands opening pair. And I think it'll be very interesting to see from both sides the response from the Barbadian fast bowlers and how does the Leeward Islands opener respond. Definitely, and coming into this match, both teams, as we mentioned, they've been in reasonable batting form. Both teams coming off big totals in their previous encounters. So the Leeward Islands, they'll be hoping that their batsmen can really transfer that form into this particular game. They'll have to be watchful, they'll have to get used to the conditions here at the Anna's Way playing field. Having played previously at Cumberland, and in the case of Barbados at Park Hill, where there are different batting conditions there. So it's about getting used to the wicket here at Anna's and. Hopefully, they'll be able to give um, their team a good start. Yeah, but strange enough, uh, you know, it seems to me that batsmen tend to struggle here a little more as against the premier facility, as against Cumberland and Park Hill. What do you think is probably the reason why? Probably. I think the, the pitches here down as well have, uh, have um, presented more challenges to the bats, bat, batsmen, and they have not been really able to adapt to whatever the wicket is offering. In the case of the previous rounds, we saw a bit of spin on offer. And then yesterday, we saw the opposite, where the seam bowlers really had a field day in terms of some assistance. So it's just about getting used to the conditions here at the Anna's Way playing field. And so far, a lot of the batters, they failed to adapt. I think the pitches here, the different pitches, have different characteristics. Because this one that they played on the previous one to our left, that's the one that the ball spun. Turned prodigiously when um, Guyana played against the Windward Islands. This one we saw yesterday definitely was seeming about. As we see Springer, he'll be picking up proceedings here from the commentary box end. Then, then the centre strip tend to play a bit on the dorsal side. So the characteristics are different. So it's a question of adapting, as you quite rightly say, to the condition. There isn't any uh, specific one way all the pitches play. They play differently. Definitely. You, know, I think, you think it's time for probably uh, look at the technology for um, dropping pitches? We get back to that um, Gunny <laughs> as we see Springer starting proceedings here, bowling to Palmer, the right hander. It's a no ball, so not, a, not the best of starts here from Springer. Got three slips, a gully, I'm on a backward point. Mid off, mid on, a square leg and a man there at deep fine leg. So the Barbadian team, they're on the attack very early with three slips. Which is the correct thing to do. It's just 101. And they are, well, they're down to 100 now because uh, no ball. But basically, don't you think it's high time? Some study be done in terms of have dropping pitches in the Caribbean. So you know exactly where they're going to play in the different islands. That's an option the cricketing boats can exploit at some point in time. It is costly, but I think it's well worth trying in one or two of the islands. I was just about to mention the cost there, um, Gunny. You know, in the Caribbean, everything, is money everything the Caribbean? equates to cost. Is there a problem, money problem in the Caribbean? Look at Guyana with the recent acquisition of wealth from the oil. What probably can start it in? Good, good point. As we see spring again. Jamaica with its bauxite. You know, so maybe as I said, probably a start with Guyana. It's a foolish delivery, a bit of in swing as well. Palmer got his back down in time, gets it out to the man there, sh short square leg for a single. So he's off the mark. The so Islands there up and running. So, what type one of batsman is um, Palmer um, in relation? Is he a Dower type, a Shanda Paul type, or is he a, uh, a Gale type of individual? You know, I'm just trying to get a feel of. Because you, both Wait, of you fair have enough, seen yeah. We have seen quite a bit of him from last year's tournament as well. An attacking batsman by nature. Just needs to be more selective. That is the only thing I would say. Tends to get off to very good starts. But so far in the tournament, um, 86 runs from three innings. A best of 42. So it tells me that he gets off to starts. It's just a matter of converting those starts into more substantial totals. So what about the strike rate? I know you're a man fancy strike rate with batsmen. Get that information to you very soon, Gunny. I know, I know you're our well. Our statistician. <laughs> it's good to look for the strike rates for Palmer and the other open batsman to see exactly because I really do not know what the strike rates are like. 
but um, certainly there's a question if, if they are going to do if they are going to play the way the Barbadian batsmen approach batting yesterday it would be in for a dour morning or would, it, would we be in for a more uh, exciting morning in terms of batting more so as they say from Palmer we'll get the strike rate in a little while so it's Walsh, Malik Walsh Malik. coming off of 100 as well in his previous encounter I think he's actually the leading run scorer in this tournament, 227 runs. That's a strike rate. So he's, he's more sedate than Palmer. He's uh, somebody who would look to bat long. Strike rate of 56.4. Okay. So both of these batters tend to complement each other very well. Palmer would be the aggressor of the two. Strike rate normally in the 70s for Palmer. So hopefully if these two can settle down and, and build an innings, it will definitely be some entertaining cricket for us here at the Anna's Way playing field. Entertainment for everybody, the viewers as well. You know, definitely, so we can describe it to them per se because definitely what we saw yesterday it was uh, really uh, snail like. Uh, I'm just reminding you of the term that you use. Yes, yeah, really snail like, snail taste like, but, but understandably so too, given the overhead conditions and the assistance, the the board. Yeah, the only one, the, the only one them. constructive way I looked at it is to they should have picked up more singles. Try to walk the ball between field, field, the fields, fieldsmen. Walsh again is coming forward. He's a good looking player of Malik Walsh. And that's the end of the first over. At the end of it, League of Islands in response to 101 made by Barbados earlier. They're two without loss. Yes, yeah, certainly. What I've seen thus far from Walsh um, is head well over the ball with those four or five deliveries that he faced. And he seems uh, coming down with a vertical bat. He's getting a feel of the pitch. So we'll just to see exactly. Uh, what the, the Barbadian fast bowler has to offer. But I think we should be in for some, we should be looking at some enterprising cricket here this morning, somewhere along the line. Uh, so the bowler from the opposite end would be whom? Jaden Lord would be the bowler from the southern end. And uh, it's a bit early for me, so I'll just wait and see what he has to offer. Yes, Jaden Lord, right arm seamer from the Beckway end. Haven't seen much of him in this tournament. This delivery is down the leg side. I like to think this is his first match in this tournament. We'll get that verified for you soon, viewers. So basically, getting a run out. Second match, thank you very much. Yeah. Getting us out of a run out then, so to speak. Yes, and that's something we had a discussion about off air in terms of the Barbadian seamers being rested. Jaden Roberts and um, Renico Smith, two of the premier seamers for the Barbadian team, they were rested in this game. So it's a chance for players like Lord and even um, Springer to put their hand up really and give a performance that would warranty maybe a spot in the finals. There's Lord again. This delivery is on the line of the middle leg stump. Walked down to fine leg by Palmer for single. He moves on to two. The total up to three without loss. Yeah, we spoke about yesterday, we spoke about the, uh, the aggression in terms of um, the English styles against our West Indian way. Because certainly, what I've just seen, it should have been two easy runs. The ball going to his right and uh, basically ball watching rather than really trying to get two runs. But yeah, those are some small things that maybe our players really, as this one is beating the wicket keeper there, Joshua Morris, he'll be disappointed with that. And it's four buys signal there by umpire Rajkumar. So the score moves on to seven without loss, Leeward Islands. I think the, the, the distance between the wicket keeper and uh, the stumps, I think is a bit too far. So the ball fell in front of him rather than catching it around that waist high type of area, chest high. This one is outside the off, somebody's slashing at this one, watch uncharacteristically, and he's out, yes. So outside edge gain there from the, the Leeward Islands, and the Barbadian team, they get their first wicket. Leeward Islands, they're eight for one. 
Another catch of the wicket keeper. Bearing in mind uh, the Leeward Islands keeper took it. I think he got seven catches. And here it is, the continuation you now. The ball seems to be hitting the edge. And the wicket keeper taking a, uh, another catch. This is eight out of 11 thus far in, uh, in the entire match. So certainly something is happening out there. It's a loose shot there from Malik Walsh. I think he would be very disappointed with that. Delivery outside the line of the Austin, short of a length, looking to cut that one through the offside. Maybe just taking a bit of extra bounce, really, and taking the, the outside edge. And a, a good catch there from Joshua Morris. That one came at a very good height to him. So we spoke yesterday about the inconsistencies in terms of bounce and pace in this wicket, and that was evident in those two deliveries um, just concluded. Yes, certainly, and the pitch is continuing from what happened yesterday, the inconsistent bunks and more on the left side than on the low side. But be that as it may, the Leeward Islands have lost an early wicket and Barbados, as we say in local parlance, have picked an early pepper. The flavor pepper? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you got any pepper from your field up in I the think country the, area. The fact that it was Mali Walsh. I think that the fact that it's Malik Watch, I would really consider that a flavor pepper because he has been one of the batters of the tournament. Okay. So, new batsman is Michael Graves, number 17, sporting on his back. He had a very good 50 over tournament, hasn't really transferred that form into the three day format uh, as yet. So, he'll be looking to do so. But this delivery is a good delivery. It's angling into the batter there. Well played in the end there from Michael Graves. Well line delivery for first up. Was that good delivery had he missed there certainly would have been a shout for an LBW decision but certainly it was a very good delivery there from um, Lord coming in from the southern end so now they have moved away with this third slip and uh, maybe they could have persisted with it for a little while the ball new ball inconsistent bounce Lord again is bowling this one kept a bit low so we have seen it all in this over as a no ball is signal there by umpire again the second no ball of the innings, one from each bowler. They'll be striving for that extra, extra piece, extra piece. effort. Yes, I think that is what's happening. And once this inconsistent bong continues, monks continues, he can very well do what Langford did yesterday. Keep the ball consistently in a part in the in a particular area. And I believe the results would be forthcoming. Well, definitely. So it's Graves and Palmer. Trying to do a rebuilding job here for the Leeward Islands. It's the libraries outside the off stump, a bit of movement away. So a, a, a good over, successful one there from, from Lord. And at the end of it, Leeward Islands, they're 8 for 1, responding to 101 made by Barbados. Yes, and um, interesting start from the seamers from the Barbados team. And uh, fortunate for uh, the for themselves, they have picked up an early wicket. And there's a question to see what happens here from here on in as they get into their work, so to speak, both fast bowlers. And as you said, uh, Mr. Palmer seemed to be an aggressive opening batsman. Uh, so to Graves. So it's a question. Wait and see what is going to happen. As we're going to see Springer continuing from this commentary box end. I think what we saw yesterday as well was was a very long spell from Landefort. Maybe the conditions really lend itself to that type of spell. It would be interesting to see the type of spells that the Barbadian bowlers are employed for, given that we, we have some sunshine today. Yeah, well, yesterday spoke for itself. You could have bowled, as I said, you could have gone on until 6 o'clock. The conditions were just about right. There's no heat, no sapping of the energy. And he really, really bowled well yesterday, Landefort from the sudden end. The conditions conducive for such as we see Springer once again bowling to Palmer it's a good ah. delivery outside the off stump allow the appeal umpire Bona Joseph unmoved bit of movement again away from the right handed Palmer very, some inter some inter very interesting here in relation to that delivery uh, strong appeal for caught behind umpire Joseph says not out and it seems uh, if we can project what is happening it's movements both uh, ends uh, uh, northern end southern end and the inconsistent bunks uh, in for interesting period as I said up until at least up until lunch 
Springer once again. A good delivery oh. this time. Just jumped at him. Nice. Similar to what we saw from Lander Ford yesterday. Just getting the ball to, to lift, really, from a back of a length. So that would definitely put some doubt in the batter's mind. Definitely. There's no two ways about it. And it's a continuation from yesterday. Basically, what's happening, as I said, with the moisture there. Or is it a characteristic of the pitch itself? Certainly, the, the, the ball is up. It's down. And life is a bit difficult, so it's a question where the bowlers just need to consistently bowl the ball in that area. Anything can happen. But that was a nasty one. Springer again. A good delivery, moving away. So definitely getting some movement away from the right-handed batter. That definitely will cause some problems for Palmer. He has three slips for company and a gully. So the captain giving him the support here, um, Drew Springer. There, there is some doubts that it certainly will be created in the minds of the Little Islands uh, batsmen because the ball is up, it's down. The previous delivery definitely was a, a snorter. Yes, Springer once again. Palmer is punching this one out to backward point. And the bat is coming from high up, you know, sort of from the chest area and it's bringing the ball from that general area, that height. And... Uh, you will have to be careful in terms of shot selection if he's known to be an aggressive batsman. Definitely, and I think that, that particular shot from that last delivery, that is a risky shot to really play on this type of wicket with the inconsistent bounce. I think he can actually leave those deliveries outside the off stump just to get a feel of what the pitch is offering. But so far, he's prepared to actually play at these deliveries. This one is pulled straight back past the bowler, not timing it well there, Palmer. Gets a single, so... A rather strange looking shot really. More of a tennis type shot there with that final delivery there. I'm looking to pull it through mid wicket, but apparently it was slower. And uh, by the time he was through the ball, uh, the shot was hitting the tail of the bat and it ended up at uh, mid on. Mid on. So as I said, uh, there's a question of uh, 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 approach that is needed here to be watchful based on what we are seeing thus far. Very much so. I think the, the key is being patient as a batter. No, we haven't seen any batsman really consistently time the ball on this wicket. So it tells me that you, you really have to get used to the condition, the pace and the bounce that is being offered. And, and from a bowling perspective, you have to be patient as well. If you can recall yesterday, the, the Barbian team, they actually had an opening stand of 42 runs. So Lee Lions really came into their own after, after breaking that partnership. As it's going to be Lord again from the Beckway end. Good shot of a length delivery. Palmer plays it comfortably. Yes, yeah, so after breaking that partnership initially, then is where the Lee Wallens really got into their own in terms of trying to um, be more consistent and they, they reap the, the rewards of such. Yes, I remember your statement about um, bending their back after they got that wicket and they really and truly proved right in terms of bending their back because the Barbados batsmen had no answer thereafter. It's a load again. He's hitting this one high and handsome, is it? Not timed as well as he would like once again. Just plugging into the outfield there. So two runs there from Palmer. And, and that is something we alluded to earlier in terms of his tendency to go over the top um, as an opening batter. Just needs to be selective here, Palmer. Maybe he has, he has been brought up in the Leeward Islands on a diet of uh, T20 matches. But that is definitely that T20 shot. N not sure what's going to happen. He went the aerial route. And he got away with it, fortunately for him and for the Leeward Islands. Two runs. It's 11 for one, the Leeward Islands. Having lost the early wicket of Malik Walsh. Caught there by Joshua Morris off the bowling of Lord. So it will be uh, an interesting phase of play here. We all know Palmer. You like to fight fire with fire. But as we've emphasized so far, just needs to be selective. Yes, patient, be selective. And uh, with the ball, Ayman ball doing its thing out there, as uh, Paul King Douglas said, Ayman ball doing I and I and and Jai Jai Rastafari. And, and certainly it's not easy. These is a pitch to button. Shortly, he's pulling this one, mistiming it again. A chance for a run out at the bowler's end. And <laughs> Interestingly there, I'm um, going he actually jumped. I'm wondering if a direct hit 
on that occasion would have definitely been interesting. It would be very interesting had he yeah, had a direct hit because he actually jumped and allowed the ball to go around him rather than stay focused and to, um, put the bat down inside the crease. But fortunate for him, there was no direct hit and he survives. But uh, interestingly, again, the, 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 that delivery wasn't in the right slot to play that shot. But you say he's an aggressive fella. So Lord once again, full of delivery this time, Michael Palm, punching it down to the man they had mid on. Yeah, that one was done with the more approved vertical bat, on line, on length, and he stayed with his head well over the, um, the ball and punched it out on the onside. But this, in, this Palmer seems to be a very interesting uh, individual. So there's, a, there's two slips actually. So one of the slips have been, has been removed. Two slips, a gully, a man at backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, square leg, and a man there at fine leg as Lord runs in once again. A short delivery outside the off stump. There was Graves attempting to cut that one, not timing it again as well as he would like. But he gets a single, he's off the mark. Score moves up to 13 for one. Yes, this um, Palmer, this guy Palmer, come hell, come high water, he intends that he's going to play shots. Whether the ball is bouncing, uh, keeping a bit low, he's intent on playing the shots. And he has to be very, very mindful of his team's position in, and the shot selection. So when it's hit in the square leg region, a full toss should be able to come back for a second. They do so successfully. The two more runs to Palmer, two more runs to the Leeward Islands. They move up to 16 for one. So just losing his line a bit there, um, um, Lord. Yes, um, with a small total to defend. Bad balls are a rarity. Have to keep that ball there, there about base and the approach taken by Palmer. As we see the man there at short square, like he's now like three quarters of the way back to the boundary. So a slight change in the field after that last delivery. Lord again is edging this one in the region of third slip. Should be able to get a second. And they do so successfully. So similar to what we saw yesterday, Gunny, in terms of whenever the third slip is removed, the ball actually goes in that <laughs> direction. So both captains really guilty of maybe reacting to, to, to a field change too quickly. Yes, uh, to be very honest with you, because um, what we are seeing here, uh, is that a lot of deliveries are more so more often than not tend to go in the air into that third slip area and they are guilty of not being persistently and consistently keeping that third slip because that is exactly what is happening uh, because of the nature of the pitch is not fast is not dead slow but uh, with the inconsistent bounce the ball tend to go between that gully third slip area and apparently they are reacting to the situation rather than being proactive. Here it is now, this is the right field, I would say, and that is needed. Three slips, most of the third slip, and the third slip is a bit wide from the second, which is the correct thing. So it's sort of a fortish third slip area. So anything goes in the air there, there's an opportunity for a catch. If it comes out on the ground, they'll be able to stop it. So this is good tactics in terms of field placing. Springer once again, starting his third over. The most only successful bowler so far, one for someone, six. Most of it, someone like a Palmer, who seems, um, look, I am going to play my shots once, see ball, hit ball, type of situation. Yes, yeah, so far he's been determined to get bat on ball, Palmer. And thankfully for the Leeward Islands, he's still there. I'd be hoping that he stays there for an extended period of time because if that is the case, then the, the, the scoring rate will definitely not be a problem. Springer once again, he coming into both Graves this time. He's short and cutting it straight to the man there at backward point. I'm wondering, was that a catch going I think it was a catch. I think it was a man. catch. I'll be honest with it. I think it was a catch. He should have taken it. But he spilled it, um, shot of a length, lifted. I think the lift is where the problem came. And he, um, he did the horizontal cut to the man there at uh, square cover point and he dropped it. 
But well, fuck. yesterday, Gunny, we, we spoke about maybe the visibility. We saw a, a few catches going down as well for the, the Barbadian team. I will but to today, it, it, it's really no excuse, really. We have wonderful sunshine. Um, there was a short delivery outside the off stump. The batsman went back and, and cut straight to the hand, straight to the man there at backward point, and he spilled it. This one is down the leg side. Consistency is the consistency is the key word here because he lost his line short of a length outside the off stump cut straight to the man at um square cover point he, he dropped it and then the next delivery down the leg side really losing his line uh but certainly uh consistency is the key word as far as bowlers on this particular wicket here as we saw from langevelt and nesbeth I wonder how much of a let off that would turn out to be. Michael Graves, as I mentioned, he has the ability to bat long periods. We saw that in the 50 over tournament where he actually bat the majority of the overs in some of the games. I think the key, the key for as far as the Barbadians are concerned is to get wickets. And when the, oppo um, when the opportunity presents itself, they should be taken. Because there's a small total 101. You can't really defend, so it's try to be as attacking as possible and take the chances when they arrive. A short delivery and he's pulling this one. Oh Fine. Should be able to get close to the boundary. Yes, wait for the signal. I think it's actually for yes. Bernard Joseph there signaling for. So a short delivery there. Um, Graves looking to pull that one. Maybe a bit of a top edge. Went fine and he got himself his first boundary. He moves on to seven. And the total is now up to 26 for the loss of one. Not the best line delivery, but it presented an opportunity. Had there been a leg slip, he would have certainly would have been in the picture. But uh, you really can't keep, you know, place a field left for every uh, foul shot. But um, it's a false one, he got away with it. Shot again, he's punching his one pass, backward point. We'll get close to the bungalow once again as we see folks. The man who spilled that catch earlier in the over gives chase. Good strong arm return to Joshua Morris. So two more runs added to the total there. Michael Graves, a bit of momentum now creeping into the Leeward Islands innings. Yes, definitely some momentum creeping into the Leeward Islands innings. And uh, that is why I made mention earlier of the, the, the um, drop catch. You have to take these catches when you have a very low total. But, you know, it tend to buckle, buckle boggle the mind as to why is it so many catches are being dropped and more than likely the, the, the easy chances is it a case of the technique of looking to catch it the Australian style or the conventional way as we knew it because a lot of catches being dropped in this tournament definitely and that was pretty straightforward if you straight ask forward. me because the ball was on the line of the off stump as a man feeling at backward point those are the type of sh catches you're actually looking forward to something straight to you no, you've had some brilliant feelers in the past there. You know, the likes of John T. Rhodes, A. V. D. Villiers, and maybe some West Indian in the form of Vivian Richards and these guys. Catch they would have really swallowed up that. Mm -hmm. Catches win matches and catches do lose their matches too. They so look at it both ways. It's going to be Lord again. Outside the off stump. Delivery kind of dying on its way to the wicket keeper. I'll, I'll just draw your attention to uh, Mr. 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 Palmer. Before the bowler delivers, his front leg is covering his thumbs early. Look at him carefully. It's not that he's square on, it's just that he's positioning himself whereby you, you're not going to hit, get me a um, bold. You have to get me a little bit. Look at him carefully. Just pay attention. It's a good delivery again. It's getting that ball to tail back in. I'm Lord. We've seen that on a couple of occasions now to both batsmen. But well played in the end from Palmer. You mentioned going across. Had to play around the front part to some extent yes, on that occasion, yes, which that can one. really get him into problems at some points in time. Yeah, and uh, you see, the, the thing with it is once batsmen move that early, it gives the bowler an opportunity to, to, to bowl straight. So once he misses, a uh, sort of a uh, Steve Smith thing, but Steve Smith is a special player. It's Lord once again. Short of a length. I think what we've seen from Lord is that he tends to bowl at different pace, at different lengths as well. Some of his deliveries are going through very well to the wicketkeeper. Some of them dying. Is it vibration? 
I'm not too sure if it's a natural variation or if it's the pitch itself. We're not sure. But what we can say for sure, the pitch definitely has some inconsistent bounce. There's no two ways about it. And I believe if he bends his back and don't forget about variation, he probably can get the same results like as he lived in his fast bowl yesterday. This one is wide outside the off stump. Michael Graves was watching that one go by to be taken by wicketkeeper Morris. But I think a, a danger ball for him as well is getting that ball to come back into the right hand. We've seen that on a couple of occasions, attempting that Yorker. Most of the Yes, yeah. getting a bit of movement on it as well. Definitely. So that's something that both of these batsmen have to be mindful of. And what is facing miss, up to Lord. What is missing from uh, Lord is consistency. If you become more consistent, you'll definitely be looking for a big shout for LBW. This one again, angling into the batsman, but this time starting a bit too straight, heading down the leg side. I think consistency is his problem, but he said this is just his second game, I think it is. Yes, maybe short of work or something of this sort, but certainly uh, uh, if, he, if he has become more consistent, he will definitely pose more problems, more so to uh, the, the aggressive farmer. So two slips. So that beloved third slip of yours not there anymore, Gunny. This one is outside the Austin once again. It's the end of another over. And that one kept a bit low. Because the wicket keeper um, took it almost to the ground, dying on him. As maybe the variation, maybe the pitch, we're not sure. But certainly um, what is missing is the consistency from Lord from that decision. Because the pitch is definitely giving assistance. There's no two ways about it. You're seeing it here from both um, Springer and Lord, and uh, basically they should recognize it by now that, hey, we need to be a little more consistent. Yes, a chance has gone a begging, but at the same time, at the same time, we have to put that behind our back and continue to try to be as consistent as possible. Yeah, so six overs completed. Um, um, Leeward Islands, they are 27 for one, so the scoring rate is reasonably good, four point two or four point three runs per over and this is an interesting move here Gunny in terms of the spinner the captain himself Nathan Seeley being introduced into the attack I think it's a very interesting move um, because what we saw yesterday with the one or two overs from the leg spinner he definitely got the ball to turn and bounce so it's an interesting move and this is also something we spoke about in terms of maybe the lack of uh, medium fast bowling options for Barbados um, coming into this game they tend to they did um pack their team with a lot of spinners. We have the like of, likes of Folks and um, Seeley himself and also Warrell. So three front line spinners. So the captain himself leading from the front, Nathan Seeley. What we, what we saw in the previous game with Guyana, we know it's the spinners really came into their own bowling on a different uh, surface. But this one I believe would assist the spinners. I believe that would because based on moisture is there as this as Shane want them to say once it's seeming they're gonna spin. Yes, Seely with fourteen wickets so far in the tournament. So he has had a very good tournament. In fact, he had a very good fifty over tournament as well. So that's transferring that form into the three day format. It's interesting to see how he goes here against Palmer. There's a man back at long off. I like the field placing. To be honest, I like the field placing. Deep mid wicket. Um, and they had short mid wicket, um, back pad, mm. uh, slip, backward point, short cover, extra cover. So, an in out type of feel for him. Maybe I would have liked to see him start maybe with uh, the, the long off in. It'd be tempting Palmer to go over the top. Well, the total is, um, they are over. The total is so small that he's trying to be attack and, uh, attack and defend at the same time. Palmer is driving this one nicely. There's a misfield there from the man there at extra cover. Should be able to get two runs and they do so comfortably. Maybe with a total of about 190. We've definitely seen a, a more attacking field, but with just 101, he has to be mindful of his team's overall position. So I, bet I like the field placing, to be honest with you. It's good. This one just getting a bit of torn, but slow torn really. Palmer was able to negotiate successfully. And I would encourage the bowler seeing that type of turn. Mm. 
Once again, well, flight to delivery, well played by Palmer. So being watchful in this first over of spin. And at the end of it, Leeward Islands, they are 29 for the loss of one. Seven overs completed. Yes, a very well lined over there from Sealy. Got his um, angles right, got the length right, and uh, the entire over batsman had to play in six deliveries. So I think it was a pretty good over. Testing over uh, is interesting over as well. And uh, it, the Leeward Island batsmen, uh, they responded by being watchful, being defensive, and try to see exactly what the balls are doing from Sealy from this the northern end here. But I think it's a very interesting ploy, and it's a question of how uh, it pans out, as I said, over the next couple of overs, mostly from Sealy left arm from this the northern end here. So it's a change of ends for uh, Dris Springer. Operated before from the commentary box end. So the captain decided to switch him to the back way end. Back way itself, we've seen um, not as crystal clear as we normally see it. You know, a bit of a cloud there. And to our left here, we've seen a bit of a dark cloud hanging around. Not threatening. It's hanging around to the left of us here, around the Calico area, Young Island area. Springer, no ball. So both opening bowlers have been guilty of that no ball problem. I think this is the fourth no ball being bowled. That's something you will see quite often in, in three day cricket. But as we said before, maybe they are striving just for that extra bit of effort, that extra bit of pace. And in doing so, they are overstepping the front line. Yes, you think he needs to line it up first to then look for a little bit of a pace. With the, with the definitely, there's an inconsistent bounce. There's no two ways about it, but he has to be mindful is to keep one line at all times whether it's good line good length and see, let the pitch do the rest yeah, just what um, Langford did yesterday um, when he started to bend his back then he started to realize look consistent line is the key here if we are to get wickets and they paid rich dividends and he was on a hat trick on two uh, separate occasions but he failed to um, convert it it's like getting penalties in football failed to convert it Agreed. So two slips, a gully, and their backward point cover, mid off, mid on, deep square leg and a fine leg. Well Not on the ball again. So definitely something off in terms of his run up here, just Springer. Having switched to that end, it's now bowled two consecutive no balls. Yeah, but what is interesting about the ball, he doesn't make any attempt to look to see where he's landing. He just walks straight back to his run up. Sometimes you bowl one or two no balls, especially the second one, they tend to wonder why. Where am I landing? You know, that type of thing. Springer once again. He's oh getting yeah. a bit of bounce there, an awkward bounce to the batter there, Michael Graves. That was an he awkward plays one. it out to the man at mid-wicket and he gets a single. Yeah, that so was he's off strike. That was an awkward one day and it cut back as well from somewhere around off stump and Start a plate in between that situation. He got out on the onside and collect a single. But he as is quite rightly said, the scoring rate is good. But he's not really coming from a long run gunny. And he's not a tall man. So it's really um, it's really unusual to see uh, that, uh, that number of no ball being bowled. As Palmer, he's on strike. Short delivery, he's pulling this one, getting the top edge, should get close to the boundary, it does. So quite fortuitous there from Palmer. But as we mentioned, anything in his zone, in his arc, and he deemed it hitable, he's going to play his shots. So another boundary for him, as the total moves on to 35 for the loss of one. Yeah, well, chances favor the brave. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. So once he sees that ball, he's going to put back to Willow. Uh, Willow, to, uh, Willow to Leather. And fortunate for him, he flew everybody's head down to the fence for a fortuitous fall, but that's the nature of the batsman. Yes, um, a safe shot in the end, uh, directly over the wicketkeeper's head. That would be the response from Springer. This ball in mm. this delivery just kept a bit low. Again, so that inconsistent bounce coming into play once again on this wicket. Well played though from Palmer. And a nice cloud cover with the 
couple of dark clouds about and uh, no, no threat of any rain, just the dark clouds just drifting across from east to west and the sun trying to fight in between it to get some sunshine on the field itself. So we'll see how it goes. Springer once again. Bows to Palmer. He's shot and he's once again evading that man at second slip. And we'll get to the boundary. They might come back for third. Yes. Uh, no, the bit indecisive there. But once again, that delivery going in that region, that third slip region again, Gully. Um, yeah. We've seen that he's employed the third slip from the, the, from the northern the end. From, yeah, from the northern end. But somehow along the line, we're not seeing a third slip with the bowler coming from the back way end. And definitely would have been a chance there for a third slip if he was in place. Yes, and he's very reactive. He's now put in the third slip. The horse has bolted away from the stable. Because I keep saying that since yesterday, third slip is a must on this pitch. It's slow, the inconsistent bounce, and uh, somebody like a palm who given an opportunity to get him out. He's pulling this one handsomely in front of square. Should be able to get to the boundary. Yes, this was the... Out of the three pull shots he attempted, this one was more definitive and a very good shot there from Palmer. Yes, definitely. This was the best of the three attempts. Uh, right on top of it and slammed it and to the right of long on to the fence for four. This was the best of the shot. As a matter of fact, the best shot he has played since he's been out there and started his inning for the Labour Island. But certainly he has taken the attack to the Barbados bowling. Definitely. One maybe not lifting as high as the previous deliveries that caused some problems for Palmer. This one was maybe waist height. He was able to just hit it in front of square. Tells me picked up the length very early. Shot again. He's pulling this one in front of square this time. Again, just trickled into the boundary. So a barrage of short deliveries here from Springer. But in the end, Palmer coming out on top. Another boundary for him. And the score moves on to... 45 for the loss of one. I think this last boundary is the best of the shots he has played because he was right on top of it and the bounce was correct and he really slammed it in front of square. Really, really a good shot from him. And uh, as we are saying, he, he continues the aggression uh, for his for the Leeward Islands and they are motoring along pretty rapidly based on the nature of this game from yesterday. Yes, I think we, we mentioned that even before coming on air, that if Palmer was to stay for any extended period of time, I'm sure they, he will wipe off this, this 101 made by Barbados. A bit of fortune for him so far in his innings, but as they say, fortune favors the brave. As we are now going to see Nathan Seeley coming into the attack and coming into the attack here in the commentary boxes. Alan Sukrukshan, good morning to you, Alan. Yes, good morning to you, Ozzy. Good morning to all our viewers. Quite an exciting day's cricket so far. Yes, Palmer has made it quite interesting. It's a seal it is. The start is second over. It's fighting this one, getting a bit of torn away there from Michael Graves. Was being a bit sedate at the other end, but equally effective. Delivery again, turning away from the right and the batter. And Nathan Seeley, 14 wickets in this tournament, the second highest wicket taker so far, after two rounds of matches. Average of 10.21, runs per over 2.58. So he's definitely, he's definitely one of the the most successful bowlers in this tournament. As Graves is driving this one out to the man there at mid off for a single. So he's doing his job here, Alan, so in terms of just getting the singles whenever they are available and turning his strike over to the more aggressive um, Palmer, Michael Palmer. Seely once again. Good line, good length. Palmer is forward. Plays it out to the man there at point. Well, with a, with a first inning score of 101, and they're already into the 40s for one. I think that they have put in a lot of pressure on the Barbados team so far. But the Barbados team must remember that they also were 42 without loss. And they were dismissed 401. Albeit in different conditions. Sun is out now. Um, but um, they must think that you know they, they need to dismiss Palmer. And maybe they can get some of the other batsmen. He has been very This aggressive. one is a quicker delivery. Should be given out. Yes. 
umpire Bona John raising the finger right there. An easy decision in the end. It was a quicker delivery there from Nathan Seeley. Chopping Palmer right in front on the back foot. And Leeward Islands, they lose their second wicket. Michael Palmer goes to 27 47 for the loss of two. Yeah, that was very good thinking and good bowling from Seeley. We have seen that. I think he noticed that Palmer is looking to play mainly off the back foot. And he was able to bowl that one a bit flatter, a bit faster, trapping him quickly um, on the back foot. He wasn't able to get down his bat in time. And that's a big wicket because we were saying, I was saying off here uh, that if Palmer bats until lunch, then they will be ahead of where um, the, 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 the Barbados got in their first innings. So uh, it's a very big wicket in that, you know, it, it, it stems the run rate uh, a little bit. You would not expect that the new batsman will be going at Palmer's rate, but you never know. Um, so they will be very happy with that wicket, the Barbados team. Very much so, as we see the new batter, Tianik Onore, coming in at number four. Somewhat of a, a promotion, I think. I, I think normally he bats in the lower order. I'm wondering if they wanted a left-hander, but why Onore and maybe not? Probably Edwards because of the bowling that he's done, maybe. Uh, but uh, he's usually ahead of Onore in the batting line. Right but I think they're looking at the spinners and they wanted to have a right and left co combination to try to offset the line a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's two right-handers there. I thought Honore was a left-handed batsman. I know he bowls left-handed. But he's batting right-handed. And Warrell is now introduced into the attack. Had yes. a lot of success in the 50-over game. Yes, so none of the Barbadian spinners being introduced into the attack. Having seen the success of CD, I'm sure Warrell will be looking to do the same. Right arm off spinner. He's flighting his delivery. I think that's what we saw from him in the 50 over tournament, giving the ball a bit of air, bowling slow. This, and that definitely gave him some success in the 50 over tournament. Maybe yes, hoping that not. some of that form can be transferred into this 3-day three three format. It's bowled into Graves, and Graves just punching this one straight back to the bowler. Yes, he got six wickets in his game here in the 50-over format against the Jamaican team. And so he would have good memories of Anne as well. I think most of the spinners in this tournament, Alan so has good memories of um, Anne as well. But it's an interesting period of the game here where the both of the spinners are in operation. We haven't seen that a lot in this game so far. Albeit the, the conditions that presented themselves yesterday didn't really allow for that. As this one is, is it edging to the man there at short leg? Umpire Rajkumar unmoved, really. Another flighty delivery there, a bit of tone. Michael Graves coming forward. Um, maybe a bit of pad. Yes, the umpire deemed that one to have come directly off the pad, no inside edge on that occasion. But um, something that you really didn't see a lot from the um, Leeward Island team, which is employing a short leg. It's Warrell again, it's delivery. He's playing back, Michael Graves, maybe should have been a bit forward. But having gone forward on the previous delivery, maybe that created some doubt, doubts in his mind. So well constructed over here so far from Warrell. Another flighted delivery. Um, Grave is covering up. So a tidy over there from um, Warrell. A main actually. It's 47 for the loss of two. Yes, looking at Warrell um, I, I, and the, the way that Graves has approached that last over. Graves, as you mentioned, he's looking to come forward and smother the delivery. But that last one that popped up close there um, off the pad. With the, loud, um, the loud appeal, I think that that made him a little apprehensive, and he went back to the following delivery, uh, which almost snuck um, snuck through his defenses. So, um, a little bit of um, you know um, punch and, and counter here by the bowler and the batsman. Um, a new batsman, Honore, he will have his hands full dealing with Seely, who will be very confident after taking um, the, that first wicket. Well, he has been a confident man all season. Alanson, both in the 50 over format and this 3 day tournament as he's flighting this one again getting a bit of drift back into the right hander 
He's boarding from the correct end as well. You get some drift with the wind blowing from left to right. You help his arm ball, something similar to what he, he bowled to Palmer. A bit quicker, a bit flatter. Coming in with the arm. There's something that is usually said that spinners like to bat against spinners. I'm not too sure if that may have had some influence on the promotion of Honori himself. Um, being a, a left arm spinner. This one is taking the outer portion of the bat. It was a, sim was a single on offer there. Both batters a bit indecisive on that occasion. It's an apology coming from Graves there. That was a, a very long single. Uh, could have jogged that one actually. Remember there are two other matches being played. We'll give you an update of those on after this over is completed. So there's a slip, a man at short leg, mid wicket, mid off, mid on. Cover extra cover backward point for CD. This one is played back to the bowler. So definitely a break on the scoring in the last couple of overs, having Effected the dismissal of Michael Palmer, the Barbadian team. And yeah, that is something that you will see from Seeley. He's very um, miserly in his bowling. Doesn't bowl a lot of bad deliveries. This one is short and Honori working it out to a, a deep square leg position. Comes back for a second. So he's up and running. And total moves on to 49 for the loss of two. Yes, so in the game played at Park Hill between Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, the Trinidad and Tobago team, they're five without loss. So play just started a, a couple of overs ago, 2.3 overs. In terms of Windward Islands versus Jamaica, Jamaica, they are 52 for two, 14.2 overs. This game is being played at Sand Hill playing field. There's a lot of rain yesterday and uh, that, I think, delayed the start at Park Hill. Um, they are to the north of where we are. You're familiar with the geography of St. Vincent and as well as very close to Sign Hill. And so conditions will be quite similar in terms of what the weather is giving us. While Park Hill is more to the central eastern part of the country. And so um, they may have experienced a little bit of different weather yesterday, probably a bit more rain than we had. It's worried once again. Flight of delivery. There was Palmer. There was um, Grave, sorry. Coming forward. So Warrell just getting into his spell here, getting into a bit of rhythm. These half spinners. Bowling a very good channel to the right handed batter. It's a man at slip. Um, silly mid on. Backward point cover. Mid off, mid on, mid wicket, square leg. And the man at deep square leg. So, quite a bit of feelers in the circle. We'll be hoping to get another breakthrough here for the Barbadian team before the lunch and interval. Which is still a fair distance away. It's now 11 o'clock here at the Annesway playing field. Yes, the next little break will be the drinks break. And. Uh, He was not want to go there without having lost and another wicket. They are two down. In response to 101. They are about halfway to that total. Or right, again, a good flight of delivery. So his second min in a row. And at the end of the twelfth over, Leeward Island responding to 101 being made by Barbados. They're 49 for the loss of two as the player takes a, take a, a drinks break and we'll do so as well here in the commentary box.
Yes, welcome back to the Honestville Playing Field. A live action here in the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars Under 19 tournament. Match played between the Leeward Islands and Barbados. Remember yesterday we had overcast day really. Better conditions here for cricket today. In terms of the sun peeking out. Barbados yesterday were inserted by the Leeward Islands. They folded for 101. And in response, the Leeward Islands, they are 49 for the loss of two. And we're going to see Captain Seeley continuing proceedings here from the commentary box end. So coming into this game, we had um, Seeley, Captain Seeley, on 14 wickets. He would have added to that with the wicket uh, of um, Michael Palmer. So he's on to 15. Still chasing Tariq Edward, though. We we'll top of the list as this one is played straight to the man that made on. Good single in the end. Well judged by both batters. So 50 coming up for the Leeward Islands in the 13th over. Run rate of 4.03. Yes, I, I'm just going to comment a little bit on that single. And uh, that is something you didn't see very often yesterday from the um, from the Barbados team. They were under a lot of pressure considering the conditions and there wasn't much rotation of strike. It's a good full of delivery there from Seeley, Yorker delivery. And Edwards jams down on it, keeps it out. Graves, sorry. Almost an action replay of the previous delivery there. I think Seeley's job here is really to just exert some pressure, scoreboard pressure, keep things very tight, and uh, try to take some wickets as well. This one is full and looking to drive his graves, doesn't get it past the man at point, there's no run. Oh, and this one was. Uh, it was flat, but it turned. Some quick turn. Well watched there by, by Michael Graves. And at the end of the over, score is 50 for two. So the 50 up for the Leeward Islands team in that over. They are now 51 runs behind the Barbados first innings. And we have the twin spin attack of Seeley and Worrell in operation here. Both of whom have been very successful in both versions of the Cricket West Indies on the 19 Rising Stars competition this time around, both the three day and the 50 over formats. Not a quick single there. And that's good, good batting and good thinking. Good running by the pair. It's a very good single again from the, these two batters. They seem to have good communication channels between them. Was walking the ball into the gaps and manipulating the strike. This one is pulled away to the man at the square. Square leg just forward of square on the boundary. Shot by Warrell. Graves, he got into his crease and pulled that away for an easy single. This time it's a flighty delivery. Norris is forward, he plays it calmly out to the man at short leg. one is another flight oh that's oh my that was perilously close to the man there at short leg he was diving forward wasn't able to get his fingers under it in the end but that looks like it was an opportunity there for the Barbados team Boeing's the man there at short leg another appeal there from Warren seems to be causing some problems here Yes, Being definitely. The, the way he's flighting the ball, he's giving the ball an opportunity to turn. 
and the man of short leg, he's been in action for most of his spell. Unfortunately, on that previous occasion, not being able to take that catch as this one is pulled out to the man there at deep mid-wicket for another single. So at the end of the over, the score is now 53 for 2. The Leeward Islands on the 19 team in response to 101 made by the Barbados on the 19 team. And and also that I like the way that they're approaching playing Warren so far. They're trying to come forward as often as possible. But as soon as he's fractionally short, they're getting deep into their crease and looking to, to hit him through the onside. Um, so he has to be mindful of that fact. So it's not a case where he's feeling no pressure at all and he can do as he please, so to speak. Yes, a bit of risk-free batting, as we can call it. It's working the ball into the gaps, and I think that's something that has been lacking for a large portion of this, this tournament. The batsmen just doing similar to what we have just seen there. Another single down to the man there at mid-on. It's a good run in between these two, trying to repair whatever damage would have been caused earlier from the Barbadian bowlers. 54 now for two. Yes, very quick single there. Honori, he's rapid across the ground, it seems. You saw him in the field as well. So getting to the danger end there quite quickly. And even with a direct hit, it seems from our vantage point that he would have been in. So it brings Graves back into strike to Sealy. Sun out, out at Arnesville. This one is he's defending, looking for a single. Possibly could have been a single actually. Based on where he played it in the gap. But his non striker didn't look up for it. This one is flighted. He's driving. This time they get the single out to the man at cover point. It's good cricket here from the Leeward Islands. Just walking the ball for singles. Getting a bit of momentum back into their innings, trying to recapture the type of momentum we had when Palmer was at the crease. Maybe not by hitting boundaries, but at least by walking the ball into gaps and rotating the strike. It's well played there by Honori. Coming forward to that delivery, covering it up nicely. Back to the man at extra cover. This one is flighted. And that's a wonderful delivery. Appeal there for stumping. Looking to the man, the, the umpire there at point, not square leg in this occasion. He's at point standing. But not out, says the umpire. Yes, that was a very good delivery there from Sealy. Once again, getting the ball to drift into the right unders and then leaving them off the pitch. Well, bold. Oh, that's a naughty shot there from Honori. That one was a bit too full to attempt that slug sweep. There's also a man there. So if he got contact, he had to make sure that he got it very well to, to clear the man. Um, but that one was full, too full, far too full for um, a slug sweep shot. Yes, definitely um, a bit loose there from Honori. He has played well so far. Played the ball in the V to get some singles to get his innings going on that occasion maybe just seeing his name in the lights somewhere over at Annisville old tarmac but thankfully for him he missed it completely he lives to fight another day 55 for the loss of two leeward islands he trailed by a four to 46 so Warrell in now. This one is flighted. Looking for the drive is Graves. Inside edge onto his feet. Some excitement there from the Barbadian feelers. But the dismissal for them on that occasion. A little shorter, but flatter, faster. He was looking to get onto the back foot to punch the onside, offside, but rushed him. I think Warry looks like the type of bowler that as a batter you just want to get on top of. You know, and, and tends to flight the ball a great deal. This one again getting a bit of tone. Chance for a run out. Single completed in the end. And let's speak about the running odds. They are taking every opportunity to score. And 
that is something very good that we are seeing here from this pair for the Leeward Islands. Every opportunity to score, they are making sure that they uh, they um, they maximize and optimize it. And that's excellent cricket. Yes, it's the type of cricket that we've been calling for for a while. In terms of building a partnership, getting used to the conditions that are on offer. And so far, these two are, are doing very well for the Leeward Islands. This one is torn, but straight to the man, just back with a square. No run there. In fact, if he had attempted a run, I'm sure that they would have been run out. Warriel, again, he'll be bowling to Anori. This one is flighted again. Comes forward, covers it up, back to the bowler. Yes, as you mentioned, he gives the ball a generous flight. He's a short man, um, but you know he gets that ball high above the batsman's eye line. Uh, this one is a bit flat. I swept and straight to the man at short leg. It went into his midriff and bounced out. <laughs> it, uh, he could have gotten that one. A difficult chance there. I think there was a bit of a lucky break there for Nori. Thankfully for him, the, the fielder there... Boins wasn't able to hold on really. Yes, I think on the on the on the rebound he, he had an opportunity to take it, but he was still down in the evasive position. So I don't think that he saw that it popped out so close to him. Yes, a, a full-blooded sweep there from Onori, <laughs> and that would have been a, a freak of a catch really from the man there at short leg. Well, he's not rubbing, so he's a he's a tough little man. Sealy, you'll be continuing to Graves. And this one keeps a little low. He was correctly onto the back foot looking to punch to the offside, but that one really kept low, turning away from him. As we hear the sandblasting in the background there, some construction work ongoing here at the Arnesville playing field. Seely is in again. He's bowling to Graves. Flighty delivery. Phone to us, actually. They punch it down to the man at mid-off. And they get an easy single in the end. Slight misfield there from Lord. Goes to Honore. This one is a, oh, that's a wicked delivery. This one angled in, pitched outside the leg stump, spun past him, bounced. Really, he really had everything. Indeed, it's another, a wicked. <laughs> another brilliant delivery there from Seely. I've seen him produce a couple of those deliveries so far in this bowling spell. Definitely want to to look out for really from the Leeward Islands perspective. That one again getting a bit of tone, a bit of drift, a bit of bounce. Nicely played on this occasion by Honore. So definitely some encouragement encouragement there for the spinners. Mentioned before Barbadian team. Packed with a, a couple of spinners today. More than usual. Still folks to come into the attack. Isaiah Fox. Yes, and I think what has happened here is that both teams, I think, have bowled, uh, are bowling the conditions that are suiting their attack, their respective attacks. Although Leeward Islands may argue that they still have a lot of spinners that they didn't use, but for any length of time. But the, the pace bowl has definitely enjoyed conditions yesterday. As we now come to the end of the over, at the end of the over, the Leeward Islands are 57 for two. Yes, another tight over there from Nathan Seeley. Just one run coming from it. Figures of one for nine from six over so far. So he has bowled miserly in this spell. Also looked very threatening as well. So I think he will continue to operate from this end. And maybe rotate his other spinners and maybe a seamer from the other end. 
But for now, it's going to be Warrior to continue operation. What's had his moments in this spell? He's bowling quite nicely, actually. Um, has dropped one or two a little short on some occasions, but he's prepared to give the ball some air, cause the batsman to really think about what they have to do in response to that flight, whether to get forward or back whether they are going to be aggressive or they are going to be defensive. And the short leg has been in play throughout his spell. As he comes in now, full of delivery, driven by Gra Graves down to the man at a deepish mid-off and single take and comfortably in the end. I don't think he will mind that shot though. It's, it's Graves trying to play through the offside. In, in essence, he's playing against the turn with that ball coming back in. So that's definitely a, a dismissal he'll be looking forward to, especially versus Graves. This one is hit to the man at mid-wicket, no run, by Honore. Yes, and that's, that's the off-spinner's dream wicket, as you would say. Uh, flighting and bowl, bowling the right-hander, getting between bat and pad. Looking to pull there. Not that short, but because of the line, I think he went with the shot based on the line. And there's nobody on the boundary behind Square on the off on the on side. But they didn't make contact. This one is a full toss. <laughs> it's hit over the man there at mid wicket. They're gonna get two runs. Easily. They have been running well. Um, he'll be disappointed with it, but it's also a no ball. No ball for height. Seem to have slipped out his hands there, Rowan. Yes, it's one of those full tosses where <laughs> it's hard to really make up your mind where you want to deposit it. In the end, he chose to go over mid wicket. Maybe a better option might have been over third man. You know, trying to uppercut. Yeah, because it was very high. Yeah. Clearly um, eluding the grasps of the bowler there on that occasion. Forward nicely is Honore on to that delivery, which straighter one, a little bit flatter, not as much flight as we have seen from him. This one is playing it softly, but well fielded there by Donut Slip. He's looking to guide that one to third man for a single. one is short but punch airily but safely in the end down to the man at long on single taken and that's the end of the over at the end of the over the leeward islands are 62 for two they are currently 39 runs adrift of the first innings total of the barbados on the 19 team yes the leeward islands continues to chip away at this total not a large total not a huge total really barbados being dismissed for 101 what we've seen from these two is that they're prepared to really run hard between the wickets. We've seen quite a few quick singles being taken. And that definitely put a, a lot of pressure on the opposition. Um, the Barbadian feel from time to time we've seen being spreaded. So a lot of opportunities for singles there and the Leeward Island batters, they're capitalizing on the opportunities available. one is a straight delivery from Sealy and Honore gets some bat on it should get an easy two and gets there very comfortably there was some hesitation about taking the second but it was always two and he gets there in the end yes batting becoming or appearing to be a bit easier than some po some periods we had yesterday the sun is out so maybe that too is contributing to the ease at which we are seeing the, the leeward line and batters accumulate these runs. This one is flatter, looking to punch it. But coming off the inner half of the bat, also quite low on the bat. No run. This time the 
punches it, but straight to the man at mid wicket. So again, no run. And Seeley has proven again to be quite difficult to get away, and quite consistent in his lines and lengths. Again, he's in. This one is short, it's pulled hard, but straight to the man at deep mid wicket. So only a single to Honore. That was a, a, a long hop on that occasion, but not finding the gap. Ooh, and this one turns prodigiously from outside the leg stump. Graves initially was looking to turn it on the onside, but because of the turn, he just ended up on us, you know, at the last minute, just let it hit his back back in front of him. But that one had some serious turn on it. As he comes again, Seely is into Graves. This one is fuller. He's covering it up on the off stump. There's no run, and that's the end of the over. The Leeward Islands are 65 for two. Yes, another good over there from C, causing a bit of problems for the Leeward Island batters. And equally, um, well played by the Leeward Island batsmen as well. Managed to get free runs from that over. So they continue to just um, accumulate runs here this, af this morning, sorry, in this first session. 65 for the loss of two. So they really require, um, they are behind by 36, yes, 36 runs. So both of these batters would, would like to be there at least by lunch and then reassess and see how much of a lead they can get on the Barbadian team in this first innings. Another thing is that it's really hard to judge whether or not the, the wicket would have eased a bit. I'm seeing that we're not seeing the seamers in operation at this time. So far we've seen two spinners, spinners operating in tandem. And this one is short again. Coming up off the pad onto the glove, but going down. Could have gone up, could have popped up. He's looking to pull that one behind square. Yes, you mentioned that um, the seamers have not operated for very long, but they are a bit limited in their options. The Barbados team on in this particular game. This one, he's pulling it out to the man at. Oh my, he drops it. The man at forward square leg on the boundary. It went right into his hands. And Achilles Brown, it looks like from here, yes, number three, Achilles Brown, dropped a very simple chance. There's another catch going down here from the Barbadian team. They've been very sloppy as it relates to their catching this morning. A short delivery there from Warrell, and there was Onori going back and playing what appears to be a favoured pull stroke from him. Straight into the arms of the man there at deep square leg, and he put it down. So another life there for... Onori is living a charmed life so far in this innings. This one, Gears goes back. He punches in the gap. Should be able to get two. Yes. Two runs taken quite comfortably in the end. So two runs there to Graves. Use his crease well. He went back deep into his crease and with a straight bat punch it in the gap. Just forward or square on the offside. That's the delivery that he has been looking for. Beating the drive, flighted, turning back in. Um, appeal for stomping, but not out, says umpire Joseph. It's a very good delivery there from Morel. We've seen quite a bit of that from him. He's given the ball enough air to, to lower the batter forward. And on that occasion, getting a bit of tone as well. Thankfully for Graves, his back feet was grounded, his back foot was grounded. But seem to prefer to bowl to Graves. Appears to be causing him a bit more problems. This one is turning into him. So that shot that he's looking to play where he's backing away and punching with a straight bat through the offside. Risky shot. He has to watch it right onto the bat. And at the end of the over. The score is now 68 for two. Leeward Islands on the 19 in the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars competition. 
Yes, you mentioned a risky shot. A risky shot indeed there from Michael Graves. With the delivery turning back into you as a right-handed batter. So it's going to be difficult to play through the offside. I think both batsmen really approaching the innings differently in terms of Honore, he's more prepared to go on the back foot and pull. But Graves, he's prepared to go on the back foot and try to punch it through the offside. So that's something to the, for the bowler to be mindful of as well. Definitely as Seeley continues. Oh, and that's a lovely delivery. Turning away, beating the, the forward push there from Honore. Seely appears to have this ball on a string, really. It's landing it there or thereabouts. Getting a bit of turn, getting a bit of drift. Definitely be a handful on this wicket. Yeah, so is it a ball or is it a yo-yo? As he comes in again. Bowling to Honore. Flatter. Covers this one up. Back to the bowler. On the front foot. Straight bat. High elbow in the approved manner. This one is a bit shorter. Gets it into the gap. Should be an easy single. Yes, taken. And again, these two keep up the, the good running between the wickets. There has been one or two maybe cases of indecision from them, but all in all, they have been um, aggressive in their mindset and um, positive in their mindset regarding the running between the wickets and the rotation of strike. Agreed. This one is full. Defends it. And uh, there's no run. Barbados looking a bit flat now in the, in, the, in, in, in the field. Not a lot of encouragement we are seeing from the feelers. As this one again is another quick single. And it's a close one. <laughs> hmm. uh, uh, well, uh, interesting uh, uh, there. He didn't, he didn't run his bat in. His feet may have been across the crease. But that's always a dangerous ploy. You really need to run your bat in. Even if you have to take some evasive action after, the new rule is that once you have gotten in, then you could jump out. Uh, well, definitely not the approved manner in terms of the coaching manual. You're told by your coaches to really slide your bat into your crease. On that occasion, Michael Graves didn't. Thankfully for him, he made it in the end. So another over completed there from Barbados. And... 70 for 2 at the end of the over and uh, Royal he'll continue now to Graves this one is shorter, he cuts it in the gap it will challenge the boundary but it won't get there does it? yes it does yes it does, so 4 runs there to Doesn't, it's not that knowledge by the, the fielder so they run 3 close one so in the end, not a judge to be four by the umpire. So three runs taken. Brings Honore back into strike and into the commentary box. It brings Stanley Gunning Hines to join me as Honore defends. Back to the bowler. Warrell, who does the feeling. Flighty delivery again. He comes forward, pushes it back to Warrell. There's no run. 73 for two. In the 22nd over. Loud call of no. By Graves on that occasion. Flighted. He's looking for the sweep. Loud appeal. And he's out. LBW. He tried that he tried the slug sweep a bit earlier in his innings. And it was a very full delivery. And again, I think that that delivery was too full for that shot. And uh, he was defeated there and dismissed LBW. 
Good. Uh, thank you very much, Alison. But certainly, I came into the seat. The moment the appeal went up, I said, oh, because from where I'm sitting here, I'm directly behind it. I can definitely see the ball palpably hitting middle stump. So the umpire had no hesitation in lifting the finger. But it's a good um, breakthrough for the Barbados team based on the fact that the rate at which the Leeward Islands batsmen are going, and it's a very positive um, position taken there as the finger went up, they got in a third wicket. Uh, what they need to do now, the Barbados side, is to press on to see if they can effect another breakthrough before lunch, which is now what, about 28, minutes, 29 minutes there from, from, because with a very small total of 101, they need to make inroads based on the rate at which they are going at what, about 3.8 there about. So a good wicket for Barbados at this juncture. Yes, very important wicket and uh, you know the these two are looking very busy at the crease. They had put on 26 runs. Uh, we have not seen Jewel Andrew at the, the crease just yet. Uh, we're seeing the skipper now, Boeing Tuckett, who has joined Michael Graves. And I'm wondering if that spell yesterday when Jewel Andrew, after bowling those two overs of medium pace, he limped off the field. And again, I was saying to myself, why risk one of your better batsmen to bowl that over in those conditions when you have your top bowlers doing well? And maybe he's carrying an injury, Gunny. Maybe we need to have that check during Yes, lunch. we'll find out during lunchtime. During lunchtime. Because we have seen the, the batting order reshuffled from the position that you usually expect him to come at number four. Royal is in. Bowling to tuck it to we wait on the signal to see if it's leg by or if he's off the mark. Two buys actually, two buys. So still yet to score, but it adds to the team total, which is now 75 for three. 75 for three, the Leeward Islands. In response to 101 by the Barbados team. Yes, well, as for the past hour or so, the pitch seemed to have eased, maybe, as the batting seemed to have gotten a bit easier, or maybe with the absence of the seamers, where the ball is doing whatever it's doing there, um, the batsman, the Barbadian batsman got a reprieve. The Little Islands batsman got a reprieve. So, and they're making hay while the, while the sun is sh shining. Yes, that, that pun, not really a pun today, it's actually true. The sun is shining and they're actually making hay. As Graves goes back to cut, no run on that occasion. Seely getting another one to turn prodigiously away from the right hander. Full of delivery, but Yorker length dug out by Graves. Seely continues his spell. Full of delivery again, played back quietly down the pitch by Graves. Feel it by Bowens at short leg. And Bowens is a very short man. This one is looking to cut. There's a loud appeal, but not out, says umpire Joseph. It was a was bit stifled in the end, the appeal. It wasn't that for Sifferson an appeal yeah. for, uh, for the catch of the wicket. And um, they sort of stifled it towards the end. Yeah. The bowler and the keeper alone appealed. And here is, oh, and that's a quicker one. That's bowling. Bold. That's a quick delivery there from from Sealy, and and uh, there was Graves. He was uncertain as to whether to go back or forward. Halfway in between in the end, and he has been bowled. Next stump is out of the ground, and I think that's a very big wicket because Graves is the one on this Leeward Islands team. He looks to bat long, and uh, he's basically what I would say maybe the the the. The, the rock of their batting in terms of holding things together. And now that he has been dismissed, I'm sure that the Barbados team will feel overjoyed. He should have been forward rather than back with that delivery, and it kept low. 
and it hit uh, the, the stumps and he's on his way back. But certainly, as I said previously, it's a question if Leeward Islands can make further inroads before lunch. And they've got a fourth wicket, which will lift their spirits, bearing in mind it's only 101, because from what you're saying, this is a bowler's wicket. Yes, it is. It's favoring it's both, it. both pace and pace spin. Pace and spin. So I, I still believe there's enough uh, uh, stuff there but the seamers can still create more problems. But the spinners are doing it for Barbados. Uh, the, f the seamers did it for the Leeward Islands. And I would suggest at this early stage, it is going to be a low scoring game. Yes, I would, I would dare venture to ag agree with you on that, um, on that point. That the pitch is looking quite challenging for batting. Um, both teams we have seen on the pitch now. We have seen spin, we have seen pace. And it's looking quite challenging for the batsmen on both teams. I think the, the, the key word here is consistency. Because the bowling attack that can bowl more consistent at the stumps will reap most a quicker success than spraying the ball over the place. Because the pitches definitely has varying bounce, up and down. That last um, wicket that fell, the ball kept definitely kept low. So Nathan Edward is the new batsman, all rounder. He's been oh looking to turn that one. Was it a chance? And the, they're going to get two runs. Let's yeah, wait for the signal. Leg by, signal by umpire Joseph, so not a chance. But two important runs added to the team total. It's now 77 for four. Leeward Islands 77 for four in response to Barbados 101. And that's the end of Sealy's over. Successful over by him. He now has figures of he now has figures of nine overs, one maiden, two for fourteen. And so he's doing silly things, so to speak. That is how he has been going in the tournament but so far. Isn't he the skipper of the team? Yes, he is. Right, so he's decided I'm going to lead from the front because bearing in mind is a small total, I'll have to see how best I can lead from it in front to bring my country's uh, position back into this game totally. And they are right back in it. Yes, it's only a matter of 25 more runs, but at the same time, they are right in the game. Another wicket again, just before lunch, can create problems. As I said previously, it was 75 for three, 77 for four. We've seen wickets fall in clusters. Yes, and they may be a batsman short because, as we have said before, we haven't seen Jewel Andrew, who is usually uh, batting at four, and made 100 the last game as well, so no question of form for him. So it may be that there's some niggle or something, um, and we'll confirm that when we get back on here after lunch. This one is a quick single, but... It's an overthrow. Oh I was about to say that that Boeing Tuckett he got there quite easily in the end. He has, he's very quick between the wickets, but there were three fielders backing up and it eluded all three of them. That is exactly the point I was making. It eluded three fieldsmen on the onside from that throw. And it, it, something had to be wrong why it happened. Because normally if the first one would miss, you expect the second one to stop it. Because there was no deflection from anything. And all three went to begin and they got an additional run. Yes, I don't know if it's a case that it hit somewhere on, on one of those um, pitches and it probably deviated just a little bit. Yeah, but even the third man is right on the outfield, it just lost green. Mm -hmm. So at least he should have stopped it. At least. This one is swept behind square. Should there be at least a couple? True. And uh, the turn now, they should get it comfortably. And uh, that's all there will be. So Bowen took it. Gets uh, two runs to him. He's now on to four runs. And, uh, he's the skipper of the Leeward Islands team. And facing up to Warrell. Flatter. Punching off the back foot, but straight to the man at mid off, no run. And uh, when he was in the field, he took seven catches behind the wicket, the Leeward Islands skipper. It's maybe some sort of a record 
because generally we could keep us ten to have three, four, maybe five, which is a milestone. So to read seven. Yes, I, I would venture to think so without even having any check of records or anything. But I'd venture to think that if it's not, it's probably close to one at least. Close to yeah. if it is if it's not. Yeah. Because definitely to have a wicket keeper taking seven catches in one innings, uh, the number rings a bell. Absolutely. So eighty-one for four. Seely will continue. We're bowling to Nathan Edward. He's calling up some more feelers. So now that they've taken some wickets, see. Is there a next spin? I think you said they had three spinners in the attack. Yes, there's a leg spinner, folks, who hasn't bowled as yet. So Maybe a good time to try him closer to launch, especially from the southern end, because Seely is definitely tie has tied up this end with nine overs, one, two for 14, and really has tied it up. So one is full and driven to mid wicket, no run. And his field placing is pretty good. I said at the beginning, his field placing was pretty good, you know, with um, this silly mid on leg slip, slip three men in attacking positions. This one is a bit shorter, but Edward, Edward elects to play calmly to the man at mid wicket. And with probably, probably a batsman shot, you know, so, which we have to check. Because um, time spent off the field is enough time they've been batting for him to have arrived at the crease. This one is driven firmly but well fielded by Seely off his own bowling. And as you said, he's leading from in front with his bowling, his field placing, his captaincy. Pretty good, pretty good. one is full again just down the leg side oh there's a dive there from the man at leg slip did it come off the bat let's wait on the umpire to see the, the signal to see what happens. It's yes it's a chance going down yes. <laughs> no signal by umpire joseph so fortunate, things happening here fortunate we just commended him for what he's been doing thus far could have easily got another wicket and a fifth leeward island wicket as well had that chance been taken but the next step is a good field placing. Yes, he's I think the, the field placing is good. I said mm -hmm. I commend him for his field placing and he's bowling to the, the field at the SF. Captain to captain. Covers up. Bowing tuck it. Back to the man at mid-wicket. No run is taken. And with the uh, mid-off up, he's challenging the batsman to go over into a long half area if you need to get some runs. Go aerial. This one is shorter, but pull straight to the man at mid on, and there's no run. So at the end of his 10th over, Seely he has figures of 2 4 15. 15. This is pretty good. And boy. it's 82 for 4. It's 82 for 4 here at the Hannesville playing field in the Leeward Islands in response to Barbados under 19's first innings of 101. Don't you think it might be a wise move with just a couple of minutes to go? before lunch to introduce the leg spinner. Yes, Especially I two I new batsmen in. Yes, I would want to see what he's doing and see what he's getting off the pitch. We saw an over yesterday from uh, Mackenzie, the Leeward Islands leg spinner, in which he got a lot of turn, including a googly that turned wickedly in from off stump. From outside off stump. So was fortunate to survive the LBW uh, appeal. Yes. So here's Warrell to continue. Didn't do my homework. I still haven't found out whether or not he's related to the great Sir Frank Wawel. This one is swept behind square. Will challenge the boundary. Will it get there? Yes, it does. So a good sweep executed there by, by Nathan Edward. It was just around the leg stump line. And he got his, his bat over it. Rolled the wrist, found the gap. And a good looking boundary there from Edward. Yes, a good boundary there. As I um, even strengthened my inquisitiveness in relation to having the leg spinner in because uh, certainly he's not as tight as Seeley and with runs being so close in terms of their response could pose a little bit of a problem because you're trying to get wickets. This one turns away from Edward outside the off stump. That's the line that he needs to be bowling at. Consistently. Yeah. That is the key word here. As again, Seeley was there making you play 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 and you when you miss i will hit 
Again, he goes a bit straighter, but played calmly there by Edwin. No run added to the total, which is 86 for four. Fifteen runs behind. Ooh, and this one bounced and turned. Beaten outside the off stump there with a uh, lovely delivery there from Warrior. I think Dan Warrior's problem is consistency. Eh? Because he's strained, sprained, rather than be, like, for instance, that last delivery. Try to remember where he bowled the other day and try and continue to bowl in that area, that general area. And that, um, because of the behavior that delivery, he has moved the silly mid on over now to a gully. But he has to be consistent. This time it's outside the awesome Feel it by that man who just was just placed there. Got some bowings. There's Warrell again. This one outside the off stump. Lobbed. He was playing against the turn, but he didn't go for a full body shot because the, the backward square was out on the boundary. So turned it for a single in the end. So another single to Nathan Edward. And the score moves up to 87 for 4 at the end of the over. So the Leeward Islands 87 for 4. They are now 14 runs adrift of the first innings total of the Barbados. Yes, and the Barbados certainly will be trying their utmost silly and uh, worried to see if they can effect another breakthrough before lunch. And they're being denied by Tuckett and uh, Edwards. So we have an interesting, what, 11, 12 minutes before lunch to see exactly how things will pan out. Did they um, send the lunch time or because of the late start at quarters same then? Would it be at 12, 15? Same at 12. Okay, right. So they have an next 10, 12 minutes before lunch. And they'll be happy if they can effect another wicket. This one is driven down the ground. Four runs by Nathan Edward. Probably the best shot. This one was flighted up by Celia and Edward. He went into that shot with some ferocity. Got it to the boundary. That's a good shot. Probably the best shot for the morning. Flighted and he came and struck it powerfully along the ground to the boundary for a, a, a welcome four runs to the Leeward Islands total. And uh, once the ball is just there, there about, he's going to see how many runs he can get. But certainly at 91 for four, that was a very good shot there by Edwards. Yes, so just 10 runs adrift now. Sealy to continue. Let's see how he responds. Pulls his length back. And doesn't really have to play because, of course, it's turning away from the, the stump. So he just pads it out. There's a leg slip there and a short leg. So if he doesn't have to play on the, the pads, he would not. This one is fuller. Dug out by Edward to the man at midwicket. There's no run. So there's a, a leg slip. There's a conventional slip. There's a short leg. There's a backward square leg who is maybe two thirds of the way back. And the forward square leg, the midwicket long on. And again, he elects not elects not to play, which is smart batting there from Nathan Edward. Bunks. There's some bunks in that one as well, so he allowed it to strike in some way on his tie pad. Yes, pull, the pull the bat away. Sensible thinking. And he covers up on that last delivery. Still no run. Now both batsmen probably be looking to launch, but I'm sure if they have the opportunity to score, they will look to do so. Edward, mindful of the close infielders on the leg side, goes back again, plays with a straight bat, watches it carefully, and at the end of the over, the score is 91 for four. The Leeward Islands in response to Barbados on the 19s, 101 in the first innings. Yes, and uh, with things seemingly a bit easier with the batsmen at the crease, I will be tempted to introduce the leg spin. As I said, it what two of us you know, try something because your main aim is to effect another breakthrough. Bearing in mind we're not too sure about the health in relation to batting of one of their principal batsmen. Yes, Drew Andrew, he hasn't come to the crease as yet. 
went off yesterday with, with seemingly a bit of a nickel. Just coming towards the end of the day's play. This one is full. Uh, looking to hit it maybe a little bit too hard was Boeing Tuckett. He was probably aiming a bit straighter, but the bottom hand came in to the shot. I'm wondering if he's trying to allow a team that launch is not too far. And to, be <laughs> and to be extra careful because we cannot afford to lose another wicket before lunch. Seven, well, eight minutes. Yes, it's captain and vice captain, so his lieutenant just coming to remind him there. This one is full and he covers this one up, so maybe that was the message from his vice captain. Yeah, probably that is what happened. Recognizing the situation. You think he'll maybe tempted and maybe just before lunch ready leg spinner? Try something. Well, he has just maybe a couple of overs after this one to try. This one, he's forward. They're looking for a quick single. And this is something that we commented on, um, Gunny, when you were um, not on your stint. Uh, myself and, uh, and us that we pointed out that the Leeward Islands, they have been very aggressive in their running. They have taken every opportunity to score runs by running between the wickets. Unlike what we saw from Barbados yeah, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, we saw the complete reversal as to what transpired yesterday. A full delivery played calmly back by Nathan Edward. And time here now in St. Vincent and the Eastern Caribbean. 11.55, so maybe one more over two. or two if the spinners persist before lunch. Using his feet on that occasion was um, Edward. Has been positive against the spinners. Has looked to move around in the crease, has attacked when he has gotten the opportunity. So, putting something in the spinner's mind to think about as well. It continues to him, Edward. This one is fuller. He defends it calmly to the man at second slip. Got some bowing at the end of the over. At the end of the over, it's 92 for four. Yes, and the Barbadian skipper Seely ought to be trying something uh, so close to lunch. Something gets another bowler in, uh, whether it's up at this end or the southern end to see if he can effect a breakthrough, but um, the, the message went very clear from the vice captain to the captain, uh, recognizing lunch is very close, so let us try and just bat it out up until lunch and reassess and see where we go from here. Once we are here, still at lunchtime, do not take any undue risk. So Seely persists with his left arm orthodox. The Boeing took it, his opposite number, captain for the Leeward Islands, plays it out to the man at mid wicket. There's no run. This one is a bit full. Oh, and that's a lovely delivery. That's a lovely delivery there from Seeley. It bit on the pitch, it turned away, and it went straight to the man at slip. Joshua Dawn who took a nice sharp catch. And that's another big wicket there for the Barbados team uh, with the Leeward Islands still nine runs adrift of their total. Something that they really and truly wanted to avoid is to lose another wicket so close to lunch and in the form of um, that's uh, Tuckett. Yes, uh, Skipper, he is gone for five and he brings the new man in. As a matter of fact, it's lunchtime. Because of the wicket. As a matter of fact, at lunchtime, find um, kind of, kind of I have 11.57, so well it's I a bit early. Well, I enough time for the new man to get in, but the umpire's watch is a different hours. Yeah, probably it's a bit faster than ours. <laughs> Maybe, but sometimes it's behind ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's now 92 for 5 at lunch. The game delicately poised here at lunchtime. The Leeward Islands responding to Barbados. 101 have been dismissed this morning, and uh, certainly Barbados are slowly but surely clawing their way back into this game. And uh, as I said, this is a very interesting period. I just finished, uh, they started at 10, to lunchtime 192 or 5. They batted positively, they ran properly, um, quickly between wickets. They 
strike rate is pretty good. But the only problem with the Leeward Islands, they are losing too many wickets too quickly. And Barbados are happy with it. I believe they are happy, maybe looking for the next one, had they been time for the new batsman to come in. And uh, certainly, I think the game is delicately poised at lunchtime. Yes, I do agree with you. And this next session, we'll, we'll see a lot as to where we go from here um, concerning this game. So you'll join us when we get back. We will have live action for you at this point. The Leeward Islands on the 19 team in response to Barbados is... Um, 101 in the first innings are 92 for 5, having just lost their captain, Carlin Boyne Tuckett, to a lovely delivery from the opposing captain, the Barbados captain, um, Seal, Sealy. And uh, we're going to we're gonna take a, a break now for lunch. When we come back, we will have uh, more action here from the Arnesville playing field for you.
pleasant good afternoon to our listeners, to our viewers here. Coming to you from the Annesvale playing field in the West Indies Rising Stars on the 19th tournament match between the Leeward Islands and Barbados. Uh, brilliant sunshine here, very complete contrast to what transpired yesterday. And uh, all is set, ready to go after lunch. Barbados resuming this morning. Uh, 97 for five, 97 for nine, they were dismissed for 101. And at lunchtime, the Leeward Islands, they seem finding themselves in problems. They uh, ent went at lunch at 92, 92 for five, nine behind. But um, Barbados pressing and pressing hard to see how they can effectively keep the run rate down and whatever lead, if any lead is to come to a very small lead, so I position himself back. We'll come down to um, a second innings game. I, I think game. I think that's probably what what will happen at the end of the day. Well, listen, we had a good lunch. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon to you. Good, good afternoon to our viewers at home. And we were inquiring about Joe Andrew, and he has come to the crease now at the fall of the fifth wicket, so he will be facing up. But he does look to be, to be a bit hampered. We'll pay careful attention to his movement as he bats. It's a loud appeal. <laughs> um, but seem just to be beaten outside the arsenal. But of course, the Barbadians, they are on top in the last little exchanges that we have had. So they will be very um, enthusiastic in the field. After, being lo after looking a little bit dejected uh, at certain points in the innings, but they have taken a few quick wickets and can sense that there's an opportunity for them to peg back the Leeward Islands team. This one is played back to the bowler by Andrew. Let's see him going away to stretch a little bit there. Seems to be an issue with his left leg, which is his front leg. So it will be interesting to see when he stretches forward and has to put the pressure on that leg, how it, how it goes for him. Um, Gunny. Yeah, this is the correct thing that Celia is doing. Put pressure on the front leg by flighting. So eventually, you'll put so much pressure on him that he'll probably will just succumb, uh, depending how bad uh, the situation is with him um, health-wise. This time he goes back and cuts, but straight to the man at cover. Need no after lunch to start with, and uh, it's a good test in over. You see him there holding his leg. We're not really to show how, how bad it is, but certainly he's under tremendous pressure to try and stay out there because it's definitely will turn out to be a second in his game. There's no ifs and buts about it, except the other five Barbie, um, Liberal Islands batsmen put on in excess of another, let's say another 109 and get up to 200. They'll put Barbados under a lot of pressure. If failure to do that, they'll come down to a second innings game. If they fall, let's say for 120, 130. Yeah, I, I do believe you are, you are on point there. But um, because of the way the pitch is, is playing and the challenge that bowlers from both teams have posed, I think that even a 50-60 lead might end up being detrimental. Yeah, because it may not necessarily put them um, right out in front, but it may prove to be crucial in the end because runs have been hard to come by from both teams. Yes, quite true. Warrior, he will continue after lunch. So spin at both ends as we had just before lunch. Appeal there for, looks like leg before. Um, but not out, says the umpire. Edward on strike. Seemingly off the pad. Yeah. Top of the pad. That they will appeal for anything. This one swept off the top edge. Goes down to short fine leg here. I see him hopping. And uh, really struggling is is Andrew. Completes the single in the end, but really hampered by that injury. Even walking seems to be an issue for him at the moment. It's really favoring that left leg. Not to show if it's a calf injury or maybe a hamstring or a quad. 
not to show we don't have the details, but we can see clearly that he is carrying some niggle. As Warrior comes in now to bowl to him. Flighted. Drives nicely, but straight to the man at mid off. No run. The way he's hobbling is, is not a matter of singles and twos. You have to hit boundaries. Yes. Because he, he, he's really, really hobbling. Can't run properly. Sweeps hard again, but again, you could see that Bowens is in the way. He's a small man, but they are finding him quite often. Yeah, well, his, then his intent is clear is that's to try and hit boundaries because he's not, he's really immobile, so to speak. Let's beware the injured batsman. Ooh, and that's a wicked delivery. He actually played it quite well. Spattered him off, off the pitch, came in sharply, he dropped his hands, but they defeated the keeper and they were able to get through for a bye. That one turned and bounced and uh, went past the keeper. And certainly the intent is very, very clear from Andrew. I'm going to take the attack um, with my limited movement and see how many runs I can add to my team's total. Yeah, and that's the right ploy. Um, or else there's no reason for him to count on. But if, if that is not going to be his approach, then probably he should just rest and see if he can recover. This one is outside the off stump. That's a dot delivery, no shot offered. And at the end of the over, the score is now 94 for 5, two added since lunch. And uh, interestingly to see exactly how Sealy would bowl to Andrew because he needs to flight those deliveries uh, so that he'll be able to put pressure on his front leg because of the problem we are seeing here. But the pitch itself, if you can bowl into the pitch, you're going to get turn and bunks, as what we're seeing here from Warrell from the southern end. Into the pitch, dig it into the pitch, you're going to certainly get some uh, bunks and turn. But with this injury that is hampering Andrew, the best way to him is to flight. Let him put pressure on his left leg, his front leg. This one is out caught. Pressure. Looking to whip it across the line, turning away from him. And he's out caught by the man at short cover. In the end, the deploy didn't work. And he's hobbling off. And uh, we'll need to get some treatment and continue that treatment um, as we go through this match. Because there's another innings that is left. And they would require him to bat. I, I am very sure of that. So that's another wicket to Sealy. Again, he's doing the business here for his team, the skipper. Yes, he's leading from in front. And they have taken a very quick wicket right here after lunch. And put the label islands certainly on the back foot. So we are really and truly down to the lower order tail of the, um, the label islands batting. As a question, uh, does Barbados possess the capability of wrapping up the tail? Or would the label islands um, the lower order and tail add very valuable runs? They're still behind by seven runs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a question to see how they approach the rest of the batting. 94 for the loss of six. And Barbados, I said to you, I listened before. Landiford. They are right in the game. Yes, Landy Ford comes out to join his bowling partner, Nathan Edward. Sealy, four for 19 in his 13th over. He's bowling his 13th over. And he's doing a splendid job here for his side, Skipper. Putting his hand up in the situation after. Uh, Making a small first inning score, he's keeping his side right in contention. So 94 for 6, still trailed by 7 runs. Covered up there by Landon Ford, played back to the ball off the front foot. He, took, he himself took 5 for 21. For the Leeward Islands against the Barbados team when they were in the wicket. This one beats him outside the off stump. More turn again from Sealy. And Sealy's pace, I think, is, is what is causing a lot of the problems for the batsman because he's getting the ball to turn, but at a reasonable pace as well, so they don't have much time to adjust to the turn. This one he's pulling to square leg. Should be time for two. And they get there comfortably, so Landy Ford gets off the mark for, with two runs. Yes, it's something similar to what you see from Jadeja. 
for India is that the turn is turn. It's there's turn, but it's turning quickly. And when it turns at that pace, there isn't as much time for the batsman to adjust as to what comes off the pitch. As he comes in again, forward is Landy for using his height and covers that one on off stump into the covers no run. It's taken. One is a lovely delivery. Look at that again. Nice turn from about leg to off. Lovely delivery. At the end of um, the over, the score is now 96 for 6. As uh, Sealy continues to pressure the Liver Island batsmen into making errors and to bring his team right back into the picture, he has been the main stay for the Barbados bowling attack. And they have persisted with uh, the spinners himself and the Warrell from the southern end as um, the Leeward Island scrolls closer and closer to the 101 that Barbados made. It will be a very interesting um, session whenever Barbados is dismissed. Whenever Leeward Islands is dismissed. I beg your pardon. So Warrell continues. This one is outside the off, some left alone by. Nathan Edward. Could hear the encouragement coming from the Barbados feelers on the field. This one is down the wicket, so good use of the feet. Gets to the pitch, pushes it back to the bowler along the ground. Good cricket all around, who does the feeling? This one is short. He's pulling it. Very good shot there from Nathan Edward. Will challenge the boundary, but the feeler gets to it now. Should have time for two. Two runs comfortably taken. Good work by the man there at the back of square leg boundary. Yeah, some good work there. Sprinting across the one side and they collect two more. As um, Warrell needs to get it a bit fuller and to put... Edwards on the drive rather than allowing him to go back and give him all the time in the world to pick a gap on the onside and get some runs. This one a bit flatter, but just a shade fuller than we had in the last delivery. He pulls it again, just a bit too short. Only time for one on this occasion as a feeler comes in quickly off the boundary to do the feeling. Number 19, it's Bratwit, the opening batsman, who does the feeling. So it brings Landefort into strike. He's facing his first delivery from the bowling of Warrell. There's a Leg slip, a slip, and a short leg around the bat. This one goes down the leg side. A disappointment there from the bowler. That's the end of the over. It's now 99 for 6. The Leeward Islands on the 19 team, they are just two runs adrift of the Barbados on the 19 first innings total. Yeah, but with six wickets down, so the question of the other four. And I, I believe this Skipper Seeley should look at the situation with Warrell at the southern end. He's not really been holding things as tight as he should be, bearing in mind that he all is in context of the 101. And maybe uh, he should be really tinkering about, sh should have a bowling change to try and effect a breakthrough because he's putting the pressure on one side from the northern end. He needs someone from the southern end to continue the pressure so he'll be able to, uh, you know, effect another quick, a week or two. Because I tell you before, 30, 40 runs could be, could be a handsome lead here. Yeah, Seely, bowling to Nathan Edward. He was getting this one for a single to square leg. So, good running. And I, I think a lot will depend on Edward as well. He has looked assured at the crease. So, for the Leeward Islands, I think that his wicket will also be key. Yeah, but what is needed is to have someone from the southern end keeping things tight. So in other words, you're going to have Mr. Van de Fool for him to be facing most of the, um, the deliveries. 
because Edwards is the man who is in. So we're trying to uh, avoid him getting the strike too regular. Played back down to the bowler by Landefort. Off the front foot. Two slips in place. Uh, Seely into Landefort. This one is short. He's pulling away. This one will challenge the boundary. Gets there now. That's four runs. That one was a naughty delivery there from Seely. And well put away by Landefort. Getting into his crease. Deep into his wicket. Getting low as well. And executing a good pull shot just back on the square. Yes, and that gives Bam Lever Islands the lead. Certainly. So it's now 104. 104 for the loss of six. And then the lead by three runs. So this is where Bobby just need to tighten the screws and do not allow them to get away. Because I said, and you're agreeing, 30, 40, even more will be a bit of a serious problem in the second innings. Yes, and these two will be looking to make runs. That's how they will bat. Um, they're aggressive by nature. I don't think they will be reckless, but they will definitely try to take advantage of any opportunity to score. Seely has bowled on change since his introduction early in the innings. Has taken four wickets. Bowling now to Landefort. This one is on the off stump. That's turning away. That's a lovely delivery. Beats him. And taken by the keeper. This one is flighting and it's edge. He's edge to slip. That's another wicket for Seely. Changes length ball this one a little fuller and that's five wickets for him. He has now taken five wickets in this innings. So five wickets to the Barbados skipper and he has bowled a yeoman spell. And he has posed problems throughout his spell here in this innings. The score now goes on to 104 for seven. Just what? Barbie's team needs and that's a quick wicket and to remove uh, whichever batsman it doesn't matter the main important thing is to get the numbers down so we're down to the number nine the lead is what three or four the lead is four four is the lead so it's a question how best three three is the lead so um we'll probably hold them to the lead under 20 they may very well be Comfortable with that. Anything under 20, anything about 50 and above, they will have problems. Yes. So the new batsman is Micah McKenzie. And now I could say that he is really into the low order now for the Leeward Islands. Number nine coming out to bat. That's number nine in the batting order. So as we mentioned um, in the last over, just before the fall of that wicket, I said that a lot will be depending on, for the Leeward Islands, a lot will be depending on Nathan Edward. And now the Lord really has to give him their support as best as possible. It would be challenging for them, especially facing up to Seeley, who, is, uh, who has had the ball on a string, as we had mentioned earlier, and really has made some serious inroads into the Leeward Islands batting. Really started with his dismissal of Palmer. Uh, of a quicker, flatter delivery, LBW. That was his first wicket. And from there on, he has continued to pick up wickets at regular intervals. As Warrior will continue now to bowl to Nathan Edward. There's a deep mid-wicket now in place. As I think that they are looking to give him as uh, the single to bowl at the, the non-striker who is Mackenzie. Warrell again into seal. This one is a bit full. Huh? Turn and bounce away from the bat. Well watched by Nathan Edward. Was able to withdraw the bat at the last moment. As it turned away from him. Warrell again into Edward. This time it's a bit flatter, straighter. But outside the off stump, so not threatening the stumps. And left alone by Nathan Edward.
This time, Edward gets into his wicket, turns it to mid-wicket for a single. And maybe something that Warrell could think about to Edward is to come around the wicket. He's getting a lot of turn, so then the straighter ball will pose a lot of problems because it will be threatening the stumps. And also bring the NBW into question as well if he comes around the wicket to the left hand. Mackenzie now on strike for his first delivery. There's a slip who is very fine. Perhaps even too fine. The keeper probably could take that catch that he's there for. And that's defended by Mackenzie. There's no run. Yes, Don is extremely fine at slip. He's almost on the... His left foot is almost in line with the right foot of the keeper. This time, Mackenzie is turning it off his pan. There's no run. Opportunity was there for the single, but Edward is farming the strike. So at the end of the over, it is now 105 for 7. And the Leeward Islands, they are just ahead by four runs. Yes, four important runs. Because they have an opportunity with three wickets intact to try and build on their number four. The question of Edward's... Um, does he have that experience and maturity to shepherd the, the lower order tail, if you want to call it that, for the Leeward Islands? Just a matter of wait and see. Do you think he, pos he possesses that ability? Well, he has already declined that last single, so I think he's thinking along that line as to how he goes about and how he executes it. Then it will be left to, to, to us to see how, how he goes about it. But I think he's thinking along that line already from the fact that he declined that last um, single where it was clearly available to them. Comes forward. He's playing a shot. Struck maybe just outside of Stump, so should not be dismissed. But ambitious appeal there from the, the bowler and the keeper. In days of your be not out these days with the technology can be sent out LBW. This one is fuller. Mm. Leaves it alone. Get some turn on that one, but doesn't threaten the stump. And he made sure he extended his pad right out there just in case it turned back that he'll be able to kick it away. So good thinking from Edwin. Seems to have a plan. And he leaves that one down the left side. In all honesty, he has played Sealy probably the best of all the batsmen that we have seen out there for the Leeward Islands so far. In his short innings. Turns this one. He'll take the single now, I think. Leaving Mackenzie with two deliveries to, to um, round off the over. So I think that the plan is there, um, um, Gunny. That's what he's, he'll be trying to do. So the plan is definitely the shepherding, shepherding the, the lower order tail, so to speak, in the US. But rather than getting one for every over, it will really slow down everything where it is. You'll have to try and get maybe um, th three, four, something like that, to be able to really push the lead for the Leeward Islands a bit beyond the Barbados. But Barbados still in this game at 106 for seven. They're still in the game. The question is how quickly they, they will be thinking of um, dismissing the opposition. And Seeley will have a lot to do with that. This forward comes Mackenzie, pushes it back down the ground to the bowler. There's no run. Time it's a bit shorter. Well watched by the batsman. So at the end of the over, it's 106 for seven. And Gun, you were talking about him getting maybe some more runs in the over. I think one of the things that he may have to think about is to see where he can get two with the field spread. Who of those first few deliveries, he might be able to get a couple and then get the single later in the over and get three. That's the point of making maybe a, a double, maybe a boundary. Uh, not every over because uh, seal is on target. But see if you can improve the run rate and get more runs to put the, move the pressure from yourself to them because the Leeward is still under pressure. 106 for 7. 
certainly if you really should be trying to get, as I said, maybe a minimum of 30, 40 lead to put the pressure back on the Barbados batting line of when it's their turn to bat a second time. This time he looks so sweet, but he was well outside the off stump, so shouldn't should be out LBW. So I think that that shot he played online. So he's looking for that gap behind square. I think he's thinking about those two runs that you mentioned before. Uh, the bowler has to be mindful of that, not to drift too straight. There's only one fielder behind square on the on side, and he's on the boundary. That backward square leg as Oriel comes in. Down the wicket he goes. He has hit it straight to the man at mid-off. Oh, my word. The one man that was there, he was down the wicket. I think he was probably aiming to go a bit straighter. But that one came off the outer half of the bat, went to the man at mid-off. And that's the end of Nathan Edward. And I'm sure the Barbados team are now in celebratory mood. Yes, they are in celebratory mood because they have moved the key um, batsman in Edwards. Uh, pressure, is, I think pr the problem is the pressure built up on himself. Uh, as I said earlier, one, twos and then a single or somebody sort of boundary. Recognizing he's not really moving, he tried for the big one and drove it straight to the man at whitish mid off and he is back to the pavilion, walking his way back to the pavilion. As uh, Barbados continue to whittle away at the Leeward Island still. And uh, I'm certain they'll be quite happy to wrap it up as quickly as possible and to have their inning started. But question pose I'm sitting here, I'm asking myself, does this pitch have something in it for the fast bowlers? We still haven't known because really we, haven't, we haven't really seen much fast bowling after that opening spell from um, both opening bowlers for Barbados. Um, I still believe so, though, personally, and I think we'll see it as soon as the innings um, starts, as we have Nisbet, who will be one of those um, exponents who will be trying to get something from the wicket when his turn comes at the, um, at the bowling crease. So Nisbet, he now joins Mackenzie, and uh, Warren with that wicket, his first, his second, actually. He took a leg before, before, so that's his second wicket, Warren. Yes. So just confirmed by all scorers. Some treatment being um, received there by Bowens at short leg. He has taken a few blows. That short leg, tough little youngster it seems. Just getting a little bit of treatment there before they continue. Warren now comes into ball to Nisbet. This one is down the leg side. Not making that adjustment. He was previously bowling to the left hander. So he has to adjust his line now to the right handed batsman. This one is driven uppishly. Oh my, he didn't get back to the ball on the full. But a bit of excitement there for the feeling team. This one is driven into the gap, just passing the man there at extra cover. He'll take a single now to get off the mark. And with that single, the score moves on to 107 for it. They are six runs ahead, the Leeward Islands. This one is in the air. Is it off the bat? No, it's off the pad. Not out, says umpire Rajkumar. And at the end of the over, it is still 107 for 8. Yes, and another important over faced by the Real Island batsmen. Just one in the over, and certainly Barbados climbed their way, have clawed their way back into position. And it's really up to Seely and the others to, as we were saying, local panel, clean up the tail and have a fresh start in their second innings. But 
but uh, they are being denied by the labor liners numbers nine and ten so we'll see how it goes and what lead eventually they will be able to eke out so six runs ahead at the moment as Sealy continues we'll be bowling to Nisbet sends back the long on and long off Nisbet a strapping youngster So just some protection being added there as they go back into the deep. Maybe thinking that he'll be trying a release shot, a big shot soon. But he covers up nicely off the front foot, back to the man at extra cover. There's no run. This one is turning away, but left. Well watched by Nisbet. So one pitch just around off stump and turn further away. This time it's flighted. Uh, it's a flatter one, actually. Quicker one on off stump. He was looking for that ball after being left the previous delivery. So good thinking there by the bowler. Wanted to see if Nisbet would leave this one again. He's in once more. He's being pushed down to long on for a single. So well played by Nisbet. Brings Mackenzie into strike. And the long off and the long on will come in. This one's turning it down the leg side. They got a single. We'll wait to see what the signal is from the umpire, if there's any. No, it's a run. So at the end of the over, it is 109 for it. There are eight yes, runs ahead. Very, very slow going here at Anna's Field in this game between Monroe Islands and Liberal Islands. Liberal Islands in the lead by eight runs. And they're taking a good own time and batting and Barbados trying their best to dismiss the Liberal Island batsmen. So it's, it's <coughs> very, very slow going here, 109 for 8. And uh, what what can the Barbados and Bowman attack do towards dismissing the other two batsmen? As far as bar, um, Barbados is concerned, past the Liberal Islands are concerned, they will be able to bat and bat and bat. Any lead will be well worth it. This one is driven straight back to the bowler and he's dropped. Dropped there by Royal. Mm, really should have taken it. It was straight back to him. It was it firmly, but not viciously. And he'll be disappointed with that. Another catch goes down. There have, have been a few today. I think the third one I'm counting for Barbados. This time Mackenzie goes back on the back foot, plays it out to the man at short leg. No run is taken. He's turning this one behind square on the on side is Mackenzie. Should only be one. And one is all they'll have time for as folks does the feeling. This one is a bit flatter on the off stump. Push to point by Nisbet, no run. So it's flatter, he's looking to sweep. Goes down in the short fine leg area, should only be one. We'll wait on the signal from the umpires. The return comes in from Dawn. And that's a leg by, signal by umpire Rajkumar. Kenzie gets forward to this flighted delivery, plays it back to the bowler. There's no run. It's the end of the over. It's 111 for 8. 
111.48. So the Leeward Islands are exactly 10 runs ahead of the Barbados team. Seely will be continuing from this end. His spell has only been broken by lunch. He has bowled 16 overs consecutively, only broken by the luncheon interval. He's a left arm orthodox spinner, so shouldn't take as much out of him as it would for the pacer. And he has taken five wickets. in his 16 overs for only 29 runs. So he's going at less than two runs and over as he comes in now to bolt in his bet. This one is almost through his defenses. As he pushes his out, it's fielded by the man at second slip. Here he is again, see little Nisbet. That's a quicker one, that's a flatter one. Not out says the umpire. Mm. Interesting delivery, very similar to the delivery that he was able to dis palm, dismiss Palmer with. But the umpire drew the keys that he was sliding down the leg side. That's umpire Joseph makes that decision. Nisbet comes forward, drives out to the man at cover. Does the feeling there's no run? This time he goes with a big swing over mid wicket. This one had a bit more flight, a bit more weight outside the off stump. Uh, appeal for stumping from the wicket keeper, Morris. Not out says umpire Rajkumar. He comes back to. Repair the stumps that were broken, aided by Bowens. Batsmen have a little mid pitch chat. Maybe Mackenzie is saying to Nisbet, Don't get carried away, we can bat here all day. We don't get a lot of opportunity to bat, so let's take advantage of this one. Yeah, he's again into Nisbet, driven down the ground. It's a full toss, just over toss there from Seeley. And the batsmen have time for us uh, for a single. And that's another lovely livery from Seely. Bounce and turn. Just spitting off the pitch there. At the end of the over, the score is 112 for it. So the game is just meandering along here now. Uh, nothing really, really exciting happening. It's a question of can the Leeward dismiss the rest of the Barbados batting lineup and quickly. So a single there for Nisbet as he's facing up to Royal. 113 for it. Yes, and I think that in their minds now they'll be thinking to themselves, let's see how many runs we can get to put some, um, a bit of a lead together here. They are 12 ahead. This one pops up. No run taken, but not to show if it came off the pad or off the glove. As we are obscured, we, see we are actually in a position where we are behind the keeper and the batsman, batsman who is facing at this end. So Warrell again, he will be bowling to Mackenzie. This one is outside the off stump. Has it bowled him? Yes, it came back enough to bowl him. As I said before, I was a bit obscured by the wicket keeper, so I wasn't able to call that as it happened. But we saw the celebration. He went across to his off stump, looking to play at that delivery, but it spun in sharply and dislodged the bills. 
And that's the end of Mackenzie. It is now 113 for 9. Well, the, uh, the Liberal Islands are very patient, recognizing they are really down now to the 10 man jack, so to speak. And uh, it's a question of how quickly they can dislodge. And uh, the emphasis will definitely be on the second innings. And uh, I asked before, I'm wondering if this pitch does have any moisture leaving it in relation to the fast bowlers. The way they bowled yesterday, they bent their backs, they get the ball to seam around to bounce. But yeah, the contrast to me, that was a seam as a fast bowler yesterday. So you know, we have all spin. And we're seeing a similar result in terms of wicked stumbling. So it's a question of now. <coughs> for the Liberal Islands, first innings are almost wrapped up. Yes, Amory coming out to bat to replace uh, Mackenzie. And we know that Amory is batting in his rightful position at number 11. It can be quite entertaining uh, <coughs> while he's at the crease. It is very nice for him to entertain the, um, all who are present. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he can be quite entertaining at the wicket. Reminds me a little bit about Co of Courtney Walsh with all the antics batting at number 11. So here he's up now facing to his opposite number, the off-spinner Warrell from Bar the Barbados team. He leaves that one alone outside the off-stump. He has a look down at the stump just to see if they're still there and they are. <laughs> 113 for 9. On this flight, it is forward, defends it out to the man there at short extra cover. There is no run. Amory, very tall figure, about six foot six. There are thereabouts. And he's forward again, he defends it. <laughs> As a look at it, <laughs> again, you could see all the antics there, Gunny. <laughs> Yeah, going through a phase here whereby um, try to give as much strike to your number nine partner. But if, if things not really work, you might as well take the ball by the horns and see how much you can be able to put more runs on the score for yourself individually and for your team as a result. But Barbados are right back in it at 113, you said, for, seven, for nine. 113 for nine. Seal will continue. The pick of the bowlers and Barbados, a tremendous amount of discipline to steady and realize a small total. Yes, and I think that that is what Nisbet will be trying to do now. He'll be trying to go after the bowling as much as possible now that he's there with the number 11. I don't, I don't think, think he, he has a choice. Yeah, I don't think he has much confidence in, in Amory. This time he flicks it over square length, but. Man is out there deep back with square. He gets a single. Actually, the man is just forward of square at square leg on the boundary. So that's one more run to Nisbet. Takes the score on to 114 for nine. There are 13 runs ahead. The Leeward Islands at this point. And if they are dismissed soon, then it really will be, as you said, going to be a, in a second innings game. But if they can add another 20 runs... Or so, then uh, those runs may come in quite handy for them. So Amory will be facing up to Sealy for the first time. Tall lad. Sealy comes into him now, covers this one up, and just pushes it softly out to the man they had cover who comes into the feeling. Defends that one again. This one is flighted. He pushes it out to the man at mid wicket. Although he's a big, uh, he's a tall man, an imposing figure. Amy, I don't think he'll be playing the big shot. So I would actually bring up these um, the boundary feelers for him and keep them back for Nisbet as he leaves that one alone. A very 
extravagant left alone there. And with a flourish. And the score is now on the 114 for 9. Just a single from that over. Nisbet is up to face the bowling of Warrior who comes into him now. Flighted outside the off some struck firmly, almost decapitating his partner there. And uh, he comes up to that's a single that's taken. I think there was some indecision there because he was I think that Amory was wondering if he wanted to retain the strength for a longer portion of the over. And initially, he didn't want to take the single. But Amory is um, facing up now to Warrior. He pushes it down to Long and gets a single. So once the field remains spread like this, these singles will add up. And I really think that with the last pair in, especially when Amory is on strike, not so much Nisbet, that they really should bring the field up. Nisbet now goes over mid-wicket. That one is struck in the gap. Will challenge the boundary. Plugs. They will get two runs as the throw comes in now. And they complete the two runs comfortably. So you see the intent is there from Nisbet. He knows what he has to do. The score moves up to 118 for nine. So they are 17 runs ahead now. One is flighted. Nisbet turns it nicely. Just in front of the square. Gets a single. So three runs so far from the over. They are now 18 runs ahead of the Barbados team. The Leeward Islands is 119 for nine. Uh, the Barbados have to be careful here that the lead doesn't get too, um, to swell to too large a proportion because runs have been at a premium so far in this game. So every run counts. And I really think for Amory, they need to bring the field up. Well, that's me, personally. He goes over the top. Over extra cover, you will get two runs comfortably. We have time for that. And the throw comes in now. So it's now 121 for nine. They're now 20 runs ahead. These are valuable runs, you know. It may look like one, it may look like two, but they all adds up. And they're really trying their best and put a greater effort in terms of dismissing the opposition with the Islands fairly quickly. It's really frustrating when you're down to numbers. 9-10 Jack. This one is a dead ball signaled by the umpire. Things from the signal that he gave is indicating that the feeler was probably still making his way in the into his position at a deepish cover. Three quarters of the way back to the boundary. This one is wide outside the off stump and left alone by Amory, who then shadows a massive shot over the offside. At the end of the over, it's now 121 for nine. Well, it's a very slow period that we are witnessing as the Barbadian bowling <coughs> are trying to finally dismiss the Trinidad and Tobago batting lineup and uh, the numbers in the, the numbers 10 and 11 for the River Islands holding them up, so to speak, in cricketing terms. And there's a question whereby it's a really dour period that we are looking at here. Are they trying hard enough to dismiss them? Question for you. I'll get back to it after this delivery from Seeley. He'll be bowling to Nisbet. 
who I think um, they are spreading the field to correctly. This is a wonderful delivery. This one bounced and turned, as we have seen several times from Seeley during this spell. But I think when Amory gets on strike, they need to bring the field up. I, I don't think that they're doing the right thing in that regard. Nisbet, the more capable of the two at the bat. Punches, but straight to the man at cover. There's no run. Ooh, and that's a flatter one. Well covered there by Nisbet. He watched it well. Played it with a straight bat. But that was a flatter, quicker delivery from Seeley. One that has given him two wickets so far in his spell. That quicker delivery. Comes in again. This one is off. Is it off the edge or is it off the foot? We wait for the signal from the umpire, umpire Joseph. They get two. Let's see if there's any signal there. Yes, it's a leg by. So there was a big appeal for LBW. There was a loud appeal for LBW. It's not easy, you know, to have your numbers 10 and 11. Frustrating like that. This one is full, but hit straight to the man at mid wicket. There's no run. So 123 for 9. 22 runs ahead at the Leeward Islands at this point. Nisbet goes again to the well, but hits it straight to the man at mid wicket along the ground. There's no run. And uh, that's the end of the over. At the end of the over, 123. For nine. 123 for nine, the lead now of 22. Very vital runs. At the end of it, I say maybe 30, 40. Maybe that's probably what they're aiming after to put uh, ba Barbados under pressure in the second innings. But I, I, I think Sealy needs to look at the situation and try to do something in terms of effecting a breakthrough. Do whatever. They have so many other bowlers there. Try something. You cannot continue just pushing around, pushing around. By the time you look, you can add a, a comfortable and a match winning 50 for this final wicket, you know. I'll be very careful. Yes, I also think that you should bring the field up to Emery, who's on strike now. I don't think that there should be all these boundary riders to him. As he defends awkwardly outside the all stop. This one is full. He drives it back to the bowler along the ground. No run. Looks disappointed that he was not able to find a gap on either side. For the single down to long off and long on. Defends this one. No run there. Is Nets, be is Nets better um, warming up for his spell? Batting so long? <laughs> well, he definitely will be in for a, a very important spell this afternoon, as I said before. He's cutting this one, Amory, but straight to the man at cover. No run there. There's a man there at deep mid wicket. I'm not too sure why he's there for Amory. I don't think Amory is going to be hitting him out there. That's my personal opinion, especially into the wind. I have not seen him really lift his bat in anger. And uh, Warrell again is bowling into Amory. Fuller defended comfortably back down the pitch. That's the end of the over. It's a maiden. Score remains on 123 for 9. Yes, 123 for 9 as the Liberal Islands continue to frustrate uh, the Barbados uh, team. Um, uh, as I said, maybe Nesbitt is it, um, maybe looking to have a nice little warm-up session. He's, getting a, he's out there for a little while now. This partnership team came together about 20 minutes now, 25 minutes thereabout. 
So he's getting um, warm, ready for his spell whenever he's called upon by his skipper, bowling for the Leeward Islands to the Barbados batsman in the second innings. Yeah, so the feed is spread now. The deep back was squared, straight to mid wicket on the boundary, and also a long on, a long off, four out on the boundary. As Sealy bowls to Nisbet, pushes it back down to the man at extra cover who does the feeling. Quicker delivery, appeal for a leg before again, but maybe a judge to be going down the leg. He's batting on an interesting guard, he's not really covering his thumbs per se. Um, so, with the angle, we have been a judge to be going down the leg side as he's batting on a leg stump guard from what we can see here. Cause we've seen all three stumps, although we are slightly to the right. It's punching it back to the bowler, no run. I think I think Sealy needs to think and try and change up something here towards affecting this final breakthrough. Something. I don't know what it is. Try something different. Nisbet. That's a good shot from him, but doesn't find the gap. I think he really should give one of the other bowlers an opportunity at this point. Um, whether it is a leg spin or go back to one of his seamers. This one, is it stumped? Yes, he's stumped. Bold. No, he's stumped, I think. Yeah, he was down the wicket looking for a drive. And so that's the six wickets to Sealy. And he completes the innings. And the score ends on 123. So they have a lead of 22, the Leeward Islands. And when we come back for the other innings, after some thoughts now for, from Gunny Hines, it will be Osnet Cato and Stanley Gunny Hines. Yes, and uh, go to Tamils anyway to take a little break until we're ready for the next innings.
Welcome back to the Honest Vale Playing Field here. And it's West Indies Rising Stars on the 19 tournament presently taking place here between Barbados and the Leeward Islands. Uh, what today we have had so far? We have had what, 11 wickets stumbling already for the day. Uh, Barbados resuming uh, uh, 90, 97 for 9 or dismissed for 101. 97 for 9, dismissed 401. And the Leeward Island dismissed 1 hour before T uh, for 123. Walsh at Dock, he didn't trouble his scorers. Palmer 27, Graves 21, Mary 14, Tuckett 5, Edward 17, Andrew at Dock, Lingford 6, Mackenzie 2, Nisbet 9, 3 not out. Extras 19, 44.5 overs. Uh, bowling for Barbados, spring of four was a 28 runs, no wickets. Lord three overs, one for 12. And Seeley, 19.5 overs, three maids and six for 31. Six for 31 from 19.5 overs. And Warrell, 18 overs, four maidens, three for 39. So with a lead of 22, Barbados uh, will definitely be looking to see how they can erase at 22 without losing any wickets whatsoever. Whilst well, the Leeward Islands fast, Leeward Islands team is hoping to make some of the inroads. But certainly, we, are, we I think we are in for a testing time here now to see how is this pitch going to behave. Because in yesterday, yes, we had the overcast condition, suited the faster bowlers, things were happening. Today, now we see the spinners came into their own. What is there left between now and Close the play. We are not sure. We are not certain. As not what you, uh, how do you assess the situation in the state of the pitch? Yes, good afternoon to you, Gunny, and good afternoon to all our viewers. So it's definitely turned out to be a second innings game here at the Anna's Way playing field. Barbadian team, they'll be quite pleased to dismiss the Leeward Islands for that particular total, just behind by 22 runs. Yes, as you mentioned, it's going to be interesting to see the, the tactics here of the Leeward Island team. They would have employed their seamers in the first innings, so I think they will start with them, and then if, if it is that the wicket is not offering that much for their seamers, then they can always turn to their spinners a bit later on. The state of the pitch, uh, how do you expect this pitch might behave or misbehave? Well, we saw quite a bit of tone for Nathan Seeley. He bowled very well, uh, as well as um, Warrell. So a bit of um, help there for the spinners. The Leeward Islands team, they have their own spinning options in terms of Mackenzie, the leg spinner, Amory and Onori as well. So they, I think, as I mentioned, I think they will use their seamers up front, but I will not be too surprised to see that they employ spinners a bit earlier than they did in the first innings. Provided it doesn't get that sort of awkward lift and bounce as what happened yesterday. Yes, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see if that sort of assistance is still there for the, the seamers. We saw a bit of the, the Barbadian seamers but they never really got their lines and their lengths um, consistently in the right area. So it wasn't really what we have come used to in terms of what the Leeward Islands provided for us yesterday. So it would be good to see what the Leeward Islands Seamans have up front in the form of Nathan Edward and of course um, Nisbet, who impressed very much in the first innings, having um, three wickets, and of course Landa Fort, who came in first change. It would be interesting to see if he will open the bowling as well. That's something we discussed yesterday in terms of how the, the, the options would go. We can clearly see the, the color of the pitch itself has changed from that sort of a dark brown into a lightish brown. So it, it, it tells me that the bulk of the moisture is out, if not all. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of purchase assistance they may get in terms of the faster bowlers with a hard new cherry. Agreed. So Nathan Edward it is from the common tree box end. First delivery on the line of the off stump. The batter there. Brathwaite. Who struggled to really get going in the first innings despite being the top scorer. He really played a lot of shots. He was trying to get going throughout his innings. But because of the inconsistencies and in the pace and bounce throughout, he was never really able to get his innings going. And it's actually that type of wicket where, as a batter, you're not really completely in. 
and he made 35 in the first innings as we mentioned so hopefully for him he'll be looking to push on from that 35 second time around I think the Liberty Island bowlers um, I think they will look to bend their back from the start here in the second innings based on the fact that the first innings they were just ambling in and when they recognized what was happening they really pounded it in and really got tremendous assistance but we'll see exactly what transpired early days Yes, a bit of lift there for Nathan Seeley. He's not the tallest um, bowler, but was able to get a bit of lift off the wicket. So still, there's a bit of venom in this wicket, as we could say. That delivery well played in the end from Braffwaite, but I would definitely have him thinking as he starts his second innings here at the Annas Way playing field. Yes, Alice and myself are discussing in between the break that we suspect there is still something there in that pitch. And we are at least the third delivery. We had him doing an ouch. One across the breakfast table. This one is a loose shot there um, from Braffwit. I think that was basically caused by the previous delivery. Just throwing the kitchen sink at that one. Braffwit, thankfully for him and for Barbados, he didn't make any sort of contact. But uh, interesting start here in the second innings. Very interesting start. And uh, again, we have been mourning the fact that um, there's no tail slip. Well, even in the first innings, Nathan, Ed, Nathan Ed was bowling from this end. There wasn't the employment of any third slip. So maybe it's something the captain and the bowler, some kind of sort of an agreement they have. This one is hit nicely over mid on. Two free bounces into the fence for four. That's a good statement there from Zion Braffwaite early in the second innings. Yes, a uh, good statement, positive statement. Uh, they're trying to get the 2022 20, knocked off quickly. And uh, hopefully do not lose the wicket. But um, I think that shot is all in response to that two previous deliveries that ripped him a bit. And he played two big shots thereafter. I think that's probably what happened. So it might be a good contest if uh, he can put another shot one and up into the breakfast table, see how he handles it. Yes, I think that we've seen from Braffwood. Why did he move the slip? This one is defended out to mid-wicket. So the end of the first over, Barbados in their second innings, they're four without loss. A very interesting over there indeed. Ups and downs. And at the end of it all, Barbados has not lost the wicket. But what is interesting towards the, the final delivery, why did he move the second slip when he really should be uh, um, putting more pressure on the uh, Barbados batting line? Because they are, they are still in front by 19. So why not look for an early wicket, so to speak? Yes, and that's something we've spoken about in terms of being a bit reactive. Some of the captains see in this match. Um, we've seen that the assistance is there for the seamers. So what you want is that if your bowler is bowling in the right areas and they, they get the nick, you want feeders to be in the positions where they can actually effect a catch. So we're what we have here now. Zango fought from the southern end and three slips. It's actually Nisbet. So Nisbet, so he has switched. But if something is working, why change? You know, even in the first innings, I think Nisbet would have started proceedings from the, the back way end. Yeah, but based on the results, I would have kept him here. And allow Langle Fett to come from the opposite end. He tried and trusted. It has proven itself. Why change? As the safety pipe is not leaking, why call the plumber? So Nisbet is from the back way end. It would be buoyed by that last minute, last wicked partnership. He's able to just accumulate a few runs with his fellow off spinner, Emery. Well, he'd be looking to get that early break for Fordy's captain in this innings. We've seen some very strange decisions. I've looked at this tournament a, a, a bit. Not everything like you or um, Alanson, but certainly seen some very strange decisions from the leaders of these different uh, countries. Very, very strange decisions. Call this the modern way of doing it. Okay. In the first innings, I think Nisbet would have started from the back way end, and then he was transferred to the commentary box end. Ian's Nathan Edward would have started the bowling attack. And then, when he was switched to the commentary box end, we had Lander Ford taking a proceedings from the back way end. So I think a similar thing will happen here in the second innings. And that is a, a 
presumption. It's left to be seen. <laughs> Into the second over of this encounter. Barbados in their second innings. Just a reminder, yes, the Leeward Islands, they won the toss. Elected to bowl first. Dismissed the Barbadian team for 101. In response, Leeward Islands, they were bowled out for 123 earlier. Barbados in their second innings are now four without loss. As you see a very good start there from Nisbet. Just continuing where he left off in the first innings. Hitting the pitch hard. Strong man, but so far not the exaggerated movement as we saw yesterday in terms of that movement away from the right handers. Bearing in mind he's all warmed up, batted for about 20 25 minutes <laughs> during his stint at the crease. So there's three slips a gully, backward point, cover, mid off, mid on. A man here, fine leg. As that delivery moving away from the right hander. Batter the Achilles Brown. Just we'll spent some time at the crease in the first innings. Remember now opening partnership of 42 between these two. Before Landerfort started to wreak some havoc. I think the Barbadian team will look into something similar or even greater than at 42. As, a, as an opening stand, as a base for them to build their innings on. And it's better again, a bit straight this time, but just walked out to the man there at a straightish mid wicket. There's no run. Barbie does the trail by 18 runs here in the second innings. So good weather conditions here at the Annasville playing field. Perfect weather really. A slight wind blowing across the ground. To keep the, the bowlers cool. Stark contrast to conditions yesterday. And the cricket itself has been a good watch so far as that over comes to an end. A made over from this bet. So he starts well. And Bobby does in their second innings, they're four without loss. That was uh, over. Looking to have it all lined up, but bearing in mind, <coughs> he spent time in the middle out there, 25 minutes there about. So he's all warm, ready to go, and he really got those deliveries on cue, so to speak. And um, Brown actually is Brown had to really keep his eyes wide open for his deliveries. At barring one, that was bang on target. So um, with no awkward movement, I should say, thus far. Except one from this to top end, seeing as if the pitch may have flattened out, may have. We still have to, we still have to wait on evidence when uh, these bowlers are really into the work to see exactly what happened. But strange enough, it's just one slip for left hand going across the right hand. There's it's a change of feel from the captain. This one is a short of a length, and Zion Braffrey there was playing a bit too early. Yeah, but I thought, to be honest, you know, um, this is too defensive. They should have had a second slip in. And come on, it's a new ball, one slip. We're not playing 2020 cricket. Yes, yeah, so a solitary slip there in the form of Amory. Uh, gully, backward point, cover, mid off, mid on. A short mid wicket. Man there at square leg as well. And then man down at fine leg. So that's the feel here for Nathan Edward. He's actually coming around the wicket. This one is played officially, a chance for a quick single. They do so successfully in the end. It's a good run in there from the Barbadian pair. Ball there ricocheting from the bat of Zion Braffwit. <laughs> Chose not to run on the overture. Star contrast to Ben Stokes in that Cricket World Cup Finals yeah, a couple of years ago. Legitimately he can run because it was no obstruction. Ball struck his arm. We look. I guess we can use this term loosely again, the spirit of the game. Th Sometimes there's nothing named spirit of the game in the law <laughs> whatsoever in the law book. It doesn't have anything about spirit of the game. Yeah, I guess it's used conveniently at times, especially from England. Uh, yes, when uh -huh. the media itself who is with, um, blow this thing about um, spirit of the game. So Edward, he's back over the wicket. So interestingly, he has a different plan of attack versus Brown as opposed to Braffwit. 
delivery again. Just lifting off of a good length, causing a bit of discomfort there for the batter. So Nathan Edward, no wickets in the first innings. He, as I mentioned, even in the first innings, he's, he hasn't been as penetrative as maybe his, his captain or he himself would have been expecting in this tournament. Still has a chance here to do something for his team in the second innings. It's a good delivery, a line, good line, good length. Spark my spirit to the game. I distinctly remember a few moons ago where uh, there's a big appeal for a court behind him, Mike Finley at Kensington Oval. Every Glenn Turner, West Indies, New Zealand. Everybody except one person realized he didn't quite take it cleanly. Spirit of the game, Mikey said not out. Because the umpires def definitely were saying out. But no technology in those days. Glenn Turner went and made 208. <laughs> Spirit of the game. As good delivery coming back into the right-handed batter there. Uh, played in the end from Achilles Brown. Brown is someone with a very good technique. We saw quite a bit of him last year. Maybe he hasn't scored the output of runs that he himself would be satisfied with. But normally gets the team off to a very good start. He hasn't really lived up to expectations. Last year he had a much better tournament, but he's definitely under the, under the weather, under the radar, so to speak, this year. Not getting many runs at all. And his confidence level must be low. He did score a half century in the previous encounter versus Trinidad and Tobago. So a bit of form coming into this game as another over comes to an end. Nathan Edward, a one run coming from it. And at the end of the third over, Barbie does in their second innings, they are five without loss. Another over right on target and Brown defends well. Not having the best of tournaments, but uh, with the pitch easing out, except one that really kicked in the first over. Um, his confidence level is low, but at least he will be able to um, tell himself, look, the pitch has dried out. I should be able to stay out here and bat for as long as possible. If the other one do come because my confidence level is so high, hoping that <coughs> Lady Luck will ride with me and I'll be able to get away with it whenever it kicks. <coughs> but um, on target, so far, so good. It's Nisbet once again to take up proceedings from the Beckway end. Right arm, um, fast, medium. The shot, and he's punching this one. Not timing it as well as he would like their breath weight. His intentions are, are pretty clear all year on in the second innings. Anything giving him a bit of room, he's prepared to play the, the big shot. Yeah, well, I think the, um, never mind the lead is as small as it is as 22, but it's still 22. And they will be hoping that this opening pair uh, would survive and erase this 22 before you know start getting on to themselves because the loser with the two before 22 will put them even further in, you know behind the eight ball so brown he's now in strike the three slips a gully backward point short of a length delivery he's working this one nicely down to fine leg a chance for second and yes they're going to get it comfortably in the end so good running there from the this barbie barbie and pair Putting some pressure on the field there, Edward, at fine leg. Yes, but uh, this is something that they didn't do well in the first innings. Run the first run quickly, so you can uh, put pressure on the field man towards getting a second. There's two well judged runs there, mainly from um, actually his bum. Yes, this back there just losing his line a bit, a bit too straight. Searching for that type of consistency that he showed in his second spell. The first and is once again he's working this one finer. Should be able to get to the boundary. Yes, it does. So four runs there to Achilles. A, a very good leg glance there from him. Yes, that one uh, outside the leg stamina. Nice leg glance. Uh, fine to the left of the keeper, but no way he would have gotten to that. And he raced across uh, the outfield and over the boundary for four. A welcome boundary there for Brown and for Barbados. As a wicker away as a small but important 22 run lead. 
I think it's it's something that we saw in the first innings. Even the, the first spell of Nisbet wasn't really um, spot on, really. And, and Nathan Edwards, he wasn't looking that uh, um, as threatening as maybe he would have liked. It's only when Landerfort was introduced into the attack, we really saw what the pitch really was offering. And a similar thing here in the second innings, in terms of so far, not a lot of opportunities created. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that the captain in his mind would, would have landed for it somewhere close by. Yes. Barbados building slowly towards racing a 22 run for from his lead. As uh, the opening pair doing their utmost to survive this opening onslaught from the Lower Islands fast bowlers. As Nilsbet continues, still searching for that bit of consistency. It's a good line, a good length. Well played by Brown. Covers up. Plays mm -hmm. it back up the pitch. In the approved fashion, right on top of it. Head well over uh, with that delivery. And certainly looking so far in the second is much better than I've seen him during this tournament. So far. As we see, another change in the field. So the man at third slip once again <laughs> coming out. He's moving to a, a short mid wicket. The man going back at mid on. So we now have two slips a gully, a backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket. And a man at fine leg. This delivery is outside the off stump. Not really going through at the, the, the pace we saw in the first innings. This one has been taken at a knee height, really, from Captain Bowen Tuckett. So it's the end of the fourth over, and at the end of it, Barbados, in response to 123, made by Leeward Islands, their 12 without loss in their second innings. Yes, halfway there in terms of erasing, just under, just over halfway, in, in release, er, erasing the 22 made. Um, by their batting lineup, uh, as against 101 in the first innings, they got 123. But things are steady at this moment. Things are definitely just steady. And we haven't seen any balls really kick or do anything on towards it, barring one uh, f in this innings so far as uh, the Leeward Islands fast bowlers. They are really putting in an effort. You can see they are sprinting in uh, both fast bowlers. So, uh, as I said, the color of the pitch itself has changed so I believe most of the moisture is out so they'll have to try to walk and they seem to see the ball around to see if they will be able to get anything out of it it's Nathan Edward continuing proceedings from this the commentary box end and Zion Bradford covers up so he's coming around the wicket to Bradford I think he doesn't want to give him a sort of room outside the off stump so trying to angle these deliveries back into him we've, saw, we've seen so far that anything with a bit of whiff Bratwit is prepared to uh, throw the bat at it, really. It's been successful so far with the Bungry in the previous over. You mentioned in the first innings, um, Bratwit, he was desperate to get going. He played a lot of shots, but never really got his innings going in terms of strikers. He's pulling this one quite awkwardly in the end, but thankfully for him, for as well shot of Landerfort there. On the deep square like Bungry. So another single to him. Moves on to seven. And the Barbie then total moves up to 13 without loss. So far in this innings, he looks pretty busy. He wants to get on with things, but the deliveries are now being served up by um, Edwards or Nesbet. So you just have to wait and be careful with the shot selection. We see Edwards coming over the wicket now to Brown. This one is down the leg side once again. Easy pickings, really, for these top order batsmen. Just walking that one down to fine leg. So just getting a bit of momentum, really, into their innings. Walking the ball into gaps. Seeing the occasional boundary as well. So a good start from the Barbadian openers. Bearing in mind, they added 42 for the first wicket in the first innings. And then, then came the calamitous collapse. 
So we'll see how it goes out if there'll be a repeat of what transpired in the first innings where they got off to more than a decent start. That this, they're seemingly on the well on their way to his repeating. This one again angled into the batsman there, Braffitt. Played it up to the man there at mid wicket. So we mentioned that in the first innings he actually faced eighty nine deliveries for his thirty five. Eighty seven, sorry, for his thirty five. So spent a bit of time in the wicket, but never really got going. Coming into this game, he actually had two half centuries, 51 from 61 deliveries and 51 from 62 deliveries. So it tells me that he's a, a free-scoring batsman, and we've seen evidence of it in both innings. Albeit at times in the first innings, he, he really struggled to get his timing going. So one slip in place for Nathan Edward. A gully, a backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket. I'm on that deep square leg and I'm on that deep fine leg. So maybe at some point he will test him again with the short delivery. We saw it earlier in the over. Then it played then it played um, too convincingly Braffwit. So it'll be interesting to see at what point Edward test him middle of the wicket again. This one is short of a length, but a lot of pace. Comfortably played by Braffwit. So two runs coming from that over. Barbados, they're 14 without loss in their second innings. Yes, uh, keep repeating the deficit of 22, 14 without loss. Steady start, uh, gain some pretty, some pretty accurate bowling from the Leo Islands. Fast bowlers, Nets, Bet and Edwards, they're, they're hitting the deck there, there about, and... Uh, they must be feeling much more comfortable than yesterday when they had all this moisture around. Because barring one, as I said, the pitch has generally has played well. It, the color of it has changed. It is light brown, which means the moisture is gone. The moisture is gone. As a question, we'll have to bend our back and uh, see how quickly we may be able to effect a bird too. But um, they're being denied by brown and graphic. Yes, just to bring you some scores from the other games in Trinidad and Tobago versus Guyana. The last score I saw there was 82 for free. Trinidad and Tobago. And Jamaica versus Windows. Jamaica were 161 for four. So that game being played at Park Hill, while the Trinidad Guyana game being played at Cyan Hill. So those are the two other games in this round of the cricket West Indies Rising Stars under 19 tournament. Right here at um, on Way playing field, we have a good contest. On our hands here, Leeward Islands versus Barbados. As we see Nisbet starting another over from that Bequi end. A short delivery and well played in the end there from Achilles Brown. Once again, two slips in place. The man that gully, backward point, extra cover, mid off. A straightish mid wicket and a square leg for Nisbet as Brown covers up once again. Not a lot happening so far for the fast bowlers as you alluded to earlier, Gunny. Pitch seemed to have simmered out as they would say. So a bit of movement for Nisbet in the first innings, getting the ball to move away from the right handed batters. Haven't seen any evidence of that so far. I'm seeing a, a lot of inconsistent bounce. Just seem to be easy pace and easy pace wicket at this point in time. Outside the off stump again. Brown is letting that one go to be taken by Bowen Tuckett. As captain, I'm wondering what might be going through his mind at this point in time, Gunny. I rather suspect um, that the spinners from the Leeward Island side would be the ones he would be probably looking forward to in terms of um, dismissing the Barbados a second time for a reasonable total. While the Barbados team, they'd be confident enough recognizing that they didn't go too far in front to be able to try and bat out and get some practice for the final. This one is. Guided there to the man at Gully, well fielded. Because I would, I would, as I said yesterday, because of the amount the last time in those other two games, uh, Barbados definitely will be point position in the 
into the final because of the losing of one day yesterday, totally in the other two games. And at the rate at which they're going, you know, the last updates you gave. So Barbies got clearly sitting there in the final against whom? We really don't know. So maybe they can use this as um, a sort of precursor before the final. Agreed. The Leeward Lions, they'll be looking for an outright victory, hopefully for them. But in order to do so, they will have to really bowl well in the second innings. A bit disappointing with the bat, really. Never really got their innings going. For them to do such a thing as net, they'll have to bowl very, very well with the spinners. And again, some um, Barbados team that may play some injudicious shots. That is the only way they really get back into this. Except the Barbados really batted badly. This one is walked out to square leg. Fielded there by it's Warrior. And another over completed. I made no over. It's a good start from this bet. Three overs, none for seven. The Barbadian team, they're 14 without loss. Achilles Brown is there on seven. And Braffway is also on seven. So it's a question now of um, the thinking cap should be on for Skipper Tuckett and the rest of the squad because we can clearly say the pitch has definitely settled. There's no on towards jump and bounce and whatever else transpired yesterday. Even up to the, the period before lunch this morning, we were seeing some funny things happening off the state of this uh, wicket, but things are squinting down here. It's sun beating down on it, so moisture is gone and a matter of settled down. Well, the batsmen will feel confident to get behind the deliveries and bat properly. Use a lot of the vertical bats once the ball is in the same area as they did yesterday, which they was a bit skeptical. I still think that we, we might see Lando Fort being introduced soon. He's the man with the five wicket all in the first inning, so definitely will be worth seeing what he can extract from the wicket. As we mentioned before, he was the one who really started the slider um, yesterday for the Barbadian team. So I think we'll see him pretty soon being introduced into the attack as Edward continues from this the commentary box end. I think the Barbadian batting lineup should have no uh, apprehension about batting on this pitch at this stage. Based on what you're seeing in the six overs thus far, it seems as if the pitch has settled it. No misbehave deliveries barring one earlier up. I to settle in and try and bat and bat and bat for a longer period as possible. Because they don't need an outright win. Yes, I think the challenge for them would be spinning the second innings. In the first innings, the pace and movement really trouble the batsmen as this one is pulled. And luckily for him, over the wicket keeper's head, should be able to get a bungry here. Zion Braffwaite. Yes, signal here by umpire Rajkumar. So 40 with us, Bungry there for Braffwaite. He'll take it nevertheless. It's now 18 without loss, the Barbadian team in their second innings. Yes, that one was a very lucky hour. As you said, 40 with us, Bungry. Uh, the ball rushed onto him a little quicker. So by the time he was halfway through the ball, that's connected onto his bat. And over the wicket keeper head, you cannot set a field for that. Doesn't seem to be too comfortable against that length, though. On a couple of occasions, he has really struggled to execute that pull shot with any sort of conviction. It's not the quickest wicket, quickest wicket in any case. So Edward would definitely have to bend his back here to really pose any sort of difficulties for him. And this one is worked nicely and neatly out to the man there, Lando Fort, a deep square leg for another single. Score now moves on to 19 without loss. Still in the red, so to speak, by three. So, Captain Tuckett again, making some adjustments to his field. It's now a solitary slip in place. I still do not approve of it, you know, to be very honest with you. Ball is failing you. Because basically it's down now to no slip. Yes, Amory moving into more of a gully position. So these funny decisions that they're making. Man coming out of the slip call and going to a, a, a square leg. Actually, feel that delivery. So, 
Don't you think there's some <laughs> funny feel place in we are looking at out there with a sort of a what you call that? A bully? No <laughs> slip, ball new, left arm, glass medium from this to top end. Then there's five on the left side, long leg, deep, backward square, square, mid wicket, mid on. What is he hoping for? They're trying to work it out. I think what has happened is that because of the, the fact that the pitch hasn't offered a lot in comparison to the first innings, as Brown again walking this one neatly to the right of Landerford, should be able to come back for second. Um, the bowler there, Edward, just getting a bit too straight. And well played there from Achilles Brown, so two more to the total, 21 with our loss. Yes, the pitch itself hasn't really offered a lot. We haven't seen a lot of deliveries going past the outside edge. So maybe Captain Bowen Tuckett is saying to himself, we need to go into a more containment sort of mode. Yeah, I don't totally agree with that, because at the end of the day, you still need wickets. Wickets is the order of the day. Wickets are the order of the day here at the Alice Way playing field. When you need these type of pitches, anyway, after this little bit. As we see Edward prepared to move in to bowl to Brown. This one is on the line of the off stump, comfortably played by Achilles Brown. And that ends another over. At the end of the seventh over, Barbados in their second innings. They are 21 without loss. They now trail by one run. At a run rate of three, which is much better than they did throughout their first innings. But uh, when you have these type of pitches where from what we are seeing, seemingly nothing is happening. Let me put it this way. Uh, you tend to instruct your bowlers to bowl one side of the wicket with a pack one side and keep working on the ball, keep one side shine and have the other side sweat and bowl on one side and force the two batsmen to drive because you can really have a feeling they need a uh, big outside drive just far. Keep that ball up on a good line, good line in that drive area, allowing the batsmen to come and play with a couple of slips in and hoping that um, a little bit of movement here, a little bit of movement there. Uh, things may happen and they may take an edge. But this sort of field placing, you're giving um, license to the Barbadian batsmen to relax themselves on a highway and just drive comfortably. There's no traffic coming from the other side. Uh, agreed as we see Nisbet continue his spell from the... As this one is driven on the up, just beating the man there at gully. Shh. Rushes into the bungry. So another fortuitous bungry there from Zion Braffrey. He's living a charm life, really. And he gets another bungry, moves on to 16. It's now 25 without loss. I think he's trusted the bungs of the pitch this innings. And he decided he's going to play shots. Unfortunately for him, that one flew over the head of the man at gully to the bungry for a, 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 a bungry. And Barbados has his race to defeat it. And they are now in front. What about by about one run? Three runs? Three without loss, if you want to put it that way. How many races? And a 22 run deficit. As Nisbet again continues to breath weight. It's a better delivery. Coming back into the right hander. Yes, Brathwaite, he has been prepared to really slash at anything that gives him a bit of room outside the off stump. As he has gone hard at these deliveries, and thankfully for him, on that last occasion, would have evaded the man there at, at Gully Michael Graves, who is a relatively tall man. So they normally say when you're going, when you're slashing, you slash hard. And that's what he's doing here, Braffwit. He's the more enterprising of the two uh, opening batsmen despite looking like he can give his wicket away at any time. He's slashing this one again, Dong Le Grong. That's a good shot, more control from him. And he's going to get a bongi well played, well, well stopped in the end, I think, from Landerfort. So two runs. I think he just stood tall there, not a tall man, Braffwit, but was able to just punch this one, Dong Le Grong. Well timed from him. So definitely timing the ball better in the second innings as opposed to what we saw in the first innings from him. Yes, uh, I think it's a pretty good shot there. Stood tall and just, uh, although he's a short man, and got it past mid-off for uh, two. Should have been three, but um, that's the state of the game with our running between the wickets for most of the teams. As uh, the players and themselves are not prepared to 
do the correct thing, the basic, as they run the first run quickly. Short delivery, and he's pulling this one to the left of Nathan Edward. Get a single. So definitely a man on a mission, it appears, Zion Braffitt. And what he has done, he has, he has forced the captain really to remove a couple of the, um, the players from the slip garden. So it's a, a spreaded feel whenever he's on strike. So once they have gone through this period, the next uh, critical period for the batsmen, who's the, who's the introduction of the spin bowlers, once they survive this period, Definitely. So again, this delivery dying on the way to the wicket keeper Bowen. As total remains on 28 without loss into the eight over. So as you mentioned, a bit more momentum into this innings in terms of the scoring rate. You mentioned coming into this game that both teams actually came in with good batting form, batting form behind them in their previous encounter. That didn't really materialize in the first innings. But Barbados will be looking to, to show more of what they, they're capable of with the bat in the second innings. As Nisbet again, full delivery and Brown there, showing the maker's name as they would say. Played well and it's the end of another over. Seven runs coming from that one from Nisbet. Bobby does in their second innings. They are 28 without loss. Eight overs completed. And six runs to the good in their second innings. And uh, the batsman looking fairly steady, fairly comfortable, barring one or two. If, if he shots from, Braff from Braffitt, but certainly showing the broad face of the bat, and that is Brown to the delivery there from Nisbet. And um, he's still letting him know that he's seeing the ball as big as the proverbial breadfruit. Something that we do and live uh, and enjoy here in SVG. I know both of you are from the breadfruit area. You and um, Alison. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> as we've seen, Landerfort, surprisingly, coming in from this common she box N. In the first innings, Gunny, he would have bowled that marathon spell from the Beckway N, where he got, most of, well, got all of his wickets, actually. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes from this, the commentary box and in the I second innings. I said a bit earlier, you know, if the pipe is not leaking, don't call the plumber. If he has done the damage from that end, um, it's, it's natural mentally that you feel very comfortable to come from the same end that you have destroyed them in the first innings. So why change? That's the question I'm asking. And Nesbitt, who did all the damage from this end along with Langford, has gone to the opposite end. Yeah, I was just about to mention this. I was just about to mention that Nisbet really um, did well in his second spell, which he bowled from this, the Comanche box end. Actually got a couple of wickets caught behind and, and got the ball to move away appreciably from the right-handers from this end. And Landerford, we saw his success from the, the, the other end. So um, something for the captain to really work out and maybe even the team management from the sidelines sending out a message. But let's see how he goes. Land of Fort, so, so the what do you think he's thinking of? The success story from the first innings here, Land of Fort, number 12 on his back. Bowling to Braffwit. His delivery is on the line of the leg stump. Braffwit there walking it out to the man there, Palmer, at mid-wicket. And there's no run, so 28 without loss. The human mind is made up of such. If there's success from one end, it's obvious plays right in your right and going right back there, try and bowl the same thing and get another five, another six, whatever. It's, it's natural. Rather than to have you shift to the opposite end where you have to start all over again, it, 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 it's more of a mental thing than anything else. Gunny, we, we we're not out there, maybe it's something the captain would have seen or maybe even the bowler. I'm sure the bowler would have had a say in this as well. We're saying to the skipper, I, I would prefer to be from the back way end. But as it stands, he's coming from the commentary box in as Braffitt is cutting that one. A bit of a mix-up there between the two batsmen. But thankfully, in the end, they completed the single successfully. So another one added to the total, 29 without loss. So far, he hasn't really found that line as yet. 
first delivery down the leg side and that one short and wide. So still searching for that bit of consistency uh, in the second innings. Similar to what we say about a batsman, even though you are not out overnight and you come back the next day, you have to start from scratch. So it's a similar case in terms of the bowlers. You did well in the first innings, got your five wicket all, but you still have to come and do the basics right and get your, your bowling innings up and running. This one is jumping a bit. A bit of a lift there for Landerford, similar to what we saw from him in the first innings. But in the end, well played by Brown. I'm thinking with the, the type of lift we're seeing from Landerford, even so early in his spell, maybe a short leg. A short leg can be a good position. But I don't think, based on what we've seen from Bowen Tuckett in the second innings, that, that, that would be the least of his concerns. As we're seeing, there's a, a solitary man there in a, a widish third slip, maybe a fine gully position. A backward point, extra cover, short cover, mid off, mid on, a short mid wicket. A man there, deep square leg, and a man at deep fine leg. So not a lot of company around the bat there for Achilles Brown. He'll feel pretty lonely at this point in time. And he has to. Batting is a lonely game, you know. It's you alone. I'll get one of the, you. Have, you alone. You have one individual running with one red ball or a white ball, and you alone have to face it. You and you alone. As Landerford leaves us again, this one is keeping a bit low. So some inconsistent bounce, as we have seen throughout this entire you game. Never, and you never stop to think of it. It's you and you alone. You have ten feelers, two umpires, six thumbs, four bales, and, you, and a red ball or a white ball bowling at you. You and you alone have to think. And God. Well, very, else. very much so. Be responsible for your own actions as a batsman. But that delivery, that previous delivery gun, is just keeping a bit low. I think out of, out of all of the bowlers we have seen on display, Landerford seemed to be the one who is able to just extract that bit of inconsistencies in terms of the bounce in this wicket. That last delivery going through at a reasonable height to Bowen Tuckett, but wasn't lined up properly. So the end of uh, the, the first over there from Landerford, one run coming from it, Barbados, they are 29 without loss in their second innings. Yes, slowly and surely the Barbados um, opening pair. Uh, are sending a message to the Ireland's fast bowlers. We are here to stay and stay much longer than we did in the first innings when he had all his assistance. And they have given their team a steady, steady start. As a question whereby they'll have to continue up until uh, next, what, 10 minutes is there before tea? I think that should be their target. Tea, relax, have a cup of tea, uh, English, English style, or juice, whatever, sandwiches, whatever. And relax and um, get back out after it and continue the battle for your country. Very much so. So another solid opening stand from this pair. Mentioned 42 being this stand in the first innings. And in the second innings here, 29 without loss. Looking reasonably untroubled so far, it must be said, Gunny. Yeah, they look very settled. They look um, confident composed and uh, barring one or two in the main they def definitely looks very settled as we're going to see Nisbet continuing from the back way end another change in the field from the captain here I'm going to note that deep extra cover in the form of Amory so maybe it's there for that, that slash really that we have seen from Braffwit So we are seeing the field now. Just a man there at gully. Backward point. Mentioned the man at deep extra cover. Have a short cover, mid off, mid on. A short mid wicket. A man there at square leg, close to the umpire. Rajkumar. And a man down at fine leg. As Nisbet continues. Shortish delivery. Maybe not getting up as, as high as Bratwit was expecting there. But well played in the end. 29 without loss, scoring rate of 3.16. So definitely an improvement in terms of the scoring rate. In the first innings, they were meandering along, really. 
around two runs or so per over. I think that is something that we'd expect from the Barbadian team, especially given that there's been an improvement in the batting conditions here at the Annasway playing field. They will definitely look to score and put some pressure back on the Leeward Island team. That's Nisbet again. Spawn this one on the line of the leg stump. Just doesn't seem to have that same sort of venom, that sort of same sort of threat as we saw in the first innings, Nisbet. Albeit, it would have been from the, the commentary box end, as we alluded to earlier. Leeward Island team looking a bit flat in the field at this point in time. As this one is cut. And the man there, Michael Graves, doing a good job there in the gully. It's another short delivery outside the off stump. There was Braffwit looking to really play that one in the region of third man. Well fielded in the end. I'm looking at that man out at deep cover. That is more of a run saving position, Gunny. Maybe if you're going to bowl and give him a bit of room, maybe a fly slip, or maybe someone three quarters of the way back to the third man could be a more of an attacking position as well as a defensive position. This seems to me to be a, a limited over type of field placing. Because in 3 day cricket, to be honest, uh, Osmet, that man down there is just a waste of time. That's a sweeper position as we tend to call it. He should be more in an attacking position because we are doing to this trying to stop runs when you are on top. Yes. That on top is slowly being eroded by this um, opening partnership between uh, Brown and uh, Braffitt. Yes, I'm, I'm thinking in the mind of Bowen Tuckett here, um, he would have seen Brian Zion Braffitt slashing hard outside the off stump. So maybe that's why he's, he has placed that man there at deep cover. But I just think that maybe a man at fly slip, as they would call it, three quarters of the way back to the third man boundary. That might be a better position. It could actually be a, a catching position for Braffwit, given what we have seen from him and his tendency to go hard outside the off stump. But you can't help repeating. They're just making decisions that run contrary to the way we are thinking. So, just have to say it as we see it. But basically, in all honesty, some of the things are uh befuddling you you want tend to wonder why why they do a or b or c but they are the leaders they are the ones in charge of their team out there so they make the decisions this one is wide outside the off stump breath rate they're not tempted in any way to go after that delivery it's the end of an another over there from this bet a maiden on over it is and Barbie does they remain on 29 without loss breath rate is there a good start 20 from 28 deliveries Achilles Brown, he's more sedate. He's on nine from 30 deliveries. And the Barbadian batsmen, opening batsmen are really, have really settled quite nicely with the balls definitely not misbehaving. And uh, they are giving their teams a solid foundation, a solid platform. I, I think the, the basic thing I uh, keep referring to, batsmen should be aware as to what the time it is. It's very close to tea time. Maybe another over, maybe two, and try to see their team to a tea time without losing a wicket. Whilst the Leeward Irons will be pressing for at least one wicket before tea, you should be guarded, be mindful of that. Yes, and I'll be hoping that Amory can provide that breakthrough as we see a change in bowling once again from this commentary box end. Maybe one over before long, um, the break, the tea interval, as you mentioned, just giving the spinner a chance to maybe get a breakthrough. Some very strange decisions. Emery bowled fairly well from the southern end. Now he's come to the northern end. They're just seeing things completely different to us. Out of all my years of experience, I've never seen this type of thing happening whereby you have success from one end, and then you're, you, you complete reversal in the second end. Has it ever happened to you in any game that you have played? Not that I can recall at this time, Mr. Hines. As we see a man at slip. Do, don't you think it's a little funny? A man had shot, silly me down, sorry. Shot mid wicket, square leg. As Amory. A bit full, that delivery. There was Brown playing it out to the man there at backward point. 
Yes, there's a mid off, uh, a deepish mid on as well. So, more of an on side type of feel as we are going to see a change now with Michael Palmer moving into a, a backward point position. So, strengthening the offside feel. I think more than likely this could be the last over before T. Based on our watches, not too sure if they are synchronized with the umpire's watches no, they're not. on the <laughs> on because the field itself. Be starting a couple of minutes before us. So we'll, we'll hope we we'll watch and see. As Brown is driving this one neatly out to the man there at backward point. Palmer gets a hand to it. Can't prevent the single though. Another one added to the total. So 30 without loss. If you're now joining us. Barbados, they made 101 in the first innings and they managed to dismiss the Leeward Islands for 123. So in their second innings, 29 without uh, 30 without loss, sorry. A lead of eight runs. It's Emery again. This one, a bit of torn there. A bit of torn there for him. Torn and bounce as well. Just started a bit too straight there. And certainly encouraging signs for the spinner at the start of the spell. Comes in again. He's fighting this one and he's driving that one. Should get close to the boundary. And two runs for Bratwit. Maybe he was looking for more output from that shot. But thankfully for him, he got it in the gap a bit officially as well. And two more runs added to the total. So 32 without loss. As Amory continues, number seven on his back. This one is a good delivery there. Maybe not. Just going on straight, beating the outside edge. Well bowled there from Amory. A tall man, so should be able to extract a bit of bounce from the surface. As he continues again, this one is flighted and well played there from Braffwit. And it's the end of the, the first over. It's the end of the session as well. So, Barbados in their second innings. They are 32 without loss. 11 overs completed. Zion Braffitt is there on 22 from 32 deliveries. And Achilles Brown, his batting partner, is there on 10 from 33. So, a rather confident and, and comfortable start in the end from the Barbados openers in that tricky little period just before T interval. Yes, a session won by Barbados here. Definitely, there's no two ways about it. Pulling themselves right back into the game. Uh, so, at tea time here, Bobby was in the second in 32 without loss. Uh, the Liga Lions have a lead of 123, the Liga of 26. They have 10 without loss, basically to the, to the good, in the black, as we say in um, accounting terms. And uh, it's a question to see what happens after the But clearly, this session here and the state of the pitch has really flattened out, as we tend to say in cricket in parlor. And the Barbadian batsmen, they, are growing con they grew in confidence when they recognized there's not none to what's happening. And uh, certainly it has been their uh, session. And it's a question of how well can the Leeward Islands bounce back after tea? Or would the Barbadian batsmen continue to grind and grind? And because remember the first thing is they added 41 before the collapse came. But in this thing is they're looking far, far, far more secure. So far, so good. So that's the situation here until after tea. We'll go back to uh, the studios.
Yes, good afternoon and welcome back to the Ardensville playing field where we have the Trinidad and Tobago on the 19th. The Leeward Islands on the 19th team taking on the Barbados on the 19th team here. Barbados making 101 in their first innings. Leeward Islands replying with 123. And the Leeward Islands, they're currently, the Barbados currently batting in their second innings. Um, the opening partnership is unbroken. The score is currently at 32 without loss after 11 overs. I'm Alan San Krukshank, and with me here in the commentary box is Osnet Kato. Good afternoon, Osnet. Yes, good afternoon to you, Alan San. Good afternoon to all our viewers around the world. So we've had a, a reasonably exciting day of cricket so far. We've seen a lot of wickets. We've seen some good bowling. We've also seen some good batting in, 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 in periods. Um, this opening stand here from the Barbadian team, really what they were looking forward to in terms of setting the, the foundation for their second innings batting performance. And do you have some updates from the other games for us? Yes, I do. Um, in terms of the game over at Sand Hill, Trinidad and Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, 95 for 6 declared, and Guyana, they are 45 for 2. So Trinidad and Tobago definitely trying to forge an outside vic outright victory in that game. At Park Hill, which seemed to be somewhat of a batting paradise in this 3 day format, Jamaica, 264 for 8. Justin Beckford there getting 100. So those are the other scores in the other games played here in this Cricket West Indies Rising Stars on the 19 tournament. Yes, thank you very much, Osnett. And we're about to resume here. Landeford, I think, now at his rightful end. At the Beckford end, he'll be bowling to to Brown, Achilles Brown, who is on strike. Feel is a slip, a gully, backward point, cover point, extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, a man at mid-wicket and... Uh, well, forward square leg and a long leg. Land the fort into Brown. This one is driving, and that's a lifting delivery outside the off stump, beating him as he has that drive. So immediately you could see that the, uh, from this end, he's already getting the ball to lift a little bit more than he was getting from the northern end. Definitely so. Before the T interval, you were, you were campaigning, really, for him to come from that Beckway end. It's the end that he got his wickets in the first innings. That delivery there on and about the off stump, but good carry. Then that's the thing we've seen from Landerford from that end, getting the ball to go through to the wicket keeper, wicket keeper at a good height. A bit of a bit of a loose stroke there as well from Achilles Brown. Just need to get set load once again after the T interval. Yes, uncharacteristic from him. He has been quite circumspect as he faces up again to Landerford. Punches this one to the man of cover. There's no run. Still 32 without loss. Barbados, they are now ahead by 10 runs. Now lead by 10 runs. So in, in effect, they are 10 without loss. Very much so. They'll be looking to build and, and build relatively quickly without being too reckless um, this afternoon. Trying to put themselves in a, in a good position at the end of the day's play. Not too sure how many overs remaining. We'll get that information for you before before the time. This one is good delivery on off stump. Pushing forward is Brown to mid off. There's no run. Yes, we'll get that information for you in due course in terms of how many overs remaining in the day's play. That can give us a guide as to how much the Barbadian team will be gauging as to the total they want at the end of this, this day's play. Anything over 100 by the end of the day's play, that would be a, a good effort from the Barbadian team. Maybe for the loss of a couple of wickets. Maybe for the loss of no wickets. You never know. And, and the fourth outside the off stump. Shoulder arms is Brown. Through the wicket keeper, Bowen. Had this discussion prior to tea, where bowling from the opposite end, the question that we had in our mind was how are the Leeward Islands team um, trying to get a wicket? How are they looking to dismiss or aiming to dismiss these two openers? And that's a discussion that I will have with you shortly, wasn't it? And also, if you, uh, based on what you see from the fields that they are setting, and also if you are in their position, what would you do? We'll get to that after this delivery. So Landy Forty is in. He's punching off the back foot, Brown, but straight to the man at backward point. There's no run. 
Well, in my estimation, I, I think Landerford is a, it's a key bowler here. He has been one of the few bowlers on this wicket to actually cause problems for the batters, both in the first innings and in the second innings. Right? I would like to, as a captain, you want to give him a feel that supports his type of bowling, which is getting the ball to lift off of a good length. So maybe even a short leg, I think, can be a, a very good position for Landerford specifically. Has gotten the ball to jump on a couple of occasions. And of course, maybe an extra slip. I do tend to agree with you there. Because the game is quite evenly poised at the moment. And runs would be at a premium as we go forward into the game. As Landiford comes in now, he's bowing to Brown. Punching again off the back foot. Excellent hand there by the man at Gully. But they're able to sneak a single. So good running by the two batsmen. There's a bit of whiff given there to Brown. Looking to force that one through the backward point region. Half stop there from Michael Graves. But the batters, as they've done throughout these innings, good communication and they were able to get a single. So the end of the 12th over, and at the end of it, Barbados, they're 33 without loss. It's an interesting, they will continue with Amory at the northern end. Seems like the captain has been quite reluctant to bowl his leg spinner and the few overs he bowled yesterday. He proved to be well, one over actually, one over, one mil. He was quite a handful in that over. Yes, he got the ball to turn and bounce, Mackenzie. So, quite a bit of a surprise not to see him being introduced as yet. Also, ball from this end, this is the commentary box yeah. end, the same end that Nathan Seeley got his wickets mm -hmm. from. So, definitely would like to try to get him coming in from this end. But Especially with the two right handers on, um, at the wicket at the moment. Definitely. But captain has opted for Amory. Well, Amory is clearly the, the, the senior spinner. Um, you can see that based on uh, there's always a pecking order in <laughs> in a side. This one is flighted on the off stump, defended by Brown. The man at mid wicket, it looks like Drew. Does the feeling there's no run? Long on being pushed back to the boundary. Oh. Two thirds of the way to the boundary, Honore. Full delivery again, covers it up, does Brown. So flattish delivery has been bowled here by Honore. Not really giving generous flight. Something that I think he could do. A bit more. So on a flat again, but bounces, turns. This one is height aiding him in that bounce, but they also turned in sharply just past the man at short leg. Yeah, we saw a bit of that before the T interval. Got a couple of deliveries to turn and bounce. Uh, so maybe even a, a leg gully might be a good position for him. This one again, it's quicker, flatter, just turn, squares up Brown, and he's coming back for two runs. He's excellent running by Brown. He turned, he saw that the fielder had just got the ball and he really took off with a lot of intent between the wickets and he has been running well. Yes, you mentioned the word intent and that is what we have seen from these two batters as it relates to their running between the wickets. They're quite prepared to put pressure on the fielders. On that occasion, a, a straighter delivery there from Amory getting the outer portion of the bat and the batters they are able to pick up for two runs. Score moves on to 35 with our loss. One is down the leg side, short and down the leg side, flatter. Taken by the keeper, there's no run. This one is fuller, driven by Brown off the front foot. Should get a couple. Easy couple in the end, comfortably taken. Mackenzie does the feeling. And uh, that's the end of the over. And at the end of the over, the score is now 37 without loss. Yes, a good over there for Barbados. The four runs coming from that one. Emery there, as we mentioned, not really giving the ball uh, too much of a generous flight. And both batters there looking reasonably comfortable against 
he's off spin. He'll be looking to just put on a, a good spell here for his captain right after the tea interval. It's given what we saw from the Barbados team earlier. Um, I was mentioning that it would be good to get the leg spinner in. You don't want to have the leg spinner bowling um, too late in the day because you want him to be able to attack. And with the lead just being, you know, uh, just over 10 at the moment, 15 exactly, um, you don't want it to get too far out of proportions that the leg spinner is under too much pressure when he comes on. So um, this may have been a really good opportunity to get him into the attack as Landley Ford continues from the southern end. The Beckway end, he'll be bowling to Bratwit. There's now a fly slip. He whips this one off his pads, full delivery. Thought of two. Yes, they come back for two. That's good running. And they get it quite easily in the end. Okay, both batsmen continue to put pressure on the, the Leeward Island fielders. It's an interesting change in the field there, Alanson, in terms of Amory coming out of the four slip position and going somewhere what we call more of a fly slip. I was speaking about that before the T the interval as well. In terms of especially bowling to Brathwaite, he seemed to like to slash at those deliveries outside the off stump. So this can be both a, a run saving position as well as an attacking position for Brathwaite. Uh, I'm wondering about the personnel though. Amory, he has a lot of reach, but mobility. Let me get back to that. Yes, I, was, I would think that you'd want one of your quicker feelers in such a position because if the edge flies, he may have to move a fair distance to his right or to his left because of the, the further he goes back, the angle now takes the ball further and further away from him. And uh, that's something that um, you know, could be thought about in terms of the personnel. Emery is not the fastest over the ground. Well, he has some reach, far more reach than anyone else. Maybe in the competition. <laughs> Agreed. Landy Ford now is bowling to Bratwit. Covers up on off stump on the back foot. Defends. To the man at cover, there's no run. Well, I was actually thinking that maybe the man at deep extra cover would have been the man to, to put in this particular position. So you can actually have this slip there in place because I, I, I tend to think that of all the bowlers so far, Landerford seemed to be the most threatening from a seamer's perspective in this second innings. So maybe have the, the four slip in place and then remove that man from deep extra cover and put him in that position where Emer is currently occupying. Yes, and he has proven to be quite consistent in his line and length. So you don't have to defend too much with him. He's going to be there and thereabouts most of the time. So I take your point. They're trying something different, so you will come in them for that as Landy Ford comes in to Bradway to turn this one to the man at mid wicket. Or no ring does the feeling there's no run. A, a beautiful day for cricket here at the Annesville playing field. In fact, this weather, we were, we were yawning for this weather yesterday. At least not the, the Leeward Islands, while they were bowling, but quite a bit of rain yesterday. A stark contrast to what we are seeing today. Stanley Fort again into Bratwit. This one is edging, and he's caught. He's caught, edging there, and there was the skipper. Tuckett diving away to his right and taking a neat catch as he was looking to cut that one away, Bratwaite. He's, he goes to land the fort again, that lifting delivery, and uh, he has paid the price. Yes, um, boy in Tuckett there picking up where he left off in the first innings. Got himself seven catches in that first innings, so it's a good catch as well. You mentioned his mobility behind the wicket earlier on in the broadcast. Was diving to his right there and taking a very good catch there to dismiss Bratwaite. And that goes to show that the, the, the plan, uh, we spoke about the plan in terms of how you're going to get a wicket. I mean, they didn't really go to the man, they had fly slip, but you could see what they were trying to do in terms of giving Braffert a bit of whiff outside the off stump, and he's prepared to throw the bat at those deliveries. On this occasion, it was a tinnage and a very good catch there from um, Boeing Tuckett. Yes, Braffert, they're looking for his favorite cut shot. 
but that lifting delivery you know, that came off the top edge as he was attempting the shot. And a neat catch there from Boeing Tuckett. As a new batsman, Barbados consistent Joshua Dawn comes to the crease. Well, he, he had a first ball duck in the first innings, and then maybe that would be somewhere in his mind. I'm not too sure where exactly in his mind. But what we, ca we do know is that he has had a very good tournament so far. I think he's Mr. Consistent for the Barbadian team. 188 runs, as we mentioned in the first innings in the tournament so far, with 250s. So definitely somebody that the Barbadian team depends a lot on, and they'll be hoping that he can kick on here this afternoon and, and take his team into a comfortable position. On the other hand, Lander fought this missed him with a snort of a delivery in the first innings, and he'll have that in his mind now, and will be hoping to repeat the dose. And no batsman really wants to be dismissed for a pair, much less a king pair, and he's on that at the moment. I was thinking maybe the captain can put a bit more pressure on him as well. Slandiford comes in. Oh, and this one is off the edge. It's going down towards the third man boundary. It will get there now for four. And he's off the mark, so forget about the pair. Forget about the king pair. And Joshua Dawn has four. Yes, um, Landerford continues to be a threat to these Barbadian batters. Good delivery there on the line of the off stump. Slightly moving away and taking the outer portion of the bat there from Dawn going in going through the, the second slip region there and he gets himself a bungrease up and running and Barbados there now 43 for one yes I think sometimes you have to look not just at the stage of the game but your bowler and see the rhythm that he's in and I think based on the way that Landy Foot has bowled in both first and second innings really of all the seamers on display in this game they really should be attacking when he's bowling and when I say they, I mean his, his feeling team, the feeling captain, really should be more attacking in terms of his field placement and also personnel. Agreed. <coughs> He's in the middle of a very good spell. As he was running, I was saying maybe a man has short leg or something in the eye line of Joshua Dunn. Having um, given him that type of delivery in the first innings, that would have definitely been to the forefront of Dawn's mind. This one is turned to the man, the deep mid wicket boundary, Edward, who comes and does the feeling. So, a single to Achilles Brown. Brings Dawn on strike to Amory. Yes, I think the, the captain just needs to give more support, especially to Lander Fort. He he's in the best position, actually, in terms of being the wicket keeper. So, he will know what exactly is happening for Lander Fort on this pitch. We've seen him take the first wicket of this innings. And just a matter of giving some support to his um, key strike bowler. Yes, Dawn turns this one to the man at short leg. We were speaking earlier about uh, the, the fly slip in terms of the personnel as we get back to that in this after this delivery. Fuller, driven by Dawn in the gap, should get at least two. Think of the third, but it's not on as the throw comes in now from Palmer. Keeps them down to two. That the positioning of the fly slip as well, although Bratwit he has now been dismissed, caught behind, but the edges, as we said before, they have not been fine edges. So even the, the position of the fly, fly slip, it should have been a little bit wider. And the edges generally are going through second and third slip. This one is on the stump, defended by Dawn. Confident start from Dawn in this innings. Seem to be have uh, seem to have all the time in the world really to play his shots. This one is turned nicely by him. Out to the man at midwicket. And this is something that you see from him. The scoreboard will move. Not necessarily from big shots, but he will manipulate the ball around. As we saw from him in the fifty over format. And that's something that they missed in the first innings, that the influence that he has. This one is forward is Brown. Defends. And that's the end of the over. At this point, the Barbados team are 47 for one. Yes, uh, another good reasonable over there for the Barbadian team. Four runs coming from it. 
Amori. Amory, sorry. Just struggling to find the, the right length and line to bowl on this particular wicket. We've seen on a couple of occasions he has had the he has gotten the ball to turn and bounce. But that has been few and far in between. Just needs to get a bit more consistent with his lines and lengths, especially to these two Barbadian batters. I mentioned Joshua Dunn and his is his competence in terms of walking the ball into the gaps. And of course, Achilles Brown, he has been there from the beginning, so he's quite used to the pace and, and whatever the pitch is offering at this point in time. Yes, well said. As Landeford continues, he'll be bowling to, to Dawn. Punches off the back foot. Lovely shot. Forward of square on the offside. He'll challenge the boundary. Will it get there? Just pull back inside by the feeler. And they're able to get three runs. Well, that was a lovely shot. A classy shot off the back foot. Well, you said it yourself. Classy day from Joshua Dunn. Delivery shot of a length on the line of the off stump. Just standing tall. He's a reasonably tall man. And just punching it really. Not trying to overhit the ball. But timing it well. Got close to the boundary and three runs for him. So similar length to the delivery that got him in the first innings, but that one didn't have that spiteful bounce that we saw in the first innings, and he was able to just place it for three as Brown now faces up to land the fort. Defends as he is wont to do, um, does it quite often. These two batsmen really have similar build. You have to really look closely to, to tell the difference. Both right-handed. Number three on Brown's back. Number five on Dawn's. Similar mold, really. Yes, indeed. Remember they had a partnership last year and you really had to look very hard to tell who was batting. It's just that the, sh the, the technique is a little bit different in the way they approach their batting. As Landeford comes in, stands up tall, does brown and defends off the back foot. There's no run. As Landeford continues to toil away really from that back way end, not getting the same sort of assistance as he would have had in the first innings, but still willing to run in hard, hit the deck hard. He has had one breakthrough so far. He'll be hoping for another. A lot to think about there for Bowen Tuckett, the captain, wicked keeper. Not the fourth, he's in now to bowl to Brown. He's driving off the two of the bat, doesn't time it. Goes out to the man in the covers, there's no run. So it's a packed offside field here for Landefort. A man that slip Amory, as we have gotten used to in this match. Uh, Michael Graves there at Gully. Backward point. Cover, extra cover. Mid off, mid on. Man there at mid wicket. And a man down at fine leg. So Landefort into Brown. Plays it quite late. Jams down on it. At the last moment, almost defeated him for a bit of extra pace on that occasion. What type of total do you think, Alanson, the Leeward Islands will be looking to restrict the Barbadian team to and be comfortable in chasing, given what we've seen so far on this particular weekend? It's interesting to see, but I, I think I'd want to see what happens with the leg spinner first when he comes on. But I don't think that they will be comfortable chasing that many because... Uh, of what we saw from Seely in the first innings and uh, how the batsmen looked against him. So, a lot of threat from the spinners. This one is outside the off stump, wide from Landefort. Elected to play no shot. The Brown, and that's the end of the over. There's three runs coming from that over. The 50 as well coming up for the Barbadian team. And 16 overs completed. Just a scoring rate of around three runs per over. So, a relatively solid start from. The, the top order. Brown, he's been there. Been watchful. 
and Don, he just came to the wicket. Looks, looks to have made a, a comfortable start so far. Yes, and Amy will continue from the administrative end. And Don will be on strike. Just to remind you that the field is a, sh a short length, a short fine length, uh, about 45. Maybe a little bit um, square than you usually see him instead of fine. There is a short mid wicket, a mid on, a mid off. There is a deep mid wicket that is squarish. Uh, here he comes, full delivery, pushed back down to long to mid on by Don. There's no run. There's also a mid off, an extra cover, first slip. And of course, there's also a man just backward of point. So it's a 5 4 leg side field. As he comes in again, just pops up off the pad. The bongs that you're accustomed to seeing from Amory. There he comes again into Dawn. Turns it out to the man at the deep mid wicket boundary. Edward does the feeling. A single is taken. Yes, easy pickings really for Joshua Dunn. Delivery just too short of a length there from Amory. Turning back into Dunn. Just goes back and walk it nicely through that mid wicket region. So once again, just failing to find that consistent line, um, Amory. Yes, if he's going to bowl that length, then he has to bowl it outside the off stump. This one is full. Pushed easily down to the man at long run for a single. So he has to try to bowl. If he's bowling that length with that bounce, he has to bowl it outside off stump, encouraging them to come forward and pop the catch at the, at the man at short leg. But as long as it pitches among off and around middle, then it's turning down the leg side. So it's no risk really involved there. That's the line that I'm talking about. Just a bit too straight. Because he's getting the ball to turn, to bounce. But he's just starting it too straight. I think that one was a very, very close shave there for Don. Went almost went to the man there. I think it's Michael Graves under the helmet. Would have taken something spectacular to take that one. So it was going quite quickly. It's Emery now again into Don. This is a full toss and it's hit over long on for six runs. That's six runs to Dawn. It was a full toss and it got the treatment. Definitely got the treatment it deserved. Emery um, once again struggling here really in this spell. Not finding the correct length to bowl at that one. A bit too full this time. After being too short earlier on in the over. So overcompensating there Emery. And Joshua Dawn said thank you very much. And deposited that one over deep long on for a massive six. He's off to a very good start on to 17. And Barbie does their 58 for the loss of one. So my question to you would be, Osnet, will you, if you are the Leeward Islands captain, would you change, um, would you make a bowling change at this end? Well, based on what I've seen from Amory so far, he seemed to be struggling with his, his line and his length. I'll definitely give Mackenzie um, a, a, a shot from this end. I haven't seen a lot of him in this game, but he is definitely somebody who I don't think can stay away from the attack for any much longer given what we've seen from Amory in the last couple of overs. Yes, I, I firmly agree with you on that one. And I think sometimes it may be a case of having a, a plan from before, but you have to look and see what how things are going for a bowler on the day and make your adjustments as needed. Slandy Fort now comes into bowl to, to Brown. This one is on the pad. Flick down to the man at long ledge. Should only be a single. He collects now. And uh, there's only one. Yes, both batters scoring relatively freely since the T interval. The, the lines by the Leeward Islands bowlers haven't been consistent. It has allowed these two right-handers to just walk the ball into the gaps. And they've also been able to put away the bad deliveries whenever they have presented themselves. He's bowing Tucket, marshalling his troops, under a bit of pressure. Uh, as you see in the removal of the slip completely, there's more of a packed offside field. 
Do you agree with this move to the new batsman, Joshua Dawn? No slip. Yeah. Even though he's on 17, he's still fairly near the crease. This one, he defends off the back foot. Well, we spoke, uh, we had this conversation earlier. We were saying that with Landfort, who is really your, your key strike bowler in this particular game, you'll want to at least give him some support. So I think the, the man at slip is still a very good position to have. Even though he's not getting the type of movement and the, the type of help as the as he did in the first innings. Yes, but the extra bongs will see an edge go quite fine. If if that's the, the method of dismissal instead of the movement. And it will go to the keeper or to the first slip. So they have brought him back in now. The slip is in place again. This one is on the off some so forward is done, pushing to the man at midwicket and there's no run. So maybe a lack of clarity, really, in terms of the plans of the Leeward Islands here. The previous delivery moving the slip there, Amory, and then one delivery after bringing him back in. So not clear in terms of what he's actually trying to achieve. And we, we had this conversation earlier in terms of how are you looking to really get these batsmen out? Is land before to coming in. Defending is done. Easy single in the end. As he pushes his off the back foot to the man at cover. Yeah, good cricket once again from Barbados. Down there just coming across and just placing that one to the left of Nate and Seely there in the cover. And having himself an easy single in the end. The 60. For one, yes. Dawn has raced on to 18 from 13 deliveries. And yes, Achilles Brown is also on 18 and 54 deliveries. There's Landy Fort into Brown. Defense. It'll be interesting to see a graphic of um, how many deliveries out of those 50 odd deliveries that. Achilles Brown has played defensively, might be about 50 of them. <laughs> Agreed. He has been compact. And he, he has needed to be con um, compact on this particular wicket. He's showing a broad bat in defense. And usually with the full face as well. As Landifold comes in, looking forward to dislodge him. This one, he's cutting backward of point, and that will go all the way to the boundary for four. So that one was just slightly wide, and Brown now well in his, well into his innings, taking the opportunity, getting on top of it, and cutting it behind point for four. A good shot there from Achilles Brown. We just mentioned he, he's a bit circumspect throughout his innings, but on that occasion, given a bit of room outside the off some there from Landerford, and he ended up cutting it past the man there at backward point for a, a well-deserved boundary. And the total now moves on to 64. Barbados for one. They lead by 40, 38, sorry. 42 runs. Apologies. So they're leading by 42. And uh, when you think of what you see now from Brown, I'm wondering if Dawn has had that effect, that desired effect on, 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 on Brown. Where he has come out and looked so assured and has gotten the scope of moving that Brown now has felt that confidence that's rubbed off on him and now he's, he's, he's playing more freely. And as we asked for in the last over, we are now having a change of bowling where Mackenzie is being introduced. In my opinion, maybe a few overs later than he ought to have. but Definitely, and this is a key part of the game. I think a lot hinges on how well Mackenzie is able to bowl here. He's able to just get a couple of wickets. Captain will definitely need to give him some support in the field as well. So far, just a solitary slip. Kenzie's in his bowling now. This one is short. It's cut by Dawn, but well feeling by the man at point. Malik Walsh does the feeling. Those of you who are watching and wondering where is Joel Andrew, he has a niggle. He's only able to bat quite restrictedly, so he's not on the field. 
those of you watching from the Leeward Islands. And this one is a turning leg break from Mackenzie. Quite flat, but still turning away. Yes, there's a man at backward point, a deep extra cover. Long off. Man at short cover, short mid wicket, mid on. This one is allowed, appeal is full, and he's given out. So the leg spinner in his first over. And that one striking down on the pad is looking to sweep. Looks a little bit disappointed. Maybe a question of the line. But definitely leg spinners make things happen. We've been calling for uh, Mackenzie for a while. This occasion, delivery, hitting him full really. Maybe on the line of the leg stump. So I think the, the, the full... The full nature of that delivery really what persuaded the umpire to give it out. Don looks a bit disappointed, but he has to go. And Bobby does they lose their second wicket. It's now 64 for the loss of two. And the leg spinner is on the board. And uh, I mean, I don't know, sometimes, I mean, we all know we have played the game and sometimes it's easier to see things from over here where we are. But really and truly, without anything happening for the most part, you really should have gotten your leg spinner, your attacking option into the bowling module earlier. Agreed, and from what we saw from him in the first innings, he only bowled a couple of overs, but he definitely got the ball to grip and turn. So we, uh, and given the way Celia has bowled on this particular wicket, who is a finger spinner, he got the ball to turn appreciably at times. And Mackenzie was definitely going to be a threat. And so far, he has proven to do that with the breakthrough of the big wicket of Joshua Dunn, as we see Bolden making his way to the wicket. Yes, left handed Bolden coming to the crease. So it will be a different task now, a different challenge for Mackenzie. But he does have a googly. And so he's able to turn the ball both ways. So he will pose a challenge to any of the batsmen, whether top order, low order, whether right or left hander. And uh, as long as he's able to, to bowl a good line and length, like spinners, you know, it's not the easiest art to perfect. And they can make runs from time to time, but they're an attacking option when you need the wickets. That's where you need to turn. So that's a wicket there, a very important wicket for the Leeward Islands. The wicket of Dawn, who um, you know gets the scoreboard moving along when he's at the wicket. And of course, can play a very long innings as well, as we have seen from him in the past. So that's a very big wicket. As Dawn, you could probably say that he's the talisman of the Barbados batting. It's a very good breakthrough there for the Leeward Island team. That partnership was getting worrying. We mentioned how well both batters were able to manipulate the field and get the singles and, and twos and putting away the bad balls to the boundary. So getting that breakthrough would definitely help the progress of the Barbadian team. Neymar Bolden, another aggress aggressive player. So when we look at the Barbadian top of um, Alanson, we have Achilles Brown, who is more circumspect. He's tend to, he tends to bat long and just glue the innings together while the other, the other players, Bolden, Dawn and Braffitt, these are more stroke players. So it's good that Achilles Brown is still there to just hold the innings together and play around these other stroke makers. So Mackenzie, you will be continuing. There's a leg slip in place, there's a slip, no short leg, which I find quite curious. But he comes in now to bowl to Bowland for his first delivery. This one is short. He's pulling it. It's away to the boundary for four. That was a short delivery. Error made there by, by Mackenzie dropping that one too short. And Bowland seizing upon the opportunity. His very first delivery pulled it away for four. Yes, he's a batsman with attacking intent. Neymar Bowland. He loves the sweep shot as well. I think we'll see that at some point in this innings if he stays there for any extended period of time. But that was really a gift from Mackenzie. Shot turning into Bowden. No man there in front of square on the left side. And it was an easy shot in the end to get off the mark there from Bowden. So let's see what Mackenzie's response is. They have pushed back the mid wicket deep on the boundary and also the long arm now goes back. So Boland can now just tuck it on the leg side for one. The 
this one is the googly bites and turns away from him that's a bit of reactive captaincy there from um, Boeing Tucket. Still a new man to the crease. I think the bowler there should have just been disappointed with the fact that he presented that scoring opportunity. But maybe at least keep the, 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 the long on to mid on position. I do agree with you. And when you have captain in a leg spinner, you have to know that from time to time they may drop one or two short and they might be pulled away. But it doesn't mean that you back off of your plan because at the end of the day, you want them to get your wickets. Yeah, I could tell you a little interesting story. Well, it might not be that interesting, but it's a true story. I remember watching Australia, the great Australian team, late 90s, early 2000s. And one of the things that you always recognize with them, they played West Indies. And there were always gaps in the field, except behind the wicket. So they would pack four and five slips and gullies and everything. And they'd keep pitching up. And you'll hit a lovely 30 or 40, hitting boundaries. But once you edge, that's the end of you. And, and that's something that I think that, um, that our cricket has to bear in mind as we move forward here in the Caribbean. You have to be thinking of dismissing people in white ball cricket. And now, well, I should say in red ball cricket, and now in white ball cricket as well. Because once you don't get wickets, people are going to make the runs, or whatever runs you make. And I think that we need to really be thinking wickets, think wickets, think wickets. You don't just go about the, the business and just go through the motion of being out there on the field. You have to be thinking of how you're going to get somebody out. And for the rare moments of the game when you think defensively, think long and hard about how you're going to prevent them from scoring or to limit them if you want them to get singles or so maybe at the death or, or as the case may be. So I think that the mindset, I think our mindset has to, to be a little bit different. Agreed. As we see the start of another over Lander Fort on that occasion, just straying on the line of the leg stump and there was Brown as he has done throughout this inning, just walking it behind square for a single. And I think that's something that we, we spoke about earlier in terms of the captain here, the Leeward Islands captain. How is he actually trying to get a wicket? At times we have seen some strange field positions but i just think if you have your premier bowler in operation you just need to give him as much cover as possible as much opportunities to get a wicket agreed this one beaten outside the arse stump is bold then and, uh, throw a mark at the stumps by bowing tuck it and just to continue on that i could give you a good case mitchell johnson Early in his career, I remember even when he, he, there was a song about him in the ashes, about his bowling it there and here and all of that. Mitchell Jones in the early part of his career didn't have a lot of control. But he was still getting wickets. Why? Because they were always attacking fields. So when you made the mistake, you will be out. The same Mitchell Jones, if you were playing for a team that had a more defensive mindset and with more defensive field placing, he would have had several games of none for 100 and would have been out of cricket a long time ago before he settled in and, and became a better bowler towards the end of his career. Definitely. Uh, as we see another single being walked into the leg side from bowling. I think we had that conversation yesterday that as a batsman you, you make a mistake once and that is it. But bowler, he's, <laughs> he's given a bit more free freedom really. He can bowl a couple of bad deliveries, a couple of bad overs, but then whenever he gets it right, then he definitely can be someone a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, so I think we need to support our bowlers a bit more. Don't think that they get that support in terms of um, strategy and field placement and so on that they should. And also the bowler themselves need to have that type of mindset. I think we are going on the defensive too early in some of these situations when you look at the teams. And I mean, I'm just speaking about the lower levels uh, in terms of the youth cricket here that we are talking about, but even at higher levels. You know, as soon as there's a boundary hit, then somebody goes back or something like that. You know, there's an immediate defensive mindset. And something that we have to bear in mind. Well, there's actually a change in feel, Alanson. You see Michael Graves um, coming into a short leg position. We've actually called for that short leg position bit earlier so maybe they are hearing us maybe Boeing Tucket is mic'd up on the field <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe maybe he is as Landerford comes in again to bowl to Brown this one is down the leg side good work there by 
skip our boy in talk it prevents it from going for any extras and he buys of course buys with a crew to his name as a wicket keeper so all part of you know keeping your statistics in good in good order Yes, he has had a very good day behind his thumbs. A very good match, actually, behind his thumbs. In the first innings, he affected seven catches. And has really made some vital saves. Dive into his right, dive into his left. Even in this innings, the dismissal of Brathwaite. He had to dive to his right and take a, a superb catch, really. So he'll be confident in terms of his personal performance with the gloves. That's very true. As Landefu comes in now to Brown, full delivery. Almost getting through the defenses there. Brown jamming down on it at the last moment. Not a good over there from Landefort. Comes to an end. That's a good in over indeed from him. Two runs coming from that one. Barbados, they are 70 for the loss of two. 20 overs completed. Brown, he's there still on 23. And Bolen has just joined him. He's on five. That's a run rate of 3.33, which is... For any of the innings in this game so far, they're definitely the highest. But we know why. Of course, the pitch has flattened out just a bit. Um, dried out from all the moisture it had yesterday and maybe earlier this morning. So batting has become a little bit easier. Not still <laughs> the easiest of pitches by any means to bat on. Still has um, considerable turn and bounce for the spinners. Albeit at times slow enough that you can adjust. Mackenzie will continue to bowl and still with the field very widespread on the leg side not in agreement with this particular move but let's see how it goes this one is going down the leg side loud appeal but he's getting the ball to turn considerably there should he then aim for a line that is further outside the Austin yes I was just about to mention that with the exaggerated turn he's getting at this point in time just need to start these deliveries a bit wide off the off stump and see if he's able to extract that same amount of purchase. Another change in the field once again from the captain. Moving that man from leg slip out to a square leg position. Change in personnel as well. The leg slip goes to slip. The individual and the, the, the slip goes to square leg like in the form of Walsh. This one is a flatter delivery, faster. Bowling comes forward and covers up. And maybe that's about the pace that you need to be at on this wicket. We saw Seeley, he was bowling quite quickly as well. So that there's not enough time to adjust to the turn. This one is a bit too short. Pulled to the man at deep mid-wicket. Should only be one. That's all they will get. Yes, just jagging that delivery down there, um, Mackenzie. And Bolden, we have seen that he's prepared to go back on his back foot and pull anything over the, in that mid-wicket region. 71 for the loss of two. Mackenzie bowling to the right hand on this occasion. Brown, there's a deep mid wicket, mid on, mid wicket, square leg. Man at slip. There was a sweeper cover who comes in now to the cover position, and there's a long off backward point extra cover. The cover is about two thirds of the way back to the boundary as he goes in now. Flat to delivery, straight. And jams down on it, does Brown, keeps it out. There's no run. Sprung there, maybe should have been forward to that delivery. Yes, caught on the back foot there. Luckily for him, got a bit of bat on it. This one is quick again, flat. Pushed out to the man at middle kit. Amori, there's no run. Amory, sorry.
this one is down the left side. It was the googly. Started it a bit too straight. That's the end of the over. And at the end of the over, it is 71 for two. Yes, one run coming from that over. A um, bit of inconsistencies in terms of his line. But clearly there's some assistance there for the leg spinner. Just needs to find his, his correct line, his correct length, the correct pace as well to which um, he should be bowling. Um, the Barbadian batsmen continue to just try and build a partnership, having lost Joshua Dawn recently. Both of these batsmen will look to pile on the runs here this afternoon and maybe effectively bat Leeward Islands out of this game. change at the Beckway end. Amory being brought into the attack from that end. Replaces Landefort. This one is cut. Misfeel it there by Cornwall. One as a sub. And Bolin is able to get away from the strike. He's now off strike. Sure, that wouldn't be pleasing to the bowler who would have wanted to continue a bit longer to the left hander. But Amy would be hoping that he can produce a better spell coming from the backway end. He really struggled from this command box end in his previous spell. Bowl a bit too short, a bit too quickly as well. This one is wide on the left side. Will challenge the Bongbi. We'll cut it off. Will Mackenzie? They will. You can keep them to two. So that was a delivery down the left side, short, badly lined. And really, he was lucky to only get away with two runs there, Amory. It's once again a badly lined delivery there from Amory. Starting on the line of the middle stump, turning on down the left side. And Brown just managed to get it past him on that short fine leg for two. Amy again to Brown. This one is on the off stump. He defends. Kills it right on the pitch in front of him. There's no run. Amy again into Brown. This one is shorter. Bit of bounce, but compactly defended there by Brown. Just outside the off stump. There's no run. This one is flatter and quicker. Brown defends at the last minute. Really wasn't far forward on that occasion. And probably should have been stretched out on his front foot. All is well that ends well for him as he faces up again. This one is on the leg stump, turned for a single. And again, I think that is where Amory has struggled. He has bowled a bit too straight. He's getting the ball to turn, but he's bowling a bit too much within the stumps. If he's going to get that turn, he has to start it outside the off stump so that when it turns in, then it will be threatening the stumps. So at this point, we'll have a drinks break. At the end of the over, it is now Barbados 75 for two. They are exactly 53 runs ahead of the Leeward Islands. And we'll take a short break and come back when we have the resumption.
Yes, welcome back to the Arnesville playing field where we have the Leeward Islands on the 19 team taking on the Barbados on the 19 team in the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars competition. We are on the second day here at the just resuming from the water break, the post tea water break. And uh, the Leeward Islands team there in the field, they were dismissed earlier in the day for 123 in reply to Barbados 101. <coughs> So they had a lead of 22, and Barbados in their second innings are 75 for two. I'm a Lanson Crookshank, and with me here now in the con com commentary box is Stanley Gunny Hines. Good <coughs> afternoon, S Stanley. Yes, good afternoon to you, uh, Madison. Game nicely poised. Bowlers have to work much harder in this innings than uh, previously. Pitch dry out beautifully. The question is sitting down there and bat and bat against. Uh, most of this leg spinner from this to top end McKenzie is definitely getting the ball to turn and bounce. Yes, he has looked threatening. Hasn't really settled into a perfect line and length as yet, but definitely has posed some problems for the batsman as he continues to brown. This one's turned away from him, just outside the off stump. Still think he's looking to still find his his um, proper line to the left hander. He has looked comfortable against the right hander. As he comes in again to bowl to Brown. This one is down the leg side as he sweeps and then gets a single. As Brown takes the total up by one. Brings Bolden into strike. 76 for two. Mm -hmm. Come to you in a while, Gunny, with this feel. Mm -hmm. To the left hand, if you're in agreement with what you're seeing at this stage of his innings, he's quite new to the crease. Actually, three back on the leg side. So it's a 5 4 feel. But three deep feeling on the leg side as he goes in now to bowl to bowl. Then a little too short, too straight. No run taken. Yes, I was commenting on his line, and I think he's bowling too straight to bowl. And because when the ball turns in, then it's missing the leg stump uh, by some way. He has a bit of a problem, you know, because uh, right hand left hand combination. And, uh, Lacking the experience of the senior bowl, he's going to have his problems. But certainly need to bowl a more consistent line to whichever one he's bowling to. That's the line. This one is a little short and he punches it off the back foot. But that's the area that he should be to the left hander. Maybe just a, 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 a slightly fuller. But yeah, that's but the line. Best to keep the left hander there yeah. for the run in the way over. Rather than a single and then he has to change back for the, a different line to the right hander. This one is too full and it's swept behind square. Will challenge the boundary. Gets there now. That's four runs. That's a good shot from Bowling. Too full there from Mackenzie. And uh, given the treatment by Bowling, it's a good sweep shot. Yes, a very good sweep shot there. Pitch outside leg and he really played it beautifully to the fence for four. But as I said, his problem at his young age, probably about 17, 18, whatever his age, he will learn his trade if he intends to improve his craft because with a right hand left hand combination and singles are being taken rotation the strike, it will pose problem for him. It do pose problem for most senior players, palace to him. It's black spin of course, not the easiest of arts to perfect. In <coughs> fact, most people will say that is the hardest thing to perfect in cricket. One of the harder trades to the game. Leg spin is not easy, but it's control is the key word. So ball up to he's facing Mackenzie, he's coming in now. That's a good delivery that time. Good line, a good length. <coughs> Defense. That's the end of the over. At the end of the over, it's now 80 for two. The Barbados on the 19 team. Yes, uh, 
Lex Spinner has his problems. It's a question of trying to have it sorted out properly. But <laughs> as I said before, he, is, he will try and restrict the rotation so he'll be able to bowl at the right hand five, six deliveries or the left hand five, six deliveries rather than two to the left hand, one to the right hand, back to the left hand. It definitely create problem because even the great late Shane Warren has his problem with um, right hand, left hand combination. That is why if I remember distinctly, once he got a right hand in, he would pressure you to stay at that at end when he will continue to exploit his craft. Yes, and part of that will be the <coughs> field placement because yeah. I think there are lots of gaps in the field and so it's easy now for the, the, the batsman and strike to get off strike. I think they should close in thin and just a little bit, force them to take a bit more risks, especially against the leg spinner because with the turn, there's always a chance and the extra bounce, there's always a chance that you, you may have some error from the batsman. You and I have seen it for the day, some very strange decisions taking taken place out there. You have seen it. Emery to continue, he's bowling to Brown. This one is straight, turns again, bounces, but again, going down the leg side, so doesn't threaten him really. Just elects to lift his hands and keep them out of the way, and his bat. And Not a matter criticizing, a matter saying, how come, you know, A or B or C? Or why? Because, for instance, Langer Ford should definitely be being at the bottom end at all times, having first innings did so well, and then it, everything went the complete reverse in this innings. Again on the leg stump. As I said, he's starting it a bit too straight with the turn. So that he's getting, he should really be trying to pitch those maybe on the fourth stump line or even fifth stump. I think he should be bowling and trying to aim for that fifth stump line and force him to cut, which will bring everything right in the picture. That's the line, that's but it's a bit line. too full. That's it. Driven that's the line. off the front foot. Edward should pull it back just before the boundary. He does so. And they'll have time for three. And the throw comes in now. Three runs taken. Yeah, the line was a good line. It's just that it was too full. We keep that fifth stump line and force him to pitch with the outside of the ball, turning back. It definitely increases chances of this missile. But with, again, the strain all over the place and not the right line, you have these problems. We saw from the off spinner, uh, Warrell for Barbados earlier that he maintained that line outside the off stump to the right hand and he was able to, to threaten from that line and in fact was able to bowl a, um, a couple of batsmen between the gate looking to drive. And so Amory could make that adjustment. This one is wide, cut. Straight to the man at extra cover. As an off spinner, I will be bowling on the opposite side of the pitch, which is over the wicket, and aim for wrong that off stump, forcing him to play, let him see the ball at a different angle. So it definitely will bring into play the first and second slip. And this one is cut to the man at point. There is no run. That's the end of the over. At the end of the over, it's 83 for two. Yeah, and Bobby, that's trying their best to. Uh, score as much runs as possible with, without any risk per se because uh, uh, 61 to the good they, they recognize they'll have to bat for the rest of the afternoon for a, a, a good bit into tomorrow to ensure that they are safe in this game uh, once there's a draw you know they clearly to the final because if the Leewards is to come back and they dismiss quickly and Leewards win well anything goes Yes, there's a possibility of all three results from this point still. Yes, yeah, still, definitely. Uh, but it's a question of Barbies can close it out by batting properly. Yes, and I would say even a fourth result, which is a tie. <laughs> you never know. It's rare, but it can happen. That's strange thing that happening in this world today. Anything goes. But again, the field plays in. You look at the field plays in here. You are inviting them to take a single, you know, on the arm side. Yeah, all over. <coughs> yeah, man. It is edging and he's dropped that first slip. Dropped there by it looks like Graves. <coughs> oh my, and that will 
you know, drop the heads a little bit because there he was, he bowled that one to his heel. He got it to pitch in that good area just outside off stump and it turned, found the edge and it went down. At this level, these catches are to be taken, but we are seeing a number of catches um, that have fallen since yesterday morning. And uh, even we're making a bit of a fun out of it about the improvement of the eyesight and all this type of thing. But certainly there's a lot, a lot of catches being dropped. And Dexter asked the question, why so many catches are being spilled? Why? One theory is that you do the same thing two, three million times and it will become a, uh, the perfect person. I said, no, it's far more than that. Yes, it will become a habit by practicing two, three million times, but you still have to have other things to go with it. Mackenzie this time, it's a googly oh man, appeal, on. but pitching outside the leg stump. So <coughs> although it was threatening the stumps with the turn away, it was not, well, should not be given out to LBW because yeah, it's pitch pitch pitching outside, outside leg. leg. Going across mm -hmm. Once it's pitched outside leg, that's it. Forget about the appeal. Just a bit of enthusiasm and exuberance of youth from the young man. This one is full. It's uppishly, but not all the way out to the man at <coughs> middle. It falls just short of him. Single is taken. He has already seen a catch go down off him in the over, and so I guess with that one strike in the pad, he was probably just desperate to get a wicket. Brings Brown back into strike, but again, you mentioned this rotation of strike, and with the gaps that are there, you know, it, it makes it a bit easier. Look at where the point man is. I'm not too sure what he's doing at the point there in the cover. He's neither in nor out. He's not saving the single or saving the boundary. I'm not too sure why he's in that position. As I said, um, Alison, they're just making decisions far different than how we know it as the older folks. You just have to live with it because you're not going to get them to change anything. But basics remain basics. As Mackenzie comes in now to bowl to bowl and sweeping. This one, let's wait for the signal from the umpire. It will get close to the boundary. They should cross for two. They do so now. Let's wait to see if there's any signal. Buys, signal by umpire Rajkuma. Buys, so two buys to the total. No extras. Takes the score up to. 88 for 2. In the 25th over. Yes. Oh my, and that one appealed down the leg side. May have come off the pad, but loud appeal. Or something. Yes, loud appeal there, but no interest shown by the umpire. And in the end, it was stifled once they realized that they were not getting what they wanted. Yes, so uh, and uh, well, Barbados continued to cruise in terms of building the lead, building the lead. And the longer they can bat, it's far better for them in light of the fact that they position themselves not to lose this game outright. But uh, we must comment on the pitch. The pitch has eased considerably. Uh, yes, um, like Spain is getting the ball to turn and bounce, but it's slow. And uh, because of the left and right hand combination, he's finding it difficult to hold a consistent line. But as I go back to the field placing, I believe if he has a 6 3 with more on the offside and pitches outside the left hand with his off stump, you're forcing him to go across the line, which will increase your chances of a dismissal. But you're bowling into his strengths, which is the leg side. And all he needs to do is to come back and tuck it around or sweep or something and this sort makes life easier for him. But as I said, they're seeing things different to us. Well, he also has a googly. Well, which, okay. Which, which, which should definitely which should, which he should use. Yeah, he should, yeah. should use as well. So as you get the left-hander to turn, he's looking to turn to the on side. He may get a few. And you keep the googly hidden for about a couple of overs, then you, you spring it on him. See if you'll get him to go across the line. This one, Brown was looking to turn it on the on side. 
wasn't able to do so successfully goes back to the bowler. I am certain that the restrictions in terms of free placing doesn't apply to this really format. I am certain of that. So you can easily yeah. drag another individual over and make it a 6 3. Emphasis on the leg side. This one is allowed appeal. No, man, not, not out. out. Not out. Outside Seem to be outside off, yes. Outside off stamp. And he yeah. was playing a shot. Exactly. Like on the previous um, occasion. That's what I'm saying. If there's a 6-3 with the emphasis on the leg side, because you can do it. There's no restriction. It's not 20-20, 10-10. I thought you can definitely bowl on his legs and it will increase his chances. But with this split field here, 5-4. This one defeats the keeper, goes down the leg side again. As we have been saying, the line from... Amory has been a bit too straight. He has a 5-0 feel, which should encourage him to not be afraid to go on that fifth stump, as we mentioned before. But even with the 5-0 feel, um, he is consistently pitching straight, and once it turns, it goes down the leg side. Yes, we see the problem is the field placing. If you bowl on one side, and let the batsman make the error. That's the line, but just a bit too full. Exactly, that is the line we're speaking about. That line, but uh, with with three on the off, with four, three on the off side, not four, three. It will look for you will be thinking to go through there more regularly and increase your chances. They can go right through the gate, trying to play that shot and go between back and pad, and you'll hear his timber rattle at the back. That's a better line as well. That is the line. Well, almost every time he pitches out there, he looks more threatening. So I, don't, I should take a cue from that. And remain out there. Just keep away from the half volley as he comes in again to bowl to Brown. Does Amory. This time it's... Oh, and it's dropped again. Graves again. Oh, my. Not a bad part opportunity goes down. Hmm. When it's not your day, it's not your day, my brother. Because this was his second or third time for the afternoon. He's dropped it He's dropped one since I've been here. I was upstairs a while ago. He dropped one at slip, I think. It was. Slip. But these things do happen to us, all of us, are from time to time. Yeah. The best of us do drop catches. But as I said before, there are too many catches being dropped. Too many. Real reason, main reasons, I really don't know. We tried to make a joke over there today to enjoy some good calories, uh, some crab, some ca carrots, and so on to increase your. Uh, strength of the eyesight and um, other things that needs to be done there's a lot a lot how many probably about about a dozen and a half catches dropped already in this game a lot of catches has been spilled interestingly he remains at slip which i don't think may not necessarily be the best thing because if your confidence is low you have dropped a few catches and maybe that you need to you know go in the outfield and, and take an easier one and get back your confidence because the ones that will come at slip are not going to be easy as this full toss is so away for four by bowling he has played the sweep shot quite eff efficiently he's placing his placing it well badly lined given the treatment they deserve and I actually saw him gesticulating with one hand to the field. There's no way he can stop it. No. There's no way he can set a, a field for a... Yeah, that's a, a full toss down the next side. Toss. He's fortunate not to go in the arm double decker. So he, what he needs to do is settle himself and bowl outside the off stump at all times. Regardless of what this may hand, actually be a better angle for better him. Better angle. And he's quite ready to see it. He has a Google which means he has to play. They are the ones out there. They are the ones who are to be thinking about what should be done. Sweeps it down to the man on that long. But he's bowling a bit too straight, though. Um, that's a no ball signaled by the umpire. Again, again, as, I'm, as I said with Amy, both spinners have not taken into account the turn that they're getting. So, you as a, the leg spinner, you turn it into the to the left hander. You have to start a little bit more outside the off stump. The right hander bowling to the, the uh, right arm off spinner bowling to the right hander. Same thing. You have to start a little bit more outside the off stump because do the pitch is turning. Do they have the knowledge about that? 
This one turns but keeps low. Defended there by Brown. The knowledge of the game. Do they possess it? I'm not in a position to answer. Know. I don't know. I'm just asking a rhetorical question. Just yesterday we had a discussion upstairs. You know, very similar discussion. Mackenzie again to Brown. This one is the googly. Doesn't pick it. But pitch maybe just a little bit too wide of our stump. Need to ball that Google again on the same line and then come at the leg break. We ha will have to play. We never know which way it's going to turn. He's definitely getting the ball to turn, the but the ball is turning his big both ways. It's yeah, just his the control line is yeah. the problem. Yeah. He's looking to settle himself. You see what I mean? Because he's waiting with the Google. He's looking to settle himself, and the bowler should capitalize on, 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 on that weakness of his. His concerns about this, these googlies. I don't think any of them have picked the googly just yet. That he's bowling. Mm -hmm. This one is flat and straight. The thing with it, um, when they come to spin bowling, I can tell it's consistency is the word. Especially when a slow bowler. You have to consistently be able to bowl in that particular line all the while and force the batman to think. Use of the crease, all that is vital. Vital. This one is fuller, driven to the man at cover. Who, because he's so deep, is always giving away a single. And we bring in the left hand to bat the rotation. So he, will, he has his problem. The yeah. skipper and the bowler has to work in tandem. So you know exactly which line I'm aiming at and ask the skipper to give it that type of feel. So that he is in sync with you and you know exactly what you're doing. I remember years ago, uh, sometimes in my own little way of life, I may have wanted a particular feel. And the skipper at the time may say, okay, I'll give you. The moment I am not bowling to that line. This one is full again, looking for the sweep taken by the keeper. But that line is fraught with a lot of danger. That's down the leg side. Yes, Any I touch on that would have been full. I do not bowl to the line that the skipper wanted me to bowl. He will call me nice and say, look, Heinz, this is the line. Let us revert and we will set the field accordingly. But you're walking hand in hand in sync. You know exactly what it's all about. You're not really seeing that here. And that, that was another badly line delivery. It's outside leg stump. And as again, it's because of the rotation that's creating his problem. A young man, he will have his problems. But this is where the coaches come into play. Because at the end of it all, I believe what he needs to do, the coach, is to ask the players tonight, what have they learned today from today's play? Key question in a team meeting. And you're the ones with your book, your technology, whatever, and point out to the youngsters, you know, the, weak, the weaknesses. This one is down the next side again. Again, too straight, as too we straight, mentioned. Too straight. Should be outside the arm stump. Bowl at attacking line. He will bring the short leg more into play as well because they don't have to play once it's that straight and turning back into them. Right, and I believe they should have a straighter. Just what this just the position I was going to say, they need to have a straighter mid on. That's a better line. Just a sh smidge on to full on that occasion. Amory comes back into Brown. That's a good delivery. But well played by Brown. Gets forward and smothers a spin. It's a good line as well, but just slightly too full. But that's the line that he needs to be in. That's maybe a fifth stump thereabouts. Or uh, even slightly wider. This is getting the ball to turn back into the right hand. Eh? This one is down the left side. Looks like a top edge by the batsman. Should be time for two. 
again that inconsistency Alison. outside leg stump when he should be in bowling similar to the previous three previous deliveries on the proper line just outside that house stump straight again and Bobby just continue to build on what is uh, already there and uh, create more problems for the day with the end but certainly um, Brown and uh, Bolden uh, capitalize on this uh, a wayward bowling from the leewards. Yes, at the end that he's bowling, which should actually help him to get the ball outside of stump. With the wind, this one turns again. Down the next side again. We wait for the signal from the umpire. Buys. So that's how much it turned. It almost turned all the way to leg slip, and you're still starting it straight. Have to get it outside the off oh, Exactly. But they're the ones at this stage at international cricket. You're seeing individuals their ages, ages, playing test cricket, playing 50 over cricket, playing whatever cricket. And uh, one gets the impression their level of knowledge is far greater than what you're seeing here. And this is part of the Caribbean. You see that uh, Cricket West Indies problem. How are you going to get the players to improve their knowledge base? about cricket that basically what it's about you know that you could you will only improve so when next you go there you realize hey look this is what i ought to be doing more consistently as i said to you before coach or coach will be asking what did we all learn today after today's play in a team meeting are they doing it i am not there i don't know but that, that should be the operative question don't no, say so you tell them what to do. Demonstrate to them exactly what to do. Kenzie to continue. This one turns, but covered there by Brown on the back foot. Pushes to the man at short mid wicket, Nathan it, it Edwards. Isn't, it isn't everybody who listens and it isn't everybody who hears. But the Bible tells you, he who had ears to hear, let him hear. Again, that's the rotation there. Change. Now bowling it will be on strike. This one was turned just behind square on the on side for a single. Particularly with the leg spin, Alison, from my own experience, you should have him looking up, bowl above the eye, li eye, eye limit, eye, li eye line. So that once he looks up, come on his body, you bring the slip and the belly into play. And he's Tracking both edges, both edges both ways. Totally yeah. Exactly. But a bowl then he's facing up again. And he likes to sweep. That's not a bad delivery that last one, but he likes to sweep. So he has to be mindful of going down the leg side because it's almost a free hit for him. It's a free hit once he goes anything around the middle, middle and leg and outside leg is a free hit. That's the line she bowling outside the arse stamp and force him to come and drive. Too long, mid on, long on. That's a better delivery. In terms of the line, because mm -hmm. he will always be looking for that sweep. It he seems to be a for that. The ball is turning. Jacob from our position, he's still in his position. Clearly out there next time. No less than that. Yeah, well that's a better place to be bowling. He was, has been a bit too straight, as we mentioned, but that's not a bad delivery, that last one. It's called what, 100? Hundred and one for two. That's a better era. But that's that's there or thereabouts. That's where I think he, he needs to be. Maybe slightly fuller so that he could threaten the outside edge as well. Because from that length he has enough time to see which way it is going. It's easy again to bowl to bowl then. This one back foot on the back foot punching for a single just wide of mid off gets it and that's the end of the over the end of the over it's a hundred and two for two yes in this over we saw the um Bobby the second innings um passed the three figure mark they are now 102 for two with a lead of 80 and slowly but surely building with another not 35 minutes they're about to play so needs to push this up to probably about 120 which will um, sort of kill off the game for the leewards because if, if they had to route them tomorrow they would have this lead and they can build it and with the way the pitch is playing I do not expect any real route 
uh, especially with these two bowlers, the off spin and the leg spin. They're not really bowling that consistent and to create the pressure. Yeah, that we saw from Seeley, for example. He was very consistent. He's very consistent. That is and he was able to... Figures for six for what? Six for 31. Yeah. This one is outside the off stump, left alone by bowling. Throwing away. I think they're bowling a bit too fast, too. Now they take his right out. They're bowling a bit too quickly. Flat his trajectory. You need to f allow them to look up, as we tend to say in local cricket parlance. This one looking for the sweep, gets it behind square. We'll go into the boundary for four. That's a very good shot by Bolin. For the opt-in time, he has played the sweep shot. And he continues to do so effectively and well. It's a favorite shot of his and another sweep shot for four. Yes, um, and he, he sweep is one of his favorite shots. And they're bowling to his strength. And he is uh, making MP. Because once he connects properly, the ball tends to go over the rope. So they need to move that line to off stump, both off spinner and leg spinner. Where is Nesbitt in all this? Bowled very well in the first. Yes, the pitch was assisting, but sometimes you have to change it up a little bit. And especially when things are not going the way you expect it. And more so with the two bowlers not really bowling that consistent line. Try to slow down the run rate. This one is off the edge. Much better, much, much better line. It should be two runs. Yes, they get the two. That was a flatter one, but it was coming in to hone in on the off stump. That is exactly what we keep saying. Consistency, need to bowl that, lo those deliveries more regularly to create that problem rather than going in the legs. And you want to go in the legs. It's a, it's a free hit, basically. It's four runs. Uh, bowl then not making a mistake. So he's punching it back to the man at extra cover bowling. And because it's not a fast wicket by any means, the slip feelers need to be mindful that they, they crouch and don't get up a bit too early. You almost have to be thinking as if you're a keeper because the pitch is not very quick. So the edges will tend to go down instead of um, flying up. Amory continues to bowl in, who has really taken out the broom here to the spinners. Has been sweeping on them all over the place. Maybe he sees some dust somewhere on the pitch, but he has been sweeping well. And he gets another single. Actually, he gets two. That delivery. And he rolls on to how many Yankees? And Brown, wow. Brown has been the sheet anchor, so to speak, from the start of the innings. But no one really realizing what the pitch would do, how it would behave in the second innings here. And um, Brown decided, I will dro drop anchor, and uh, you all bat around me, and let's see how it goes, because Bolden is on 26. Uh, Brown himself is on 26, as Barbados uh, rolls down to 110 for the loss of two, and really building uh, this lead here. And we'll see exactly with a slight pause here for uh, the water break, a little water break for the two batsmen. We'll see exactly how it goes. But certainly, Barbados are quite comfortable at this point in time, at, at this stage of the afternoon, coming up to just about 4.30. They'll be hoping that both Bolden and Brown will remain overnight, uh, battle the rest of the afternoon, as I said before, extend the lead probably to up to about 120, 130 there about uh, with the time remain. We'll see exactly what's happening because, as again, I keep saying it all the while, the, the bowlers are not as consistent as they are to with a particular line. They're spraying the ball left, leg side, off side, with the left and right hand combination. They have not been able to control themselves to keep a put one of the batsmen with an entire over, whether it's the right hander or the left hander. And it's creating problems as they take away quite comfortably.
Yes, um, Tianik Honor is in Ebola, left arm orthodox. He'll be looking to mirror the performance of Nathan Seeley from this end. He produced a, a brilliant spell of bowling all year. Got figures of six for 31. So change, a change was definitely needed. I think both the bowlers were really leaking runs, never really found their lines consistently. And as a result, the captain, Bowen Tuckett, he's forced to make a change at this commentary box end. Not that they were bowling badly, it's just the line was the problem because they were leaking the runs and they were leaking the singles and that made it diffi even more difficult for themselves. So the shot and there goes bowling. He's punching this one down to the man there at long on. Cornwall for a single. So he has managed to score relatively freely bowling. Mention it when he, he, he got to the wicket. He's a, a free scoring batter and uh, as you just recently mentioned, Brown just holding the fort really. Bit of torn there on that last delivery from Monori. If my memory serves me right, this is probably the longest he's batted in the tournament as a put in, in Brown himself. Well, I think he got a 50 in his last innings. I'm not too sure how long he would have batted in he's that innings. He's batting here for a fairly long time. You know, without really. He's batting within his limitations. Bit of tone again from the finger spinner, so definitely getting the ball to tone here. The spinners, maybe a better option would be to come around the wicket and challenge both of the edges of the bat right handed batsman. And that was some sharp tone that delivery a while ago. He needs to pay attention to what has just happened to the previous delivery and try to understand what next is to be done. This one is beating the right handed brown again outside the off stump. So, a good first over there from Monori. And uh, Barbados, they're 112 in their second innings. Brown, he's there on 37. Bolden, he's there on 27. They lead by 90 runs. Yes, and certainly, uh, that is a good over there from this the top in here. Certainly, one spun slowly, but spun right across the batsman. And he caught him by surprise. And uh, it's interesting to see if you'll be able to bowl that tight line, as you said, a la Seeley and create problems, hopefully, at least to pick up a wicket tonight and break this partnership. Yes, this partnership are growing slowly. I think that's the thing with the Barbadian Indians so far. They've managed to forge a couple of partnerships along the way. Maybe not huge partnerships, as this one is played officially by Bolden. Out to the man there at cover. There's no run. So there's two slips. I'm on a backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off, mid on. A short leg, I'm on that deep square leg. For Amory, as Amory is flighting this delivery. Well played there by Bolden, coming forward, choking it out to Onori there in the covers. It's Amory into his 10th over, figures of none for 36. So not his usual self in terms of being economical, and he hasn't been able to get the breakthrough. The right and left hand combination, the lack of consistency, the way he has leaked some runs, he's saying that it's too, it's too regular. Balls again, and he's sweeping this one. And that one is heading down the leg side with the angle. I think the good thing from Bowden is that he has swept based on the line of these deliveries. Anything just on middle stump heading down the left side is basically a free a free hit as our fellow commentator Alan Soda have alluded to earlier. As this one is beating him outside the off stump. That one a bit slower. Something that we have been calling for from uh, Amori um, earlier in his spell. So there's definitely some help there for the bowlers. The, the, the slow bowlers here on show. It's just about stringing these deliveries together. On the right lines and on the right lines. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Keep the ball above the eye line and ask the batsman to look up a ball a little slower. This one is leaving it outside the off stump. Well played. So, a maiden over there from Emery <coughs> and Bobby does the remain on 112 for the loss of two. C certainly the best over we have seen from Emery because he had one 
uh, uh, one of the batsmen to bowl at, which is the left hander, and he kept up uh, an immaculate line, immaculate length, and uh, certainly they wanted one of the better overs because had they got the single, he would then have to bowl to the right hand, and this way he's strong. So that was probably his best over the years bowl in relation to the line, as they try their best to effect, as far as they're concerned, a much needed breakthrough. Much needed indeed. It's going to be Onori into his second over. Two runs coming from his first. We'll be continuing to Achilles Brown. Man has been there for 98 deliveries. So he has seen it all really. Mm. So one again, a bit of tone, but keeping low as well. Some inconsistent bongs creeping into this this wicket. And late on the second day here. Sec, uh, for uh, into a second over, he seemingly, I get the impression he seemed to be the man who will break the partnership with what is happening off the pitch. This time he's going back, is brown, tends to put the spinners off the back foot, but reluctant to come forward based on what we have seen so far. So there's a man at slip, a man at short cover. There's a man at backward point. There's an extra cover. There's a man there, um, maybe three quarters of the way back to the boundary on the cover boundary. A man at mid wicket as well and deep square leg. I think that man at that man three quarters of the way back really is 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 an interesting position, Gunny. Don't think he's there to save a boundary as such because it's a big side of the ground and the the outfield is kind of heavier on that side and he's definitely not saving a single there especially to the right hander uh, i just think he can maybe come closer into the circle I yes i agree with you and that man on the sort of a sweeper position um wasted um position because once he plays it to him in the deep it's a comfortable single it's now the left hand and strike he goes back to a square leg position as this one is heading down the leg side once again i think with the amount of tone that these these spinners are getting, I think the umpires will be reluctant to give any LBW decision unless it's really a full delivery. Yeah, but I do but not think they're really utilizing what the, the, the poachers off the pitch. They're not being consistent because if they do that, they certainly will break the partnership. It's a short delivery. It's punching this one, not timing it well. And back to the bowler. So one run coming from that over from Onori. He's off to a a reasonable start on the Barbadian team in their second innings, 113 for the loss of two, yeah, 33 the, overs completed. Yeah, with a lead of 91. How many overs remaining for the rest of the day? We have to get the check. 44, so we are what, 31 gone, 13 more to go. Is that 33, right? 33 overs completed. Huh? 33 gone and 44 to come, so 11 overs remaining. Wow. So play as the next time with up until 5.30 or whichever one is sooner, 11 overs. <laughs> so, the play will continue, but, uh, but uh, the southern end, 113 for two Barbies in the second inning is a much better batting performance as the pitchers ease tremendously and Leeward Island is not really putting the ball in that right area consistently and uh, allowing the Barbadian batsmen to settle and they're growing in confidence and the longer Brown stays there, the better for the Barbados team because he's the anchor. Whilst um, Bolden is trying to um, get a few runs and l l position himself the way that they, they would be in some le uh, level of strength going into t tomorrow's third day. Yes, this one is down the leg side once again, an attempted sweep shot. A load appeal. I think that's off his pad. As you Suffering see. from cramps. See Brown suffering from a bit of cramp after pl attempting that sweep shot. Yes, he's suffering from some level of cramp. So where do you see Wells your weight and the physio to do whatever it is? Seem to be suffering from cramps or some of sort. Uh, maybe, you know, in the olden days, Woodrow, you know, had um, a Gatorade to drink and uh, all the pain gone. <laughs> uh, well, they have what we call the magic spread these days. Well, yes. <laughs> 
You know, there are so many um, cricketing stories that we can speak about. Playing with a winner Islands team, socks on the wrong foot, taking fencing when there's some problem. All sorts of problems they had there, but really, really wonderful cricketing jokes. But yeah, so where do we see the game heading here? Um, I, I was like, well, at this point in time, I think Barbados will be the happy of the two teams, having dismissed the Leeward Islands early for 123, just conceding a lead of 22 runs. They're now leading by 91 runs with eight second, win second innings wickets still intact. So I think both batters have decreased currently also. They're looking reasonable, comfortable in terms of whatever is being thrown at them. Bowling, as we mentioned, is a free scoring player. And we have Brown. He set out to basically anchor this inning. So I think Barbados would want to go to closer play today, maybe 115, 120 runs ahead, and then reassess tomorrow and pile on the runs all in the morning and give themselves an opportunity to get an outside victory. On the other hand, Leeward Islands, they'll be looking to get wickets. Wickets will definitely be the order of the day for them. Um, that's the only way they're really going to get themselves back into this game. So what would you think that they, they need to do in order to effect a breakthrough? Well, we have seen them employ their spinners primarily in this session. Haven't seen a lot of um, seam bowling option. I heard you mention Nisbet earlier. Maybe a spell from this end, this commentary box end, would not be a bad idea. Just to see what the pitch might be offering to the, the, the seamer. Um, we've seen that there's assistance there for the, the, the spinners, but they haven't been able to take full advantage of that sort of assistance and effect any sort of breakthrough so far. So while the players get uh, some form of refreshments um, owing to that injury to, to Brown, we're going to take a break here as well in the commentary box. And we'll be back with you with live action whenever it resumes.
Yes, I'm um, back here now. The physio has done his work. They had a bit of a refreshment. Uh, the batsman there, Brong, is doing a bit of exercises and everything seems to be okay. And you will continue to face. Yes, Amory. From the southern end. Just one delivery in this over so far. Ball into Brong. Flight of delivery. Playing it out to. The man there at mid wicket coming across prevents the single. So 113 for the loss of two. Into the final hour here of play in this Cricket West Indies Rising Stars Under 19 tournament being played here at Arnesville, wrong number three, between Leeward Islands and Barbados. This one again turning appreciably from the line of the middle stump there, down the leg side. So there's a man at slip, there's a man at short leg, and interestingly, there's a man there at a leg gully or leg slip. I think it's more of a leg slip position. Man at short, fine leg, mid wicket. Which means his attack is on middle and leg. He's driving at that one, straight up back to the bowler. Yes, there's a man at mid on, mid off, cover. But, but that's nice way looking at the square leg. Placing, um, maybe even ask the ball middle, middle and leg, based on the field place and I set. That leg slip in particular. Yes, it's a 6-3 kind of feel. So, what we've been saying is that he's starting most of these deliveries, maybe too straight, really. If he starts them outside the off stump, he can still bring those feeders into play. play. Yeah, but they're not bowling there. He's bowling the ball, which allowing the batsman even to allow it to go by him because he realized the ball is spinning across him outside the leg stump. This one is leaving it alone, but I think it's. It's going to turn past the leg stump, a bit of height as well. But I think there, Brown needs to be careful, not playing a shot on that occasion. And it's the end of that over, 34 was completed. Barbie does in their second innings, they're 113 for the loss of two. Yes, yeah, a very interesting uh, uh, decision with the final delivery. It's I probably believe what's saving is the height, because despite his turning across and the height, struck him above the roll, I think he has to be a bit mindful because you can be out LBW in, in, in the modern way of um, interpretation of LBWs, but he got away with it and uh, he will continue to fight him all day for a bar beta. He's on 20 or 26 and the whole end on 27, 113 for two. Yes, Achilles Brown, he's on 38, while Bolden, he's on 27. As Bolden once again is punching this one nicely down to the man there at long off for another single. Score moves on to 114 for the loss of two. As we see Onori continuing from this commentary box end. So the right hand is now in strike. Brown. There's a slip. Man has short cover. Short cover. He's short and he's pulling this one. Be very disappointed there. Brown. It was a long hop, really. Had the opportunity to hit it basically anywhere on this field. Yes, a loose delivery should have made it come. He would have gotten four, but there's no one down on that side. So Nori once again moves in. This one again is short of a length. Not really bouncing as much as maybe Brown is expecting. Played it out to the man there at extra cover. There's no run. Still, the sun still shining here at the Anna's Way playing, but he's cutting this one straight out to that man we spoke about in the last over. Just a bit deep there at a, a point position, a deep point. Not all the way back onto the, on the boundary, but still can't prevent that single. So another single added to the total, 115 Barbados for the loss of two. As we see him going back to that deep square leg position, there's also a deep mid wicket for the left hander. Short delivery and he's punching this one. Chance for run out and he's he gone. Be. Yes, a good bit of feeling there in the covers from Michael Graves. A short delivery there, and that's definitely maybe the only way that this partnership was going to be broken. Gunny, a good bit of feeling there in the covers. Yeah, but he has redeemed himself, effecting that run out. But certainly, his single was never on. He got a, uh, a very good bounce and picked it up cleanly and returned it. and Bolden was found short of his crease and he's on his way 
So the, the breakthrough has come via the run out route. And I think the Leeward Islands will be very comfortable with that, yes. Maybe open up now for probably based on what the, the, the playing conditions. We was trying to get another wicket tonight. That's three down, maybe four or five tonight. We'll really open up the game totally if they can get another two wickets. But it is a good break, trust me, it was a concern. And the break has assisted the with Islands. Definitely, so bold and he has to go. He made 28 from 43 deliveries, so definitely a good start to his innings. He's scoring at a reasonable rate. He got the scoreboard ticking over, really. He was able to pounce on most of the loose deliveries that were served up to him. That delivery shot of a length outside the off-stump, going back, trying to punch it through the offside. But in the field there, in the covers, Michael Graves, he got a very generous bounce uh, and gathered it and, and got it back into this wicketkeeper. And we've seen Bowen took it very tidy all game, effecting that run out. But on, as net, we never catered for this bowler to break the partnership. Well, anything is possible in cricket, Gunny. As we mentioned, there's something different. Sometimes all you have to do as a captain is try something different. Well, if plan yes, A is not yeah. working, then you need a plan B, a plan C. As Joshua Morris comes in to face the music, the wicket keeper plays this one out to cover. There's well, no run. So well, the breakthrough has come for um, the uh, Leeward Islands. And let's see how they're going to play, with, play it out between now and the close of play. To see if they can look for another two wickets there about. Uh, was the Barbadian batsman. Brung is still there. He's the sheet anchor. He's still there and holding the foot, so to speak, for Barbados. I said we did not cater for this bowler here. The bowler name run out. But we're looking at what they can do in terms of effecting a breakthrough. But it so happened that um, uh, Graves, the man who was uh, dropped two catches earlier, redeemed himself and had a nice throw. Good bounce, a nice throw in, and... Uh, uh, Tuckett made no mistake and sent Bolden back. Bolden, who is the more aggressive of the two batsmen, as Brown continues to play the sheet anchor role. Agreed. As we've seen Amory to continue from that back way end. Just toiled away all day without much success. Amory into his 12th over. There's a man at leg slip, a man at short leg slip and cover mid off mid on mid wicket man at short fine leg and a man at deep mid wicket so definitely more company for a brung around the bat just good to see from the captain boy in tucket trying to exert some sort of pressure as this one is once again starting a bit too straight and turning further down the leg side we have seen quite a bit of that today from Amory. Just been very disappointing from his perspective. The Gold Adams trying to get some momentum here at the back end of this display. Once again, he's allowing that one. Not playing a shot there, um, Brown. He needs to be careful. I think that was closer than the previous attempt. Maybe just heading down the leg side, given what we've seen so far in terms of the tone on this wicket. Maybe if he asks for Hawkeye, he will definitely tell him missing the leg. Umpire's call. <laughs> <laughs> but he definitely needs to be careful, not playing a shot. Sometimes it's give the umpire a bit more leeway to send a decision in the, the bowling team's favor. Umpire's call, not out. Simple. Just flighting this one, Amory. I think the last couple of overs have been a bit better from him in terms of being more consistent. Something we've been calling for from the time this inning started, consistency. Alright, that's it. That's it. That's the line. So none for 36, Amory, his figures. A bit expensive, as we would say, given what we've seen from the other spinners, the likes of Seely. As this one again turning appreciably past the leg stump. So it's the end of another over from Amory. And Barbados in their second innings, they're 115 for the loss of three, a lead of 93 runs. Yes, uh, I think it's a maiden over from uh, the southern end from Amory as the leewards. 
uh, buoyed by that last dismissal by the one or two. It doesn't, doesn't really matter once they've gotten him out. And uh, hopefully we'll be pressing for more success tonight before the end of the day's play. So we'll just wait and see how it goes. One fifteen for three? One fourteen for three? Leader about ninety six thereabout. Ninety five thereabout. So it's it's still wide open, it's a matter of what happened between now and five thirty. It's Honori once again, born into the new batsman. Joshua Morris. Seemed to be a well built man. Can hit the ball a long way, but Maybe something a bit different will be needed in this sort of situation. Just need to get used to the conditions as we see Captain Bowen Tuckett sending back Nathan Edward to the long run boundary. Not to show why, given the fact that Morris has just come to the wicket. As the bowler there just. The batsman, sorry. Just moving away before the delivery was made. So there's a man at slip, man at backward point. Cover, extra cover. A man at short mid wicket, a deep square leg, a long on and a long off. This one is jumping a bit there, a bit of turn as well. So Nori has been able to just extract a bit from this wicket, bowling over the wicket. I'm wondering if at some point he'll think about coming around the wicket, given the turn he has been able to extract so far. This one is short, he's punching it out to that man. He's in a little bit from what from where he was previously. But still a bit deep there. A lot more encouragement being shown to the bowler. As the sun continues to shine here at the honest way, this one is a a job catch based on the reaction of the, the, the wicket keeper and the bowler himself lying on the floor there. Body language seemed to suggest that it was a job catch. So another another job catch um Gunny Hines. We've seen quite a few of those today. And definitely that would have been a, a, a big wicket for Leeward Island's team. He mentioned the need to get wickets. Once again, that delivery turning across the right handed batsman there. Morris coming forward quite tentatively, taking the outside edge, but unfortunately, Bowen took it, can't hold on. As this one is wrapping him on the back foot, I think he would have pitched outside leg. Let's pitch outside leg, man. So I think that's the only saving grace there for Joshua Morris. And thankfully for him, umpire Rajkumar agrees. Pitch out there like suddenly it struck him in front, like where it's pitched. And that is what saved him. Definitely. And it kept low as well. So that is why I was saying if he if he comes around the wicket, then he gives himself a better opportunity to actually get those LBW decisions. And as I was saying earlier, he seemed to be the person who would get a wicket. Seemingly. Very, very near miss. Honori again. Flight in this one, well bold. Morris coming forward and stroking it up to Honori. So an eventful over there from Honori. Um, ends his fourth, none for five so far. And Barbados in their second innings, they're 115 for the loss of three. Yes. A lead of uh, 93 runs. As the, the um, Liberal Island bowlers continue to tighten the screws late on this day to here, trying to see how many wickets they'll be able to uh, take this afternoon. And uh, they're being denied by the the, anch the sheet anchor man, wrong from batting at this northern end, making it life difficult for the team. But he himself has some near misses. One or two miscalculated, le uh, leave alone. Unfortunately for him, umpire rule in his favor. And um, let's see how it goes with him facing once more. But definitely the pressure has been moved from the Leeward Islands onto Barbados despite at 115 for three with a lead of what? 93. For a while there, I thought Amory was actually going to come around the wicket, which I think is a good mode of operation as well, given the, the amount of turn he's extracting. 
he's getting these balls to turn back into the right hander, pitching on about the off stump. Definitely bring the LBW into play, as well as that man at leg slip. So for both bowlers currently in operation, a change of angle can actually do them the wall of good. Amory starts again from the Beckway end. It's a flighted delivery and we'll play there from Brown. 39 from 117 deliveries. So he, he has seen it all already. He's been able to defy whatever the, the Leeward Island bowlers have thrown at him. This one is turning sharply once again from Amory. Things just seem to be happening with it since the uh, break for the injury by the fees to be done to Brown. Things just seem to be happening thereafter. But I think also in the last couple of overs, as I spoke about in the last over, Emery has been a bit more consistent. I think he has found those errors that would actually make him a bit more threatening as this one, just barely shaving that leg stump. Brown there going across a long way. Last night, one gets the impression it's a matter of time before another go to falls. Maybe things are happening. Yeah, the Leeward Islands would feel encouraged based on what is happening in the last couple of overs. Barbados will just have to get through this period, this difficult period. So 115 for the loss of three wickets. Current run rate 3.07. So the, the run rate itself has actually fallen in the last couple of overs. At one point it was 3.5. So the Evil Islands will be pleased with that. Don't want the Barbadian team to run away in terms of the scoring. As we see Amory again lining up to come into bowl to the right handed Brown. His delivery is back and walking it out to the man there at mid wicket, Onori, who seemed to be bubbling. And it's the end of another over, another maiden from Amory. And Barbie does the remain on 115 for the loss of three. Yes, another good tight over there. It runs has dried up cons uh, considerably here, Barbados. Don't know where the next run is going to come from. And we've seen quite some half chances going up begging as far as the was the concern. I think it's a very interesting phase of um, the day's proceedings as we come to the end of day two. Agreed. In the final half an hour or so of play. So both of these batsmen will want to see it to close a play. Maybe reassess overnight in terms of what a good total is on this wicket as Morris is walking this one. Out to where a short leg would have been. Still can't score. So he's yet to get off the mark. Eight deliveries so far. Being a naturally aggressive batsman, Morris, he'll start to feel the pressure. As this delivery again is pitching on about the leg stump. Turning across Morris. Can't find the gap there. Michael Graves fielding that delivery. Has been in the action all day. He has not bowled, but definitely in the action in terms of the field. He spilled a few catches, but thankfully for him, he was able to redeem himself recently with the wicket of Bolden. As umpire Rajkumar just indicated to Unori not to venture onto that danger area. I don't think the Barbadian spinners would mind, but. This one is no work nicely out to land the fort on the deep square leg boundary. He's off the mark. It's now 116 for the loss of three. Brings Brown into strike. Man was been there for a while. Faced 123 deliveries so far for his 39. Trying to hold this innings together for the Barbadian team. It's short and he's pulling this one out to a mid wicket region. There's no man there, he'll get a bungry. So, a, a rare bad delivery there from Honor in this spell. 
short of a length, there was Brown going back and pulling it in front of square for a bungry. Yes, and loose delivery the first and loose delivery seen here for a little while and Brown capitalizing it and hit that one uh, to the deep mid wicket bungry for four. A welcome bungry as far as Barbie is concerned. And they have increased their lead now to what? 98? Yes, 98. Zonori again comes in short of a length. He's cutting at this one. Not finding a the gap there. Brown will be disappointed with that. As another over comes to an end. Both spinners getting through the overs very quickly here. And Barbados, they're 120 for the loss of three. A lead of 98. Yes, and the sheet anchor in Brown continues to soldier on for the Barbados team. Really holding the innings together. Because based on the way things are happening, the way things are going out there, he is the individual, though he had some uh, some close calls, he's still there batting on 31, I think it is. Brown 43? 43? Wow, I thought he was uh, wrong there. For Brown 43. Maybe try to get his 50 tonight. Why not? So, play will continue here with a couple of overs remaining for the day. Oh, it did that up until 5.30 and probably next 20 minutes or thereabouts. As, uh, so it's Amory from the Beckway end to continue. We're bowling to Morris for the first time. Reasonably attacking for you. This one is coming forward there, Morris. And plays it up back to the bowler. So there's a man at leg slip, traditional slip. You have um, Michael Greaves there at short leg. Man at short, fine leg, mid wicket, mid off, mid on. As he's hitting this one over the man there at wow. a deepish mid on position. And he's going to get a bungle. So his attacking instincts being shown there by Morris. A flighty delivery. And he played it well in the end for his first bungle. That's a bold shot. First one we've really seen for a little while. Uh, flighty delivery and he just lifted over wide long on to the bungee for four. A very adventurous indeed, um, was at this time of the afternoon. Well, you use the correct term there, Gun, in terms of a bowl shot. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that Amy will mind such a shot at this stage of the, the day's play. This one is walking off his legs straight to the man there, Mackenzie, at a short fine leg position. But we mentioned that he's He's naturally an attacking player, Morris. So he will definitely play his shots. He just needs to be selective given the state of the game. This one is short of a length. He goes back and plays it up the pitch. Maybe wiser to um, pull back in the long run, deep, put him back to a three-quarter way and let us see how, uh, what he will do rather than checking him now from not going for the shot. Let him, you know, Try hit over the top and increase your chances. Agreed. This time again, he's walking this one. A field there from Monori. Just being a live wire in the field, really. It's characteristic high top. Can recognize him very easily. As we see Amory once again. Bowling to Morris. Morris is walking this one officially. To the left of Onori at that mid wicket position for another single. So Barbados, they move on to 125 for the loss of three, 40 overs completed. Yes, yeah, a very interesting over there from Amy from the southern end to Morris. And Morris decided he's going to play some attacking shots late in the afternoon and not much more playing time remains. Interesting to see how we will fare up to. Uh, the left hander from this the northern end. But certainly interesting indeed that Barbados now with a lead of 102, 103. And to see where they go from here. Well, I think the main aim for the Barbadian batsmen currently would be just to get to close of play unscathed. And maybe tomorrow try and see how much runs they can accumulate to put some pressure back onto the Leeward Island um, batsmen. As we see, no, no reaction coming around the wicket this time. So we've been speaking about that, that move. 
Let's ball into Morris. This time he's short of a length. A bit too easy there for Morris to just rock back onto his back foot and punching it out to the man there at long on, Nathan Edward. For a single. Score moves on to 126 for the loss of three. Once again, he's had a slip. It's Emery in the covers. Extra cover. And a deepish cover as well. Backward point. Mid wicket, mid on. Long off and a deep square leg. It's a good deal if we once again. Uh, we mentioned that Brown tends to play off the back foot. Once again, for the evidence of that, a delivery maybe he should have been forward to. A bit of tone extracted there from Monori, causing some problems here late in the evening here for Achilles Brown. This one is short of a length, a bit close to him for that cut shot, but he managed to get it out to that fielder, Drew. Substitute feeder, I believe he's on for Joel Andrew. Who really struggled in his batting innings. Picked up a knock somewhere along the line. As Onori, once again, a flighty delivery. Be disappointed with that. Not able to prevent that single. It's another single to Brown. Score moves on to 127. Barbados for the loss of three. The, leads go, the lead goes up to 105. So slowly but surely this lead is building for Barbados. Still have seven second innings with Wickets in hand as he's cutting this one nicely into the gap. Should be able to get a couple of runs here. But part of the outfield oh is goodness, as this has a chance for a run out. My goodness. It's actually a single. I'm looking at Brown, he's gesturing to it's Morris that he has a, 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 a leg injury. Yes, we spoke about that earlier in terms of a bit of cramp. But both batsmen there not on the same wavelength. And thankfully for Barbados, all is well that ends well. You see him hopping a bit there on his right leg. So probably that is the problem what he did in the up for the second run. At the end of it all, it turned out to all goes well as far as Barbados are concerned. Stays his ground and uh, rather than being run out as a result of trying to get an extra run. And they had the whole of tomorrow to come back. So good judgment at the end of it all, uh, good decision. It's Onori once again, bowling to Brown. He's back. Plays it up the pitch. And it's the end of the over. 41 overs completed. Barbados in their second innings. They're 128 for the loss of three. Achilles Brown is there from the start. He's on 44. Joshua Morris just joined him. He's on eight from 19 deliveries. A lead of 106 runs so far for Barbados. As I said, this has been the most exciting part of the day so far. All sorts of things are happening out there. And uh, interesting to see what is left to, to come for the rest of the afternoon. Uh -huh. so how many overs really mean it? Three? In relation to 41 gone. We had another four overs. I think it's 45. 47. Six overs remaining. And it's what? Well, our watch out is not in sync with the umpires. So is the idea the six overs or five thirty? So it's Amy once again. He has toiled Which hard as we mentioned before. The ball into Morris. Morris shows some attacking intent against him in the last over. Once again trying to force that one down the ground, Morris. He needs to be careful. Bit of tone being extracted from Amory. But in the inner portion of the bat on that occasion. As we see in a change in field, so another man comes in short on the leg side. We saw in the last over a, a shot played officially by Morris in that direction that Nathan Edward is currently in. So good captaincy here. This delivery is turning again down the leg side. Losing his line as he brought that man over to a shot. He mid on on the square. So Nathan Edward in, uh, in, in at a, a close mid wicket region, straightish mid wicket actually, as this one is punched neatly out to that man at deep mid wicket for a single. So Morris gets another single, moves on to nine. Babby then total goes up to 129 for the loss of three. I think the Little Islands will do well tonight and welcome the wicket of Brown. He is the anchor. 
but Brown will definitely be denying them to be able to get off by 5.30 there about and have some treatment, overnight treatment. It's similar to what we were speaking about when um, Joel Andrew was batting in terms of his injury. A similar thing needs to take place uh, in terms of Ian trying to bring Brown onto his front foot. Because if he's injured, you don't want him on the back foot, that would be too easy. So that's a good one. And this one is, is it caught? Yes, it yes. is. So the breakthrough at last for Amory. He has toiled away hard for his team here this afternoon. And just as we were mentioning, need to bring the batter onto the front foot. There was it a, a flighty delivery. Brown coming forward. Maybe not as confidently as all around his innings because of this injury. And the man that back pad took an easy catch in the end. Really couldn't drop that one. And the Barbadian team, they lose their fourth wicket. It's the big wicket of Achilles Brown. For 44, it's 129 for the loss of four. Just speaking of keep bringing him on the front foot, stretching out that um, injured leg. A uh, similar thing happened to the Liga Lions so today in this year as well. And both times we spoke about it, we can matter balls there back in the pavilion because the right hand did on flight it, allow him to look up and he cannot put that pressure on the injured uh, front leg. And he lost his wicket. And a big, big wicket there for the Leeward Islands. 129 of a loss of four. And certainly that wicket has opened up the game. Very much so. A big wicket, as you mentioned. We, we saw the manner in which Brown normally operates. Trying to just anchor the innings, really. So getting his wicket at this point of the day is definitely a big one. I have two relatively new batsmen at the wicket currently. Appears to be... Boeings, is that Boeings, yes? Yes, it is Boeings. Yes, the new batter, left hand batsman. How would the attack, attacking mindset of uh, Morris just certainly has opened his game? So it's Gatso Boeings, high score 49. And since the injury to the said Brown, uh, Emery has been much, much, much better. Keeping that lane, they will keep uh, us in all, all afternoon. Keep that house down playing, that fourth, fifth stump playing, and let them come. But I think it's give him credit for really bringing him on the front foot and um, getting a snick and uh, tuck it again in the picture. Taking a lot of catches in this game. Where's going to the nine? It's actually the man at short leg. I think it was Graves. Took the catch. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to see Onori continuing in the middle of a, a neat spell here for his team. Has trouble the batsman at times. And Morris taking all the time in the world really to get settled. Maybe he is looking towards the close of play as he's stroking <laughs> this one straight up to Nathan <laughs> Edward. A tight single in the end, but made it rather comfortably. Brings the new man in strike, Boins. Gats Boins. Another attacking-minded player. Saw him in the 50 over tournament. So they definitely need to get settled quickly, get used to the conditions here. Display winding down and the captain doing the right thing here, bringing up that man from long on into a, a mid on position. Maybe you would have liked to see a couple more fellas around the bat. Maybe a short leg, a leg slip. Given the tone we have seen from Honori as he's working this one out to a point position. And if you look on the to our right, we're seeing I think that is Landerford really. Wasted out that deep point. Definitely wasted position. That man really needed to be in the circle. He would have really prevented that single. Maybe a lapse in concentration there from the captain. As Honori once again is driving this one. It's a closer one. Down to the bow. Oh. Keepers in and a better throw really. Might have had him. A risky single. Ended up getting two <laughs> runs there. So a lot of action here at the back end of this second day's play. Yeah. Real action, uh, Mosnet. Real action, and uh, Morris intent on going for the sharp singles. Second time in the same over, and he could easily have lost his wicket. 
risky single, I would call that one. Don't think Boeings was ready for that. And a better throw there from Nathan Edward would have had him falling short there, I Boeings. It certainly would have been on his way back to the pavilion. There's no two ways about it. I think it's too risky at this time of the afternoon, just a couple of minutes to go on. They'll advise the uh, second time in the over is gone for these very sharp singles. Very much so, as we see Nathan Ever just easing in a bit. And this one is keeping a bit low. A bit of tone, but keeping low as well. Well kept out by Morris. So not really good signs as a Leeward Islands batsman. For the emphasis is the point of getting as much of these Barbadian wickets as possible. Tonight. And, and limiting how much they have to chase in this second innings. This one is short of a length and he's punching it down to a long off position. Cornwell comes in and feels. Gets a single there, Morris. Moves on to 13. Barbadian total moves on to 133 for the loss of four. 134, sorry, my bad. Apologies. Once again, Captain Bowen Tuckett sending back Cornwall. Be back on the long on Bungry. Not too sure why, but as we said, the captain is the one making these decisions as this one is jumping from a length um, from Onori and reasonably well played in the end then from Bowen's. So it's the end of the 40th, 43rd over. Barbados in their second innings, they are 134 for the loss of four, yes, a lead of 112 runs. Very enterprising, exciting back end of day two in this game between Barbados and the Leeward Islands. Barbados in the form of Morris looking for very quick runs tonight. And the Leeward Islands having picked too early, wickets close to each other, and still looking for that fifth wicket. I believe if they do get this fifth, it will certainly leave the game in the hand and in the balance for tomorrow, if they do get a fifth wicket. But if they can survive tonight, well, s s with their noses in front in horse racing terms, Barbados would be in front, basically. But if they lose one, it will be level pegging. Agreed. The lead is still just 112. 112. So Barbados, they need to extend that lead further. This one is short of a length again. Yeah from Emery. We have seen that so often in this bowling spell. We spoke about maybe going around the wicket, but that is an option he's not really willing to exploit at this time. As he comes in once again, and he's bowling a good line, good length outside the off stump, turning back into the right hander. I think if he had developed maybe what uh, a douche or something of that nature, he definitely would have caught some of these Barbadian batters. Leave them because the anything, because anything on the line of the middle, some they seem prepared to just leave alone without playing a shot. Somebody like Ashwin would definitely be licking his lips, seeing that type of response. This one again is short of a length, and back goes Morris. I still believe he should bring in that long arm though. Bring him halfway. F tempt him to go over his head. Definitely. Risk, risk a four for a wicket. Definitely agreed with you. We saw Morris being prepared to go over the top a couple of overs ago. You mentioned he's an attacking batsman by nature. These are the last couple of overs more than likely. Not to show if we'll have one more from the after this one, as this one is flighted a bit slower. Played uppishly, almost bringing that man Nathan Edward, who's at a a straightish mid wicket position into play. Gets another single there, Morris. Moves on to 14, and the Barbadian total moves on to 135 for the loss of four. Brings Bowens into strike. For Bowens, there are two slips. Man, they had forward short leg. And we saw man that a straightish, straightish cover position. Almost on the wicket itself. I'm on a backward point. Short third man and he's fighting this one. A poor delivery really on the line of the leg stump. Easy to runs in the end. As we see Landerfort has got you a lot of work in this match, Landerfort. 
We definitely need some sort of an ice bath this <laughs> afternoon. Uh, can't prevent the second on that occasion. 137 for the loss of four. Short delivery and there was Bowen trying to cut at that one. A bit reckless at the end of that over. But thankfully for him, he misses it completely. So another over completed there by Amory. He's bowled 16 overs now, one for 45. And Barbie does in their second is the 137 for the loss of four. Yes, a lead of 150. Says some very exciting and interesting last hour. Oh, I think we are seeing with all sorts of things happening out there as uh, both teams in battle looking for the ascendancy at the end of the day's play. I think the Barbados just in front their noses, just in front, probably the last over there about for the afternoon. I guess, they have indicated yes. So it's a question where you deal with islands can balance things out if they can dismiss one of these batsmen in this final over. A leader 120, 115, or a leader 115, four down if they can make it 115 for five. Certainly, uh, we should be for some exciting time. But to be honest, I think we're in for a, a very, very good day to play tomorrow once this stays dry. Because based on the sort of assistance we're seeing from this pitch, uh, the Liverpool Lions have a handful against uh, the Barbarians in bowlers. Definitely, as we're going to see a change in bowling, the final over of the day's play, I believe, it's going to be the leg spinner Mackenzie. He's bowled six overs so far, one for 22. Hasn't been able to find his lines consistently. Still managed to break through that big wicket of Joshua Dawn. He'll be looking for a second. As we see him, a good flighty delivery there, bringing Morris onto his front foot. I think it's a good move. Starting for the final over. Once he can keep uh, the batsman down at the, at the southern end there. You just need to bowl properly at him. And with that googly, who knows? He may very well go through the gate. So there's a man at slip, a man at forward short leg, cover, backward point, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket and a man at square leg. This one is turning once again sharply, well played by Morris. What type of assistance has been there all day really for the spinners? Morris just has to negotiate these final four deliveries. So Mackenzie again is driving nicely, fluently through the offside. Should be able to get a couple of runs here. Maybe a third. Yes, they're going to risk a third. They'll get it comfortably in the end. Maybe even a fourth. No. They're mopped up in the end there. By watch. So three runs and he's off strike. So 140 for the loss of four Barbados. Good looking shot there from Morris. Yes, a nice uh, off drive, flighty delivery. He came to the pitch and drove it swiftly along the ground for three very important runs and to uh, get away from the strike, so to speak. As we see the left hander coming into strike, once again, that man at point is a bit deep, if you ask me. Uh, Mackenzie. Ah, that's a beautiful <laughs> googly. We've seen that quite a bit. Beating the outer portion of the bat. As Mackenzie and Bowens making sure that this is the last over. Just going down the wicket a bit. Eating into some time. As it's a full toss, really, a juicy full toss. Maybe at a different time, a different place. Bowens would have been looking somewhere in the vicinity of that double decker stand. But as it stands, this is the last over. As a result, he just tapped, stroked it out to the man there at midwicket for no run. Mackenzie continues. Another full toss. He's sweeping this one out to deep square leg. So Mackenzie there just losing his length in those last couple of deliveries. And it's the end of the day's play here at the Anasway playing field. An exhilarating day's play indeed. Um, Barbados resumed on 97 for the loss of 9. They were quickly dismissed for 101 by the Leeward Island bowlers this morning. Leeward Islands on uh, their turn at the crease, they were dismissed for 123. 
and Barbados in their second innings, they are now 140 for the loss of four. Morris is on 17, Bowens is on four. Yes, 141 for the loss of four. Zion Bratwaite, he was dismissed for 24 of 39 deliveries. Achilles Brown, and the last man dismissed there, he was out for 44 of 130 deliveries. Joshua Dawn, 18 of 17. Nima Bowlen, he made 28 of 44. Not out is Joshua Morris on 17 of 34. And Gatson Bowens on four of seven deliveries. Nathan Edwards bowling for the Leeward Islands. He bowled four overs, none for 14. Kimani Nesbitt, five overs, three maidens, none for 14. Lander Ford, six overs, no maidens, one for 19. Onaje, Amory, 16 overs, five maidens, one for 45. Michael McKenzie, seven overs, no maidens, one for 26. And Tianik Onori, seven overs, one maiden, none for 18. So tomorrow we will resume here at the Arnesville playing field. And we will start at 9.30. Remember, it's a 9.30 start. We will have 98 overs. Um, in the day, and we look forward to having you here with us tomorrow. From me, Alan Son Cruikshank, and my co commentators, Osnet Cato and Stanley Gunny Hines, it is goodbye and see you tomorrow.